The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, sir. Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope, nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Good afternoon, beautiful people. It is Coach Us Up Chuck Wednesday, October 6, 2021, years after the year zero was founded. In this sports show begins right now. Yeah. Can't thank you enough for listening on Sirius XM Channel 82, Mad Dog Sports Radio, or watching along at youtube.com forward slash The Pat McAfee Show. And obviously, this morning, the NFL has made a lot of headlines with the surprising release of two players. Jalen Smith of the Dallas Cowboys was announced to be released last night. That became official, I believe, this morning. He's a linebacker. Where's the number nine? Not that much conversation happening about what teams are going to sign Jalen, mostly because a lot of videos have surfaced on the internet in the last few hours of Jalen potentially not making the greatest plays for the Dallas Cowboys. So although he is still getting paid by the Cowboys for the next two years and they have uh, cut him because they said that they have depth at the linebacker position, he's no longer needed, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Big name goes onto the market. Thought that was going to be the conversation piece until a situation in New England that has been kind of brewing for like a couple years now at this point between Stefan Gilmore and the New England Patriots. A new contract has been wanted by Stefan Gilmore for the past couple years, so much so that every single trade deadline day for the last few years, it was, is Stefan going to get traded? Then in the offseason, is an extension going to take place? They're negotiating. Maybe a draft day trade was potentially going to be talked about with the Falcons uh, to go up into the first round to get a quarterback maybe or whatever the hell they're going to get, maybe a tight end. I forget exactly what it was going to be but this has been something that's been talked about for a long time. He will be able to play for the New England Patriots coming off the physically unable to perform list week six. Here we are entering week five of the 2021 NFL season. No extension, no playtime, and Stephon Gilmore is no longer a New England Patriot. So uh, there was a couple reports saying that Michael Girardi actually tweeted that this will become official at four o'clock or whatever so trades could still happen. I don't think that's the case. I, I, I think if this was potential trade deadline day and they didn't want to cut them releasing him right now going into week five this morning it being announced and I know in the offseason this happened with the Las Vegas Raiders with an offensive lineman I think this is just procedural if I'm not mistaken if he has said he's been released and they've already had that conversation as soon as those papers get sent to the NFL the league office and the NFL PA and everything that happens I believe that becomes official then I don't think they have to wait till the end of day so I'm not 100% sure if anybody's going to be be able to trade for Stephon Gilmore today. I think he is on the market and we will talk about everything in every team that is potentially a good option for this stud. Now, he's 31 years old, so who knows what that means, but this is lockdown corner. This guy is a NFL defensive MVP candidate every year. He plays full seasons. If can he play a full season, that's going to be something people are going to have to find out, but this is going to be hot in the streets for Stephon Gilmore. We'll talk about that with uh, Darius Butler in about 10 minutes from now. We'll break that down because what we have to talk about before we dive into all the teams that can potentially afford Stephon Gilmore, who's allegedly looking for a $30 million deal Uh, over two years, $15 million a year. But we all know that salary caps mean nothing in the NFL because you can kick the can down the road, even add voidable years that can then eat up some of your signing bonus money that you can kick down the road. And at some point, I guess, you're going to have to make up for it somewhere. But I think the salary caps are going Yodely, 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 all the way up with these new digital rights deals and sports gambling and everything that's going up. People are saying the salary cap is going to be in excess of 200 some million next year. Only going to go up as other digital platforms decide to get into the game to get maybe a uh, their own exclusive, like Amazon. Amazon tested the waters 
for a couple of years with the NFL, deciding whether or not, I think the NFL was deciding whether or not they'd be good partners. And Amazon was trying to figure out what the benefit of covering a game was. It was a simulcast. There was already another Thursday night football game going on. And it appears that most people that get into business with the NFL don't leave. So let's assume that Apple may be getting a game. Netflix maybe gets in a game for one of these games that maybe aren't that much money for the NFL currently. They can be able to resell those rights potentially to some new platform that wants to get in there. The amount of money that's going to get dumped in to the NFL over the years to come is going to be absurd, I think. I actually do believe that. And if uh, I played a position other than punter, I think I would be trying to get that avocado ice cream in me to get back in there because I think a lot of money is about to be made by everybody. But with that being said, you can kick this contract down the road. And if that cap continues to climb, the dead money, is it important? Obviously, because it's a competitive advantage against others. If you have more money to spend, your team's going to be better. But also, you can build your team right fucking now and worry about that shit down the road. They're doing it in Tampa. They're doing it in Kansas City. I think they're going to continue to try to do it in L.A. with the Rams. There's a lot of teams that are at the top right now, by the way. Patriots just spent $150 million in one day on free agency. The yep. teams that are at the top, not saying the Patriots are, okay? just I mean, they, Josh Allen just got paid like a few hundred million dollars or whatever, and they're going to continue to add in there. But the teams that are at the top are accruing talent and figuring out ways to pay them. So if somebody really wants Stephon Gilmore, they'll be able to make that happen. And yeah. we'll dive into those teams with Darius Butler, because is it a zone team? Mm. Is it a man-to-man -man team? Where's his best fit? Who does have the uh, salary cap nimbility to make a play and make the this thing happen? Do you have the weapon like Mike Greenberg down in Tampa Bay who is out three corners? Would he just... That seems like something that maybe is going to happen. And there's other teams. Darius Butler will know more about that. But we have to talk about something I don't know much about. But I do know I tried my best last night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I absolutely tried my best last night to watch some, uh, some baseball. The AFC Baseball Mega Bowl was on last <laughs> night. Boom. Yes, One was. game to <laughs> decide of the two most popular franchises in baseball. Which one's going to be able to go on and continue into the playoff run? Who's going to be in the hunt for that piece of metal? You know, who's going to really get out there and get and last night it was Yankees Red Sox Hell yeah. on a Tuesday night mm -hmm. in the middle of October wow yep. I mean on ESPN on the call so it's not as similar as Joe Buck making a call but now I mean couldn't ask for a better game right I mean that is something you couldn't, couldn't ask for a better one is and what a night for all of baseball I mean, Ain't that, that right, Todd? game fucking stunk what <laughs> you know it's it 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 the sport I thought it was great. Game. Well, yeah. no, I mean, we not got the that, sport. Not the sport. Baseball. Hey, the sport. playoff baseball is the best. It's the absolute. That's uh, not best. better than playoff hockey, playoff football, or well, okay. any of the other Throw sports. Okay, I mean, playoff basketball. Playoff basketball stinks. Basketball in general stinks. Mm. Um, but anyway, well, you okay. Know, I mean, that's another conversation. The fucking it's mega bowl happened. Last you know, you pay yeah. a guy three hundred and twenty-four million dollars, and he gets you six fucking outs. You know, that's that's basically what it came down to. I was texting with Gumpy after Stanton hits one off the green monster, and the dipshit running the camera at ESPN puts it. You know, like he hits it. Like he, I thought he hit it eight hundred and fifty feet. <laughs> Hit it off the fucking end of the bat. Ends up being a, a single. I texted Gumpy right away. I said, this game's over. If he would have hit a homer, now we're talking. But it just bad juju. I mean, it's nice, though, because they can fire Aaron Boone, get that dipshit out of town. <laughs> Same with Brian Cashman. Yeah. Yankees haven't won a World Series, haven't won a pennant since 2009. I mean, got more resources than anyone else. Can't happen. So okay, so you... Get those clients out of town, but so hey, congrats you, to the Red Sox. Yeah, you, yeah. Didn't like the, Thank you. you didn't like the game because it sounds like your team stunk. Is that why? Well, that was a big part of it. And again, the fucking... <laughs> the camera people at ESPN, both of Stanton's hits that he hit off like the top of the green monster, they made you think he hit them... 8,000 feet, both of them. <laughs> and he hit them both off the end of the bat. Crisp night in Boston. Mm -hmm. It sucked. Right. It sucked. So the Yankees stink. Garrett Cole can't play baseball anymore. Yeah. When Joe. matters. got paid $325 million. You're only as good as your last outing. Let's assume Garrett's going to get this offseason with no spider tack all offseason. Work on that grip because he can't cheat no more. Remember, they dropped that on him in the middle of this season. Oh, yeah. Tough. So let's not turn on him just yet, although it sounds like Yankees fans have. Uh, and then the other team in the Mega Bowl, how did you enjoy the game last night? Oh. At Boston Connor, big uh, Red Sox fan I noticed here today. I mean, it was unbelievable you know first game i've watched all year so baseball season's officially underway which i love i'm all about the baseball and it's on and it just started yesterday for me uh home run in the you know bottom of the first wow. well that carried me all the way to you know the bottom of the third inning when gary cole did get pulled because he does stink and we hit another bomb off and with schwarber i mean really baseball's all the way back i love baseball i i 
almost forgot that we have an unbelievable football game tomorrow because the Sox are back tomorrow night already going up against the Tampa Bay Rays. I mean, I'm on cloud nine right now, Pat. I love baseball. Yeah, again. yeah, it sounds like it. I mean, you're only what? Four losses away from not loving baseball anymore? Not even. Three. I oh, think it's the three. first rounds are five. Yeah. yeah. So three losses away, and, you know, if, if that happens. Oh, also, three wins away from extending baseball season. That's which, right. you know, I'm kind of torn on. I, I don't know if I want the three wins or the three losses at the whoa, moment. Whoa, you're on cloud nine. About, Let's dude. stay on cloud nine. Yeah, no, I'm whoa, excited, whoa, but, whoa. you know. Come Sunday, if that game's on during the Patriots game, sorry, Ted Williams and the Sox. Uh, I'm going to have to go with the Patriots here on this one. And I'm watching you, highlights. I watch the highlights, yeah, which I know that's going to piss you know Mitt off because I'm not in the film room, yeah. yeah, and I'm watching the highlights. But sorry, baseball, you know. Got to take your picks here, and I'm picking football. Yeah, it's a shame because it does feel like Ty is an actual fan of playoff baseball. It got cut so short. I mean, short, yeah. short, short. I mean, that's one night not even fun. It was like the first two innings you knew it was over. Yeah. That's a shame because that was really all you were looking forward to for a while. I mean, what are you going to do? We, uh, we were on Spaces last night, and I, I watched as the game ended. I mean, it was, it was like, oh, boom, that's over. By the way, you watched 45 seconds ahead of me. We live near each other and have the same cable system. How the fuck does that happen? What? I have no idea. <laughs> I was kind of spoiling it for you. Yeah, we we're on the spaces, and Ty's like, "Whoa!" Oh! And I'm like waiting. I'm two pitches behind. Jesus! And then Giancarlo Stanton takes one off the top of the wall, and that was what Ty's anger came from there. By the way, because mm-hmm. we all got a chance to experience him thinking Giancarlo did hit his second home run of the evening, and instead it was his second blast off of the big green monster. Up yeah, there. and then the absolute fucking buffoon third base coach Phil Nevin, who's got more guys <laughs> thrown out at home this year than any team in MLB history. Sends fucking judge home. He gets thrown out by a mile. Yeah, I mean that, that was that was that worse. was the end of the game. That was worse than the congressional baseball one. Yeah, Aaron Judge I'd say. was more at than the Democrat that was the running. Democratic uh-huh. representative that was, from Arizona that jumped Hungry. over. <laughs> that jumped mm-hmm. over the Republican catcher. That was one that was very far away from the plate. Yeah, and I remember thinking to myself. Pretty far away from the plate. This wasn't even really that close. There was still a lot of time for the catcher to get back there. I mean, that catcher was almost, I mean, mid- in midway between third and home. I mean, what the fuck is going on with the Yankees? You guys even play baseball anymore? Nah, bad base running will so. fucking kill you, and that's why they got to get all those coaches out of there. These guys are fucking bums. Aaron Boone, you know, hit a grand slam. They didn't even win the World Series the year he hit a walk-off grand well, slam against the Red Sox, and everyone's all oh, the Yankee legend. Bring him back. Bring him back. The guy fucking stinks at his job. Jeez, get him out of time. All right, all right, all right. This does. is just an overreaction Wednesday here after the match. No, Michael. this is not an overreaction. Yeah, he stinks. Jeez, Orlovsky. Hey, yeah, this does sound like an Orlovsky oh. thing. Run right here. What's or this Shavsky? all about? What are you? What's this all about? His contracts up? I mean, it, we're the Yankees, okay? This isn't the fucking Cincinnati Reds, okay? I mean, the you, mayor's you get, coming on. You can't get you can't get into the first round, get beat, and say, hey, you know, we we play good. We, we, those, my guys are savages in the box. The guy's a moron. Get him out of time. <laughs> all right. All right, so I hope Aaron Boone continues to be employed. Me too. For the good of his family, his friends. Oh, he's made a lot of money. Okay, so he'll be okay. He'll He'll be be fine. He'll be just fine. But it does seem like he got out coached last night in baseball, and I didn't even know it was possible. Oh, yeah, all the time. All the time. Anyways, the NFC Baseball Mega Bowl is tonight. (laughs) Yes, it is. And two teams that are playing in that is uh, the... uh, Cards Dodgers. Exactly, and that's on uh, ESPN or Fox? I think this one's on Fox tonight. Oh, splitting it up. So we got Joe Buck out there. Hey, good luck to the uh, Cards and the Dodgers. Good luck, boys. Play some good ball. You said Cards and Dodgers? Mm -hmm. Yep. Those are two other teams I know in baseball. So the two teams, the the only four teams I really know in baseball are all playing in these mega bowls? Yep. Sorry, it's on TBS. It's on TBS tonight. They have good coverage, too. Who's going to cover that? Ernie, maybe. It might be Ernie. Could be. And Conan O'Brien? Right? I believe, uh, isn't Smolty? <laughs> yeah. I think Smolty's on TV. Anybody oh, but A-Rod and we'll be all right. All right, Gumpy was Joe a Morgan. little bit upset about A-Rod calling the game last night. What's that all about? You didn't like him? You just can't do it. You can't trot out a guy who plays for the Yankees, loves the Yankees for that game. It'd be the same if you had Ortiz. It's ESPN is absurd. Anybody but him. He stinks. All right, that comes from the other yeah. Boston Red Sox fan in the office. And people are going to say, how is he a Miami Dolphins fan and a Boston Red Sox fan? Well, he grew up in North Left Canada, right. and he made bad selections as a child. Yeah, plus, get, you know, give A-Rod a break. He's been living in a prison and eating slop for every meal in Minnesota. <laughs> like, you, you know, Maybe he wasn't in his He best looked shape. terrible on TV yesterday. And it wasn't his fault. He was literally in a jail cell. Yes. Yeah. It's all right. 
he'll come back better than ever, A-Rod, on the commentating and oh, uh, yeah. the basketball team. And obviously, the Yankees are going to turn it around. But let's talk about something that we have an expert joining us right now to talk about. Oh, Stephon Gilmore news coming out of nowhere this morning that he has been released from the New England Patriots. <laughs> Going into week five, he was injured, I guess. He was on the physically unable to perform list, which means he wasn't able to play until week six. Here we are going into week five. Get the hell off the team. This is... After years and years of contract controversy uh, between Stephon Gilmore and the Patriots, he wants a long-term big big dog contract, and I think he's deserved and earned that. Uh, but also, I believe the Patriots are never a team that's going to do that, especially to a 31-year-old corner, and that's kind of been understood. It's been a, a stalemate on what's going to happen. Was he going to be traded on draft day? Was he going to be traded on dra uh, trade deadline days? Or was he inevitably going to be released? He was released today. Joining us now, hosting the Man to Man podcast and also Everything DB, FanDuel Zone, Darius Butler. Yeah! Hey, hey D-Buck, great to have you here. Nine-year NFL vet. You uh, were drafted to the New England Patriots. I obviously got a chance to be teammates with you in Indianapolis. Incredibly heady and smart football player. But you also played uh, uh, You played corner. What? You played nickel. What? You played safety. What? You played all over the place. I think there was even some outside linebacker reps that you got in there. I don't know if that's dime or whatever the yeah. fuck it is. But uh, whenever you think about Stephon Gilmore being released from the New England Patriots, what are your first thoughts? Did we all see this coming? And where do you think he eventually ends up? And can he still play at that elite level oh yeah we, we, we kind of saw it saw it brewing with the uh the contract and the money and you know belichick he's gonna get rid of you you know when he sees fit and i think jc jackson and in, in the way he's been playing the last couple of years made this move a little easier for the patriots because he's uh clearly a guy that can be you know a top dog at the corner position you saw him go toe to toe with mike evans um but i think uh gilmore still got a lot in the tank you know last full year we saw him i think it was the defensive player of the year uh, yeah, he's a man-to-man -man guy, but I think he's smart enough, especially being in that Patriots um, around building around that scheme. They just it forces you to learn, you know, the entirety of a defense and football on a different level. So he can go and play in his own scheme, especially at 31. You know, you saw uh, Xavier Rose. A lot of people wrote him off in Minnesota his last year. He played a lot of man-to-man. -man, went out to the Colts last year, played more of his own scheme, and had one of his best years. So I can see that possibly happening with Gilmore. Um, and it's about three teams that I would like to see him land. I don't know how the money will work, but I'm sure they can figure it out. You know, that as means you said nothing. earlier, salary caps, I mean, they don't matter anymore if you got good guys running the numbers. Uh, so what are the teams, you think, the three teams? I got uh, Ravens. Uh, Ravens, number one, because, uh, you know, they put a lot of stress on their corners. Obviously, you losing Peters um, early before the season even started. Um, that that kind of can limit you on, and wink in what he does with that scheme. So the Ravens would be a good match. They could be a contender. Uh, the Chargers, Brandon Staley is, is you know, a defensive uh, genius at this point. Their huh. run defense has kind of sucked up to this point. But adding a guy who can cover like Gilmore actually helps run defense because you can kind of allocate more resources there. Mm -hmm. um, they have the money as well. I know they have the money for sure. And then the Bucks. Bucks obviously make the most sense. Uh, lost their top three guys. You got Tom Brady, the ultimate recruiter there. You know it's going to be in and give you a chance to win the Super Bowl, and you can move to Florida. So I think those top three teams, you know, Ravens, Chargers, and the Bucks. I would love to see him land on one of those. And uh, you know, they're all contenders, but he'll make them even better. Bump and run, Gilmore. Bump and run more. Bump, Bump and, and run, run Gilmore. Gilmore. Yes. Instagram follow Jason Light and Bruce Arians. So Ooh. he did follow them uh, uh. on Instagram. Maybe it'll go down. In the DMs, oh, this uh, little recruiting process there. Fascinating to me is they have a salary cap guru down there in uh, Tampa Bay that will be able to make it work. It'll be just like a three-year deal with a third-year voidable. Signing bonus uh, is up front. We'll pay you like a million bucks somehow, and we'll pay you 20 next year, and then something will be voidable on the back end so they can cut ties, and, and somehow they'll be able to make it work. Here's Bump and Run Gilmore uh -huh. following Jason Light and BA, who I believe are both pretty active on the Instagram. I saw a picture of uh, both of them with beers upside down in their mouths mm -hmm. on the uh, boat parade. <laughs> yep. Yeah, they're having a good time down <laughs> yep. there in Tampa. Good time. They're having a good time down there in Tampa. The Chargers is fascinating because you rarely hear about them right making big moves. And that's mm -hmm. that would because Tom Telesco comes from the Bill Polian tree. I know Tom Telesco. And I think the Chargers as a whole are uh, I think they build from within. I'm not a, I mean I might be wrong in thinking this, but I don't really recall that would be a big splash play by the Chargers but why not with the team that they have right now? Why not try to make them even better and go on a run in an incredibly difficult division over there? Yeah, you got a great team. And like you said, a great division. Um, 
guys who can throw the ball around Carr, uh, even Teddy B down in Denver, and then obviously Patrick Mahomes you're going to see twice a year. You got a quarterback on a rookie deal. Um, and like you said, the other, you got Asante Samuel Jr., who looked like he's going to be a stud, still in his rookie deal. Derwin still in his rookie deal. So you should have the money at least early on to, to make a run, man. When you got a chance in this league, you got to go You got to go all in and get it. You see, this is what the teams have been doing, Tampa, Kansas City. That's kind of the way, that, the way of the world right now in the NFL business. Spend that money and ch- go chase a ring, man. And you got to know when you're in your window. I think that's a big gotta deal. Know. When, when to realize that you're in your glory days right now. Hey, you are in your good old days right fucking now. Go ahead and try to take advantage of that. Speaking of, Green Bay Packers have been in the good old days here for a few years. They have roughly $8 million in cap space. I think they had some people move some things around. Uh, they are not. This would not be a normal move, I don't think, by the Green Bay Packers. What do you think about that particular place? Because the defense, obviously, is going to have to get better towards the end of the season if they want to really go on a run. Would he fit in Green Bay? Is that a defense he would fit in in? I mean, yeah, he would definitely fit there, especially if uh, Alexander can get back healthy. And obviously, there's some question marks with his uh, health going forward. They just drafted a corner in the first round. Uh, still got King there, but he can definitely go in there and fit and play. Uh, I don't know how, how excited he would be. And this is this is something I think about, too. Obviously, being a former player, you're 31. You're going from, uh, you know, from Boston. You've been there for the last few years. Do you want to go and move out to Green Bay? I mean, if I got Tampa Bay, I got L.A., I mean, those would be some, some destinations that will be kind of four or five on that list. But if you're going, I mean, they got a contender, obviously, with uh, A-Rod there at uh, the quarterback position. But um, I think it's some other destinations that would be more appealing to, uh, to Gilly. Do you remember the reaction to Aaron Rodgers when he said, hey, when people are coming to Green Bay, this isn't like a destination city. They're coming to play football with me and the team that we have. And then people right. are like, oh, this prima donna. Like some people are calling <laughs> oh, yeah. him this whole thing. And then Darius is like, Hey, let me lay this out for you real quick. <laughs> you can go to Tampa, you can go to L.A., or Green Bay, Wisconsin. How about it? What did you say? see the Ryder Cup? That was fucking electrifying, dude. <laughs> yeah. You get the chance to play on this storied franchise. You get the chance to play in Lambeau, and it is a team that's going to go. That's the biggest sell. Hey, if you, if you join us, we are going to go. Now, I don't know how long this deal is going to work for. I don't know what you're thinking, how you're thinking, but that seems like fun. There's a lot of teams out there. The Titans, I guess the Titans are another team that their fans were tweeting this morning. Get them on the Titans. I think this is going to be – Hell no. It's going to be – stink. <laughs> Oh. Nice thing. You got to go to a contender, man. He's, he's a guy who wants to I, – I, I don't want to speak for the guy, but number one, he's played in Buffalo. He's played in Boston. Let's get some work warm. Titans are warm, but, you know, they stink right now, let's be honest. All right, D-Butt. What about Arizona, d But they, uh, they lost Butler before the season and retired. Arizona would be sweet as well. You know, obviously a, a, a good team who looked like they're going to be in it down the stretch. Great, great young quarterback. Um, a defense who's already playing well, got some playmakers in the secondary. Um, we got a rookie starting out there, Marco Wilson. Wilson. So, I mean, you would feel much more comfortable as a defensive coordinator with Joseph putting in uh, Gilmore in that defense. So that's another team that will make a, a, a ton of sense. And once again, another great place to live oh. out there in Arizona. Yeah, Phoenix is awesome. <laughs> yeah. I, I was about to say, like, I mean, all right, so now we got Tampa, yeah. L.A., Phoenix, fifth largest city in America, by the way, out oh. there in the middle of the desert. It is growing, it's growing fast too. It is beautiful, though. I mean, it is a beautiful state. It is, oh, yeah. it is unbelievable. It's like you're on vacation over there, or Green Bay. Huh? Hey, let's go <laughs> fucking win one. Huh? Go boys. Hey, let's go now. Huh? Fucking go boys. Hey, we saw you on Speak for Yourself yesterday. You were fantastic. We appreciate you joining us here on a short amount of notice for uh, the Stefan Gilly Lock conversation. Appreciate you having me, bro. Hey, that was. Speak for yourself. That was a whole thing. You were like guest hosting there for that thing. Yeah, you know, I my guy, Acho, you know, Acho hit me and said, hey, jump on the show, man. So I went on there and talked some Cowboys per usual and uh, a little bit of Steelers. <laughs> hey, the question, one of the questions was actually, is Tomlin going to survive this year? Oh, so. we saw. Yeah, yeah, we saw. We it. saw, dude. Yeah, 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 we saw. Yeah, 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 we, yeah, we, we saw. started. No, no, we saw it. Uh, ladies but, and gentlemen, host of the Man to Man podcast. You've seen him on Speak for Yourself. You've seen him all around the globe. Nyi and nine-year NFL vet, Darius Brother. Thank hey, you, Darius. Hey, Appreciate you. There were some absurd headlines on the bottom of the screen that Darius Brother was on yesterday. But oh, yeah. that, hey, that's hey, that's sports talk, baby. That's right. Well, we know the guy who's writing those headlines and. Best in the business. Best yeah. in the business. The best. I don't know if that's Brom. Oh, it is. Uh, Look at uh, my head. Uh, yeah.
Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> there was no reason for that. My God. There was but no reason for Anyways, Jesus that's an inside, point. inside, inside. <laughs> <joke>. Very inside. <laughs> it's very inside the office. Jimmy Neutron. It's a very inside the office joke. Uh. But you know, some of those headlines are absurd. They're crazy. Yeah. Uh, but that's crazy. The Stefan Gilmore conversation there, what was that, like 10 teams we got to? Yeah. I mean, and everybody's going to want him because of how good he is. And if yeah. you can get a guy that can lock somebody down or just add to your incredible defense in a fashion that you think maybe this is the missing piece, why wouldn't you go for it? Now, who knows who will want to spend that money? You know, we've seen GMs who potentially do have the bank or the capability and the need. Mm-hmm. For certain positions, say, nah, it's not how we do it or whatever. Uh, but there are some teams, I think, who have completely debunked that theory and just said, nah, we'll go. We'll use the transfer portal, actually. Yeah. We will go pay for, uh, we'll go pay guys and get them in here. Oh, that's the NBA. No, nah, no, nah, actually, the, these are the rules that everybody has had for a very long time. And uh, we actually figured out how to do it. And it turns out we got no state taxes down here either. And uh, Tom Brazier mm-hmm. quarterback. Mm-hmm. Or in Kansas City, hey, we got, we got a. You know, it's amazing that Kansas City's been able to do it because much, I don't want to say much similar to Green Bay because I think Kansas City's larger than Green Bay. Oh, much, yeah. much larger. Much larger, I think. Oh, yeah. Much, much, much larger. So I don't want to disrespect the city of Kansas City or Green Bay. But with that weather, okay, and that, I mean, I guess getting to play in the in uh, Arrowhead is an experience, right? Sure. Just like it is in Lambeau. It's an awesome thing. But with that weather, being able to keep the incredible talent I mean, that's another tribute to Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, Tyreek, Andy Reid, the, the build that they, the, the core that they have there. And I think that's why the Chiefs knew that they had to lock them all down. Hey, it might be hard to attract talent from other places to Kansas City if Tampa Bay and Los Angeles are two destination places that are happening and the Arizona Cardinals in Phoenix are starting to get into the game, flying private planes to people to go pick them up. This is not normal in the NFL. This is, this is very new that teams are starting to open their pocketbook and start paying and, and figuring out how they can pay more money down the road to invest in right now. It's kind of a change in a lot of things. But whenever you start thinking about the amount of teams that Stephon Gilmore could go to, I mean, he can make a lot of teams better right Right now, he knows it too. I, think. I mean, isn't that like the quote unquote cap? Gu- like every team has like a cap guru. Isn't that your job? Like to be creative. There, a lot of stuff is coming out that it's it's basically going to be like a three million dollar cap hit to get him this year. So damn near every team could afford him. But with it happening this morning, like, do you think this is the type of situation where do you think he'll he'll be moved today? I don't know. I think he'll sign in the next couple of days. I'd assume because he was put on the pup, which is a six week uh, designation, right? Does that carry through? No, right? Because his contract's so. up. So so he would be able to play this weekend, I guess, if he was to be signed by a team. I don't think that'll happen. It'll probably be next week is where, where he'll debut, depending upon. I mean, Richard Sherman visited on Wednesday, yeah. Yeah. signed on Thursday. Is he healthy, though? Yeah, because the PUP is a designation because they're estimating how long it's going to be. Like, if they think it's going to be three weeks IR now, because that's how long it is. If they think it's going to be whatever, they do that. And I think there are people that can come off the PUP earlier yeah, in the training camp you can. I he's think. been training, too. He's posted photos of him, you know, playing, at least on the field. If, with. Sorry, go ahead. No. No, no, go Because if it was a lesser of injury, you saw some of the teams put him on the initial 53 and then put him on the IR, so it was only three weeks. Yeah, I don't know. I'll be excited to see. I'll be excited to see what the ruling is on the PUP because that is something that teams use as a strategy, but mm-hmm. also it's like a big decision whenever somebody goes on the PUP list. It's a conversation, you know, who's on the PUP and everything like that. So I don't know. It feels like if he's posting videos of him training and running and moving. And I also like the thought of somebody who's really great at something having to reprove themselves. Mm. I, I think that is a weapon. Now, I also said this about a situation maybe that didn't work out with Cam Newton or whatever up there, but I think Uncle COVID came through there a little early and maybe derailed a lot of things. And then, obviously, the roster was much different. But I think somebody having to reprove themselves is always good for performance. I just honestly believe that, and especially if you're going to a place where there's a lot of other people that are great, right, because you want to be – and you are in the conversation with these people and you see and learn from other people that are maybe in your sphere. And I'm not saying the NFL isn't loaded with incredible talent, but if you go to one of these rosters that is all OG vets that are probably Hall of Fames, a couple rings away from Hall of Fames, all of them, you can learn things. You have to reprove yourself to them. They're asking you questions – and whenever you teach stuff, it's how you learn the best. I mean, it's like, I think this is going to be, because 
I guess people have said Stephon Gilmore hasn't played his best football in the last year. Like, I guess people have been saying that. That's been a knock by people maybe that are on the New England Patriots side, but I don't think that's the case at all. No, like, he, I mean, he legitimately just won Defensive Player of the Year in 2019. It's not like he's been bad. It, he wasn't bad last year. It's just one of those situations where, similar to Edelman, I guess Edelman ended up retiring, but we were at the point in the season where we weren't going to make the playoffs. We weren't going to go on a run. Why would he even keep playing? Because he did play through injury for a little bit, and then the quad got and to Remember there was the conversations where he, I want to stay here, he yeah. was saying. Like mm-hmm. publicly, the his either representation or him was leaking. Like I want, I would like to stay here. I'd like to get a deal done. Even if it's not like the biggest deal, I'd like to get it done. And I, I just assumed behind the scenes that they did make him an offer, but he didn't deem it this is nowhere near acceptable. And, yeah. then, and then, well, we're never going to be, be able to come to an agreement. Let's just cut you now, I guess. Is that what Bill Belichick's thinking? Well, so he was comfortable, to your point, you talked about how he was comfortable to finish out this contract with nothing after and go into free agency. But they talked about how they've been trying to get a deal done with Jamie Collins, but they haven't had enough cap room. So I think they just weighed, do we need Jamie Collins more or do we need a corner more? And obviously after you know the Bucks basically beat us on the ground game, we needed the help in the middle more than anything. Defensive player of the year shit just a couple years ago. Go. He gets cut going into week five. The only thing anybody's talking about is him. Jalen Smith's out there like, hey, I got cut too. Yeah. <laughs> what about me? Well, what about me? Is anybody talking about that? It's because of the clips that are coming out of Jalen Smith. Not good, man. No. The internet is getting Jalen right now. Yeah. I, there's a lot of lowlights. Mm-hmm. A lot of lowlights. Not there. many highs. Yeah, I don't know if nobody's on his side or if he just – are they highlighting every time he makes the wrong decision into what gap he's supposed to fill? Well, the biggest Cowboys fan I know, Mitt, he posted photos from training camp of Ezekiel Elliott absolutely dicing him. So when I see that, I say, oh, oh. okay, there's no way this guy's worth it. Uh, what? Well, Zeke is really good, though, you're talking about. Oh, no, that. absolutely. But, I mean, shit, if he can't, you know, break down and wrap up, give me Jimmy Collins. I don't want, you know, Jalen Smith, if that's what's happening. No, uh, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about, yeah. in general, the only conversation is where Stephon Gilmore. I'm not talking about you. Hey, listen. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. I'm just from a fan's Jesus perspective. Christ. Not my perspective. What? What a fan might think going yeah, forward. Yeah, obviously not. You're, you're a journalist. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You're a baseball journalist now, too. Hell yeah. I love baseball. The sound of the crack of that bat. Man. How about, when, how about when the big green monster was just eating up Yankee home runs oh, all night last nothing night? Nothing gets me going more, Pat. Oh, nah, that big green monster was hungry. I love baseball. AFC Mega Bowl. Those are supposed to be home runs in other parks. No, uh not in Boston. No, nah, the Boston big green monster said, give me that. You got to get it higher if you want a home run in Boston. Yeah, a little bit higher around here. You know why? Because I'm still fucking here, dude. Boom. Big green. Cuz. That's right. <laughs> BGM. <laughs> BGM. Did you guys chant BGM last night when they fucking big green monsters stole two home runs from the New York Yankees in the biggest mega bowl of all time? No, we don't have to cheer for the monsters because the monster speaks for itself. They actually were all cheering Garrett after he gave up his home run right off the bat. Garrett Cole was in a bad spot. Yeah. What's that all about? Is it because of no spider tech? I don't know. You know, I mean, when you throw 100 miles an hour, usually you can't just throw right down the middle every time because if you do, like, there are guys on the other team who are getting paid to hit it out of the park as well. And they will time that up. Yeah, Uh exactly. Because, I mean, I was in a batter's box one time from the wrong side of the plate. Right. That's right. And the guy pitched 92, and literally the first pitch I saw. Dead red. I hit it. Yep. Okay, and this is not a joke. I had zero power behind it, okay? So I, I had no clue how to, you know, get the entire body in line to get power on that thing. First pitch I seen though, fucking boom, hit it square. Okay, oh, yeah. pulled a hamstring running the first. <laughs> they obviously gunned me out. I mean, it was just bad baseball hit. But I would assume, you know, the the good baseball players, hundred miles an hour is probably better because the faster it comes, the further that thing's traveling. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. So they're waiting on that thing. Now a little tiny cuz came in with all the tats for the Yankees at one point. Had a cross uh, tattoo right behind his ear. Luizaga? Yeah, Luizaga. There it is. Luizaga. He threw he fucking he yes. Wise guy can throw it. 97, 98 or oh, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And it looks like he is very violent arm whip. Yes. Mm-hmm. It looks like he is trying to rip his shoulder and arm off of his <laughs> socket there. He will, yeah. It's, it's it's that's, that's when Uncle Tommy John will come by. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, it makes sense. By the way, that's that's not a Tommy John. He has not been Tommy John yet. No, no, he's a young guy, young gun, really good this year. Is that how all these call it? Is this how all these young pitchers throw? It looked like he was trying to break his arm while he was throwing last night. I mean, it was, it was insane. And they're like. <laughs> 97 miles an oh, yeah. hour. It was like, holy shit. But I didn't understand how those guys couldn't turn on it because it seemed like that's all he was throwing. 
I mean, yeah. And what's up with these umps, dude? Are we going to have that, a consistent fucking... That home plate ump was bad both ways last night. Okay, like, good. Very Agreed. bad. As long as you're bad both ways. Yeah. If we're all wrong, we're all right. Mm-hmm. That thing they show on below the scorter, that little... K-zone? Yeah. So it just has to hit it? Because there was one know. part it's... where it hit the bo- the front of it, I think. Yeah, the Yankee strikeout. Uh, and it, clearly a ball, you know, but what are you going to do? But K- it did hit K- the K-zone. K- K-zone says right. it's a strike. So yeah, the K-zone. But, no. but it is the K-zone. Strike's a strike. Well, that's what I was thinking. Why do we even have the human there? And then everybody says, well, playing with the strike zone is actually a part of it. And when instead it actually fucking ruins you there because the K-zone said... That thing was. Yeah, she did yeah. touch the K-Zone. I don't think I fully understand baseball, and maybe that's why I don't like it, but I, I dabbled into like four or five different things last night. Yeah. I watched Chappelle's entire, I think we got to get to a break. I watched Chappelle's <laughs> entire, entire thing. Mm-hmm. The closer. How was it? He, I mean, Chappelle is a fearless, fearless human being. He left it out there. Yeah, I'm going all the way. Does not care. <laughs> he said two or three times in there, I'm going all the way. He said, uh, and then early in there, that is nowhere near as bad yeah. as where we're going or yeah. whatever. Hold on. I was like, all right, this guy. In Detroit, by the way. Yeah, yeah I heard he buried Detroit. I mean, in a couple of specials, but the uh, <laughs> he did, a, he let it eat. A, I mean, doing your final one in a city is a massive decision, I'd assume. Yes. So the fact he did it in Detroit, I had a lot of respect for. Yeah, that's awesome. And the way that thing ends is a, uh, I think it is a pretty, pretty solid ending to his Netflix run, yeah, I think. It's crazy. Yeah. I'm a Chappelle fan, though, so. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm. It's hard not to be. Yeah. Well, there are people. I think he, he talks, talks about it. He actually talks about yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. At a bar. He, he talks about it, yeah. I mean, it's fascinating, and there's people that hate us, but I watched that, and I got back to the game. It was the fucking fourth inning. Yep. Mm-hmm. So I watched an entire piece of art, basically, from, you know, the go to stand-up comedy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Got back, it's still fourth inning. Oh, yeah. They oh. took the Monday Night Football approach and delayed it until about 9 o'clock. So. I went, finished the Sopranos movie. What'd you think? I didn't really know much about fuck. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> okay. I never watched The Sopranos. <laughs> okay. But, uh, good Mafia movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. I got back. Sixth inning. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. What the fuck? You guys watched that entire game? Oh, yeah. You watched Absolutely. a special in a movie? I, w- I finished a movie. Oh, okay. <laughs> watched a special, finished a movie, which I only had like 45 minutes Sixth left, inning. I think. How? What the? You guys... Oh, yeah. Not you. You just I said you sw- never watch. No, Edge of my first seat. First game of the year. Edge of my seat the whole game. Who gives a fuck? One through nine, laptop. baby. Big game of Baldi. Made money on is it. the fucking man. I, I understand you have incredible money on it. You can. That's how you. That's the only way. Nah. That's the only way you can watch that, right? Yeah, exactly. You have to have an uncomfortable amount of money, which you shouldn't ever. But you should have. That's the only way you can be interested in every single pitch of that thing last night. Mm-hmm. Now you have a couple, couple fingies of scotch and just enjoy it. You yeah, know? you have two fingers. You can have fun doing anything, Pat. Well, all right. <laughs> Stay away from the chop house. All right, we're back in four minutes. One eight three three four McAfee. We got coaches up. Chuck Wednesday yeah. going on. Oh, yeah. Chuck Pagano will be joining us in the third hour, two o five Eastern Daylight Time. It's not dropping. It just stopped. Mm -hmm. Um, Wild move. Mm. Really put me in a blender there. There's a lot of things happening with head coaches. Vic Fangio and Harbaugh kind of going back and forth about what happened at the end of last week's game in Denver. Then obviously, there's head coaches not flying back with their team after going 0-4. Yeah. And then stuff happening. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to hear what Chuck Pagano's thoughts are. I can't wait to chat with him. And also, we got Sean the Mayor Casey joining us. Wow. Yeah, the host of the Mayor's Office new podcast. Also, MLB analyst. Friend of the show, Pittsburgher, Sean Casey. He's uh he's fucking MLB All-Star. Oh he's yeah. He's in Cincinnati Reds Hall of Fame. What? He goes on TV and tells stories about baseball. We'll ask him about, you know, who's playing in tonight's NFC baseball mega bowl. <laughs> That's right. You know, and we'll talk about what the future of this mega bowl looks like. Yeah. Who's gonna win that piece of metal? And we'll also take your phone calls on the five energy phone line, one eight three three four McAfee. We'll see you in about four minutes on those. This is the Pat McAfee show. Coach up Chuck Wednesday. There it was. I definitely tripped you, by the way. No doubt. No doubt. How do you feel? I, I, I was questioning myself actually a little bit because uh, I stepped in the pocket to Cam got a good rush kind of off my left, and AJ Dillon was running uh, an angle round and was wide open for a touchdown. I really stepped up to move away from Cam and to throw it to him. When I was about to throw it to him, I felt, you know, getting tripped. And, it, you know, it was one of those awful things. The only worse than getting tripped like that is getting stepped on, like 
trying to get out from center and then you're falling down. It looks really awful. It looks super unathletic. This one looks slightly more athletic, not much. Um, but what got me was I got up and I immediately went to the white cap and was like, that's got to be a trip, right? <laughs> and he was like, I don't know. I'm not sure. And so when he was hemming and hawing, he throws the penalty. And then I'm not sure if he's talking to New York or, or upstairs a replay. But the defensive guys start saying, now you tripped yourself. You tripped yourself. Joe Hayden saying that. Sutton was saying that. Edmund was saying that. And at first second, it started creeping in and go, maybe I did. <laughs> maybe I did trip myself. And then when he picked up the flag, they still hadn't shown the replay yet, uh, uh, you know, on the Jumbotron. He picked the flag up, and I was thinking, man, is that what it's come to? <laughs> I'm in my 17th year, and I'm tripping myself, believing that I actually got tripped. And it was a real low moment for me. A few, <laughs> a, a tough couple seconds kind of turning, walking back to the huddle. Then I heard the booze ran down, and I looked up, and I was like, okay. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God. Jeez. It was such a rush of just joy and, and relief that I wasn't that unathletic guy yet who trips himself and thinks somebody tripped him. He walks all the way up. Oh! Sleep! Oh! Sleep! Holy Sleep! Man. This is not the one that I saw. Oh, good. Oh, my God. Can we go back to the beginning, please? Listen, go back to the Jesus. beginning. This guy, pause, 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 pause. That guy was sitting one section over in this blue polo shirt wearing son of a bitch who's here with his friend by the way right here they're just having a good old day at the ballpark old buddy in the glasses back here oh this has been fun look at this guy up here with the and the wife is maybe the, the wife and the guy up there they they're kind of intrigued to see what's going on padres guy said hey listen i've been locked in my fucking house for 13 months i'm gonna come to a ball game and you're gonna say dumb shit i don't think so pal he walks over what 45 yards, yeah. casually, eyes ready to go, not fists ready to go, though. Just that side, no, nope, calm. What you, you got a fucking problem, pal? People smiling down here. They know something's about to happen. We got a camera out. We would like to see the alternate angle from this particular person. But what a moment here. We beat COVID. We are back. Old buddy here needs to watch out for right hooks. Bow! Buckled. What, bitch? He said, <laughs> what? And then he gets wow. tackled by everybody else. Back pedals. Everybody watches this happen. What a mo... Jeez. What? He says. What, dude? What? What? Damn. Oh, my. What was said by who? Hey, as we get back into society, let's remember, people will punch you in the fucking mouth. Yeah. Uh-huh. show on Sirius XM Mad Dog Sports Radio. We thank you for taking the time to seek out this small regional show that streams internationally. Here's Pat and the boys. Welcome back to that show. Coach us up Chuck Wednesday, October 6th. Happy National Coaches Day as well. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, here on Sirius XM Channel 82, Mad Dog Sports Radio, <laughs> YouTube.com forward slash The Pat McAfee Show. We'll be talking to our coach, Chuck Pagano. Hour three today. Cannot wait to chat with him on National Coaches Day. Unreal. Worked we out. We obviously knew that. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's why whenever we were going into the season, we are like, hey, Chuck, what, what day of the week you want to go on? He goes, hey, listen, I don't care. Whatever we want to do. And, and we looked in the calendar, mm -hmm. and we saw it was National Coaches Day on a Wednesday during the season. We said, you know what? That'll be our Coaches Day. Yeah, it's yeah. Wednesdays. Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. Be smart. There are people on Earth right now in our existence. Sure. That would say that and mean it, what we just said. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I knew I was going to have Chuck Pagano, so I looked ahead 17 months, <laughs> and I saw that there was going to be National Coaches Day on a Wednesday, and I said, you know, we should start this now. It'd be a good lead-up, and then we just happened to fall on that day. Perfect. People would say that. <laughs> Instead of just being like, are we the luckiest fucking group of humans of all time that we have a Coaches Up segment on National Coaches Day? <laughs> Feels Maybe. like that's the day. <laughs> So we'll talk to uh, our coach on Happy National Coaches Day. 
Uh, Chuck Pagano in hour three. I can't wait to talk about that. There is a statement from another coach in the NFL, Bill Belichick, about Stephon Gilmore. This came via the New England Patriots Twitter account, I believe. I am grateful to Stephon Gilmore for his significant contributions to our team. Significant. It was a privilege and pleasure to coach Steph. I appreciate him for the true professional and class act that he is and wish him all the best in the future. Following discussions over a long period of time, we mutually agreed to part ways today. Bill Belichick, head coach and GM. That's right. And mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the slash that wasn't uh, added there, uh, GM, that at the bottom, that I feel like is probably why when Stephon Gilmore let, put out his message, he said he would like to thank Mr. Kraft, the coaches, and then just move along. Anytime you're dealing with business, this is why I've always found it incredibly impressive what Bill Belichick's been able to do because when you're talking about business, it can sometimes get muddy because you are the thing at, uh, what's the old bald cuz name from Vegas who does Pawn Stars? Rick. You yeah. are the Rick thing. Harrison. Okay, Rick Harrison. Yeah. <laughs> and Chumley. Yep. Chumley went through some stuff. Happy he's on the other side. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But they, is he on the other side? I'm not hurt, so try. I hope I he's on the other so. side. Yeah. Anyways, you are the thing that is being, you know, negotiated at the pawn shop. And Rick is Bill Belichick. You are the thing on the table. And then your representation, or you, I guess, is in there talking. And then you kind of get the message back. That is what a negotiation is in the NFL. Now, it might go differently for other people at a much higher level. And maybe it does just go swimmingly in some cases in the NFL. But there is always a, hey, I think I'm worth this. You're valuing me at this. This is just like when people get upset about their Madden ratings because you're putting a number now on the actual person as opposed to just ranking or talking about. Now you're putting an exact number on somebody. It's like, well, how the fuck do you know that that's what my number is in comparison to somebody else's number? When you're negotiating a deal, that is the same thing. It's, it's now real life, though, as opposed to a video game number. And you start looking around at what other people are making, how you feel like the team has paid you know, other people on your team that you have probably contributed more than much more than you start getting into that game so i think that is why there is a potential you know maybe i'd like to thank the crap mr craft and the coaches and why publicly it came out before that steph wanted to get a deal done so he was like hey i'm trying over here this came out years ago almost and uh, bill belichick alluded to how it had been over years but steph uh, gilmore's message was in the notes section classic mm -hmm. hmm. hey, anytime you need to get something you know off your mind that notes section is incredibly convenient. Yeah. Remember back in the day, they had used to used to uh, like fucking post-it notes and stuff. Oh yeah. yeah, pens and paper. If they had an idea or something that they wanted to remember or whatever, they would they would literally have to remember it. That would probably change, evolve. Think about how much stuff that we forget now. That could potentially be, you know, because every, all the information would come in. But think about what how note taking used to have to take place. The amount of time. The, the, you had to have the utilities, the yep. accessories. And by the time you got there, it was probably already forgotten. The notes section is fucking one of the greatest inventions. I yeah, think. it's huge. Game changer. The oh. upgrades, too, right now are top notch. You can make entire like pitch decks in your notes section right Whoa. now. Whoa. Yeah. I have. <laughs> okay. It's unbelievable. But anyways, it's the OG. I used to, on Twitter way back, I used to do uh, Twitter Tales. And it was just my notes section where I just would write out entire stories, screenshot it, you know? And I'm not saying I created this. I assume other people did it as well. But the notes section post became its own thing on the internet because of how awesome the notes section is. Steph went to his notes section and said, it is with mixed emotions that I announce my goodbye to the great fan base. And this is a letter that he wrote to Pat's Nation in his notes section. We enjoyed so much success together, and you have been an incredible inspiration for my individual achievements. Thank you for supporting this Rock Hill kid and allowing him to achieve his NFL dreams. Anytime. To Mr. Kraft, the coaches, in the organization, thank you for providing me with this platform and allowing me to be a part of greatness. Most of all, I want to thank my teammates who lined up next to me every single Sunday with one goal in mind. Those moments on and off the field will never be forgotten. Sincerely, Stefan. Miss you, Stefan. Now, remember that that message didn't have to be, didn't have to be at all, didn't have to exist. 
if Bill Belichick just gave him the fucking money he wanted. That's right. Yeah. All these guys just asking for a fair contract for what mm -hmm. he's earned, and all of a sudden you guys can't pay him. And this is nothing new, by the way. Bill has done this to a lot of players yeah. in the middle of the season. If you're going into a contract year, hey, listen, we are not going to pay you what everybody else might pay you. If this is how you feel, go ahead and do your thing. I mean, Randy Moss, a similar situation happened during the season. So whenever you talk about Stephon Gilmore, I assume when he looks back on this situation, he'll be happy. He was able to go get another deal, go to a place where, you know, you, you brand new fresh start. Maybe it is in Tampa, LA, Phoenix. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it's, he'll look back on this, but the mixed emotions thing, it is probably a little bit, I don't want to say personal, but heavy hearted a little bit whenever you think you're something and somebody who you probably have a lot of respect for says, nah, I don't think you are. That can become something, especially when you're two elite type people, which Stefan and Bill Belichick are. And obviously the Patriots are going to be different, but I think Stefan's going to look back on this and be very, very happy about it. Yeah. Thankful. Won a Super Bowl, you know, got his first real big contract from New England. I mean, this, like you said right before, this has happened all the time in New England, and typically it has turned out well for us. And with J.C. Jackson being the young guy on a franchise tag, so he's probably going to be the corner that gets the big contract going into the offseason. I hope we can get some sort of trade done, especially if it seems as though he really wants to go to the Packers over any of the other uh, – teams that we've kind of thrown out here so if we could get like a fifth round pick for him <laughs> why wouldn't we do that yeah and also um i think to your point you guys thought this was happening in tom brady that's why you well out of the building and then yeah. he had his best year or whatever i mean year. not his best year but, but a I very mean, good year I mean, <laughs> he had a very good year he I threw 50 touchdowns in the season let's not forget yeah. but i mean malcolm butler this happened with we were fools for not letting him go when he got bashed Chandler Jones, which obviously he's still very good at football. Collins a couple times. I mean, it's going to work out because, you know, you got to trust Bill. Bill knows. My brain was thinking of the Tom Brady thing while you were talking about the potential trade. Did you say that there's a potential trade? Because I don't think there's any potential trade. You're saying they were trying to trade. Him. Yeah, they were trying to. I'm saying For I a hope... long time, by the way. Yeah. The Patriots allegedly have been trying to trade Stephon Gilmore for like two years. So yeah. I don't know what the Patriots were asking for in return. I have no idea why that deal never came to be, especially if you weren't ever going to be able to make a deal with the player. So who knows how those were actually going and, and all that stuff. But the agent for Stephon Gilmore has come out and basically said, uh, Greg A. Bedard, is this, uh, no, Gilmore's agent, Jason Shayut, continues to be in complete control of this situation. The guy knows how to work his leverage. Latest league thinking, no trade, sign with Packers, clock ticking. That came after he tweeted, I'd be shocked if the Patriots aren't able to trade Gilmore and the Packers are considered the favorite in league circles. So he reported that a trade's going to happen. I don't, that would just be the Patriots not filing the paperwork to cut Gilmore until the end of the day. Yeah. So is that there? So Stephon Gilmore was told to put out a release that he was being released, and Bill Belichick put out a thing that saying he was being released to build leverage for a trade, one last opportunity when they've been trying to trade him for two years. Because in in my eyes, I thought as soon as the guy's cut. He's cut. He's right? gone. People, like, that, isn't that how they Well, goes? and once they put those statements out, isn't that the end of it? Like, they yeah. can't still trade him now if, like, the he Raiders, has already remember, been released. This happened with the Raiders. I Rodney think to the Hudson. Yeah. Rodney, yeah. yeah, I think this happened. So, I don't want to say that, that that hasn't happened in the past, but I, I don't understand how. Like, I don't understand how, how that trade happened out of the Raiders, too. I don't know how that happened after it was an announcement that he was released. Hey, you're at least going to be able to pick your next destination and uh, enjoy your life because we are cutting you. It's been announced. And then no, 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 actually, we're trading you to this place you don't want to fucking go, potentially. Like, I don't know how you're going to go to this team that's terrible that's able to give us a bunch of stuff because they want to build around you if whether or not you want to do it. Like, I don't know, and not that that has happened, but that could happen yeah. with how this whole thing's going. So I don't know how this works. I don't, I don't think I fully understand how this works, but the agent controlling the situation, I mean, I like that. Hey, yeah. hey, go to... Go to Good agent thing out there. Yeah, I like, go leverage on that. I wonder if the agent go says to Bill like, "Hey, if you want to somehow get something in return, Green Bay is the only place that you know we feel comfortable with going. If not, we'll just deny the trade or whatever." Yeah, but I don't think does Stefan yeah. have a trade clause? I, can he control that? I don't know if he does. If no one Bill Belichick, I doubt it. Well, that's what I'm saying. I, there is just zero leverage for the player for it to be announced that they're being released and not actually being released for another six or, or, or Matt. Or Matt Massive leverage for the team yeah. to announce that the player's been released with six hours left in the workday for a trade to potentially happen. I, oh, you don't want him? Okay, how about blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah. I, I just don't know how this is, I don't know how this is in good faith.
You know, I don't know how this is good business. Yeah, it's really only if the Packers want him so bad that they're like, don't release him, we'll give you this for him, so then there's no sort of bidding. No, I understand that, but what if fucking Stephon Gilmore wants to go to Tampa Bay? Too bad. Isn't that what, isn't Yeah, that that's what I'm saying, though. Like, like you know, the agent's tweeting that through this guy. Yeah. yeah. Who knows if that's real or not? Right. Mm -hmm. And I think Bill announcing he's gone, they're not trading him. I don't think so. More an hour or two with A.J. Hawk. Distraction this weekend in your hometown, the town that you live at a bar, I assume, you frequent. Now, there's another angle coming out where Urban Meyer allegedly stuck his two fingers <laughs> into the butt of a young co-ed <laughs> wearing jeans. AJ, <laughs> as somebody that lives in Columbus, Ohio, the alternate I mean, does angle. Does this video show that exactly? Yeah. Oh, the yeah. Alternate, oh, yeah. Alternate, oh, yeah. Alternate, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The alternate oh, angle is David. I've seen them all. I know. Urban Meyer sticks a finger gun into butthole <laughs> of Lady, who was once seen dancing on her, wearing jeans. Is this, is this a normal thing that happens in Columbus, Ohio? Is this expected? And how, what, what happened, do you think? Have you been at that bar? I mean, yeah, it's, I think he was at his place, Urban Meyer's Pint House, right? It's okay. his own restaurant. And then what he said in his, his press conference, a group next door wanted some pictures, so what? he went there, and he should have got what? out of there when they tried to pull what? him on the dance floor, right? Yeah, the, the group that was next to us wanted some uh, pictures. What? what? And then they wanted some uh, tequila. We have the best tequila. What? In the what? And then we had some uh, cocktails. What? what? We had some spirited conversation about the Buckeyes. What? And then we went to the dance floor. What? We shouldn't have went to the dance floor. What? Once you get to the dance floor, one thing what? becomes another thing, what? which ends with... What? Two fingers in the butthole, it appears, of a young co-ed, and this is obviously a distraction uh, for the Jacksonville Jaguars, and we tease and peas towards everybody down there. Obviously not fun, not cool, but, you know, alcohol will do something to you every once in a while, get you feeling a little freaky out there, especially in Columbus, Ohio. Yeah, I'm also, like, no one's talking about it. I'm worried about Urban's health. I mean, like, people talk about his heart, but he has two collapsed testicles from coming in his pants so hard That's from, true. you know, sticking his fingers up that girl's butt. So, I just hope Urban's doing well. I know it was a tough weekend, so ice those balls down, Urban. Ice them down. I mean, is, do you think he's put it in the past? Is he past this now? Is everyone going to forget about it? Yeah, I'm sure so, no right. way. He addressed it. It's definitely a spank bank. I, I think so. I think we're all past it, man. Oh, boy. And the, <laughs> first, the first video came out was from an account called Uh-Oh Urban. Yeah. <laughs> this oh, really? guy Did is Did they make a, an account just for that? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know if this is a regular thing from this particular account. I stumbled upon it just this week, and I think as all of us did. And then that video got taken down. I mean, I wondered how, you know, what was the go about? Did they have to look at surveillance? You know, who is, who was sitting at this point? We got to get this thing going. But alternate angles are now coming. And obviously Urban and I assume his team is, you know, his team's probably, hey, you got, hey, you're all right, man. You don't have to worry yeah, about right, us, coach. by the way. Seems like you're probably going to have to have some other conversations. <laughs> but let's go win some games out there, coach. Let's go ahead and do that. But God damn. Whoa, what a moment. Yeah, All right, we covered it. We addressed it. We had to. Well, but had now to. they're in a deep dive for ass and titties on Snapchat because that is the one who put out the video yeah. of him finger getting alternate banged. The alternate angle. The alternate yeah. angle, Great yes. journalist. All right. I have a surprise, obviously. That's what this show is all about. Uh, we have boots on the ground in Cleveland, who I assume knew this was going to happen what? all along. Ladies and gentlemen, live from Cleveland, Mr. Jason Glazer, your thoughts on Kyle Pitts to Atlanta fine, sir? Oh, there's a delay. Well, uh, first and foremost, Pat, I'd like to say, hey, listen, thanks for having me. Cleveland is beautiful this time of year. Granted, it does smell like a mixture of poop and diarrhea and sewage. Jesus. Uh, it doesn't smell great down Jesus. here. Jesus. But I'll tell you what, 27 years in this thing, I fucking live for the draft. Love being down here. Love being in the Cleveland. Uh, but yeah, Kyle Pitts, listen, what do you want me to say? I knew this two weeks ago. Really? I mean, do we need to do this whole fucking song and dance? Okay. I'll give you guys one through 32 if you, if you want to know. You know, do you want to have fun? That's nice. You want to not know who's going uh, but yeah, I had this two weeks ago. You know what I'm wondering is if the guy you had in your studio, 
Mad Mel Kuyper. I know that sorry son oh, of a bitch whoa, didn't have this. Whoa, whoa. The mic's not, the mic's not plugged in. Whoa. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Uh, I actually just explained no, it. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. No, you yes, no, you I did. No, I had this. I did. Yeah, no, I did. no, you didn't. I, did. you I had didn't. this. I, I had you it. Didn't. Trust me. Can you I talk didn't. for Christ's sake? Okay, fine. Fine, yeah. Can Go I ahead. talk? Okay, yeah. Like I said, Kyle Pitts, unbelievable talent. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. You said that shit, Jason. I know it. I looked at your mock draft. Jason, please relax. Oh, my God. Jeez. I had no idea it was going to get like that. Sorry about that, Mad Mel. Obviously, there's a little bit of uh, content there. He's saying you don't know your ass for a fucking hole in the ground, though, Mad Mel. Oh. How do you feel about that from Jason Glazer live in Cleveland? Well, classic move. You know, Glazer looks like he's getting ready to go to a goddamn titty bar or something like that. I mean, dress up, pal. It's the NFL draft. Look at me. I'm dressed to the nines. You know, you look like an asshole. I mean, eh, just eh, get him out of here, can we? I mean, is he, is he going to stick around? Can we get him the hell out of here? I think his he's, uh, microphone still still on jay can you hear us jay is everything good back there listen fuck you guys i'm oh, out of here I'm, I'm going over to the rock and roll hall of fame i'm Jeez. gonna hang out with d snyder and twisted sister are you serious okay jason sorry thank you so and ladies Jeez. and gentlemen jason glazer thank you jason thank you thank you Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Welcome back to that show here on this Coach Us Up Chuck Wednesday, October 6, 2021, years after zero. Hour two of this sports show on Sirius XM and YouTube will begin right now. Yeah. I think we got to go over Twitch at some point. Really? Really? I mean, I saw some money that people were raking uh, in over a two-year period, allegedly, over uh, uh, last night on the internet. Oh, okay. yeah. I mean, it was a two-year period, so, I mean, there is something to be said about that. But there's, there's, there's Pretty good, good coin. coin. Yeah, Pretty sure. good coin in that. Get them bits. Hey, you like big bits and we can't lie. lie. That mother. Mm -hmm. Then nah. With that being said, I don't know much about uh, Twitch at all, by the way. And I'm, you know, I feel like we do pretty well here on YouTube. We're about a couple hundred subscribers away from uh, 1.5 million. Wow. My God. Here we go. go. How about that? Congrats to all you guys, man. Hey, congrats Congrats to you. you. No, congrats to us. Yes. Not just us, by the way. Also, some stooge in Columbus, Ohio, joins us for a couple hours a day whenever he can. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, right. whenever he's not out and about hoity-toity, highfalutin' around at these right. black tie events, which, by the way, we have to have some representative at, so we're thankful it is this guy sure. from Ohio. Ladies and gentlemen, college football national champion, Super Bowl champion, Ryder Cup champion, Ooh. and a man, you know, as part of the show is about to have... 1.5 million subscribers on YouTube, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We appreciate you all for real. We have no idea why, honestly. And uh, we assume you'll get sick of us at some point. But fuck it. Let's keep it going. Ladies and gentlemen, AJ Hall. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this guy owns I mean you two always are so good shirts. at intros. Yeah. This guy owns two fucking shirts. Two. Come on. It's unbelievable. Good. I'm like Obama. I'm just going to wear the same thing every day so I don't have to make those decisions. Okay. <laughs> so that's Steve Jobs, I think. Maybe President Obama. Obama did it too. Okay. And a lot of people do, really? I guess, because, you know, a lot of people. He had like four suits, four different colors, <laughs> a couple colors he wore. No suits. I Same mean, one. to be clear, I should not mock anything yeah. uh, that anybody okay. does because. You I- get the. You buy. 50, 50 Delia tank tops at once, and then throw them all the way after you wear them. I'm the bad guy. I've been what? wearing these tank tops a long this time guy. before your favorite comedian or whatever, but I'm just <laughs> saying it is something that Steve Jobs talked about why he became the turtleneck jeans New Balance guys because it takes a decision, a thought out of his day. I have my costume. I know what I'm wearing, and I'm going to move on with it. And, uh, yeah, I'll just buy 50 tank tops from Amazon, and then whenever they're done, it's a little bit of a scramble. Oh, my God, mm-hmm. I have other clothes, do I? And then we just get more. And then we wash them, and then we're right back in it. You try to offend people with your three shirts that you have. And that is my biggest issue, I think. 
Oh, I do not offend people by wearing a shirt of one of the, the greatest American guitarists ever to live. Sorry about that. That's the only reason I wear this shirt. And also, it is Wednesday, so I feel like I am obligated to wear this. Oh, uh, yeah. Coach is up Chuck Wednesday. Uh, your <laughs> Chuck is Chuck Berry. My Chuck is Coach Chuck Pagano. It's National Coaches Day. What did Urban Meyer, you think, do to celebrate National Coaches Day? I know he ran a team meeting this morning. Did you hear the way that was being worded? Uh, Urban Meyer addressed his entire team this morning, and this is what he was saying. Oh, so he had a fucking team meeting. Meeting. Okay, every Wednesday morning that happens. Uh, and they talked about how he owned it and everything like that. Happy National Coaches Day. I think that was the biggest coaching thing he's done in the past uh, few days or whatever. So maybe they, are, maybe they are able to get past this down there in Jacksonville, AJ. Yeah, we'll see. I just got done reading something about uh, when they reporters asked him if he okayed it with Shad Khan to stay back in Ohio, and he said, I talked to Bauke, the GM, a long time in advance. So, yeah, we're, this thing is not going to end anytime soon. Yeah, it's not going to end anytime soon because, obviously, the inter- and if they lose, I mean, whoa, Ooh, oh, it's going to go. Uh, Gumpy brought up a great point earlier, a great point earlier, and I don't know if his microphone's on or not, but I will say that at Bubba Gumpino brought this point up earlier because when it came out in the press conference that way in advance – he got that okayed by uh, Balky or whatever, okay? Way in advance, he got that in the week or whatever. So a couple quick things that tells me. Uh, so Urban Meyer knew what he was doing was probably not an acceptable thing, right? So he actually had to go to the GM and say, like, hey, is it cool if I do? Anytime you have to say, is it cool if I do something, normally there's a thought in your head that you shouldn't, right? And so I'm not 100% sure. Maybe Urban Meyer's a different human than me, but that is what that told me. And then Gumpy brought up, so if they won... If they, if they win there, he gets his first win. Trevor Lawrence gets his first win. That entire crew, he was going to stay behind? Or was it like, hey, if we lose, I'm going to stick around. If they won, was I go say it with the grandkids and then Bell, stop by a chop house, of course, <laughs> obviously. Like, is that how that thing was going to go? And that was a great question by Gumpy, I thought. I, I think the more information we find, he, needs, he just needs to be entirely truthful about everything because then you don't have to remember what's what and how is it going to be taken, you know? Yeah, if you, if you tell the truth, you don't have to remember anything that happened. You just recall what you just tell people exactly what went on. But, okay, let's say they won the game. I mean, great question, Gump. I didn't think of that. Let's say they won the game. Jacksonville's fans are very excited. A horde of them show up to the airport to welcome their, <laughs> their team that just got their first victory, and your head coach isn't there. That would have been a very bad look. You're right. Yeah, and I would assume if they Much win. better than what happened, though. Much better than yep, what, yeah. the look we have now. <laughs> yeah, well, I think if they win and he – I mean, that's going to be a bad look, and then he's going to follow that up. Think if they win, what he'd be doing. I mean, he may be miserable drunks or worse and, and doing crazier yeah, things, but yeah. a celebratory urban back air in Columbus, I couldn't even fathom. It, But I did like hearing, you know, that it sounds like to his team he was at least, like, being a human. What, I didn't see that. Like, who did that come from? Did the players speak to the media? How did that come out? No, sources, dude. Sources. Cool. This morning. He had a news Bobby? conference this morning. He had a news conference this morning, but the sources were talking about what he addressed in the team meeting, right? Yeah. I, I don't think the I, I don't think Urban talked about what he said in the team meeting to the reporters in the press conference. I think it was a source. I think it was Rappaport actually that said that uh, he addressed uh, he embarrassed his, the two things in his life he loves most uh, is his family and football, and he embarrassed both of them or something. Mm-hmm. He embarrassed himself for both of them. He he like took ownership in front of the team allegedly this morning. Who knows what's real and what isn't real? Allegedly yesterday he got laughed out of position groups. I I mean, this is quite a saga for a head coach in the NFL. A fucking head coach in the NFL. There's only 32 of them. I assume they win a game. Nobody will even ask any more questions about it. Maybe, I don't know if, if one win is going to make this thing uh, slide under the rug, but maybe he was thinking by staying back, he, he had done that. I know college coaches do that sometimes, to stay back and recruit if they're playing somewhere. Maybe that's, that wasn't his thought. That was probably yeah. always like the uh, excuse. Oh, yeah. That was the what excuse. What if he was like, hey, I got a f- couple free agent workouts down here. I got some dudes I'm going to work out. Where are we at? We're right near my chop house. Oh, yeah. Hmm. I think I got to recruit. <laughs> <laughs> What a life, dude. What an insane world. What if he just turns around this whole thing and wins? Be hell of a story. I don't think we have to worry about that. Yeah. No. They might get beat by 40 on Sunday. They might get beat by 70. I mean, it sounds like if the team – now, the team still – the players still want to make money. Okay? So the players don't want to put shit football on the field, even if – Nobody in there, including some of the coaches, probably have turned to the player's side, if I had to guess. And I'm not 100% sure, but I assume some of the players are like, we don't fucking know either, dude. We've been around the NFL 20 years. We have never seen anything like this before. I wonder if that could potentially be, 
a bunker mentality. Oh. And uh, this is what Gumpy's calling for. Gumpy's calling for the Jacksonville Jaguars Urban Meyer revenge game. We have some breaking news, Zito saying, like big breaking news. The Panthers traded for Stephon Gilmore, sending a 2023 six round pick to New England. So after it being announced that Stephon Gilmore was released by the Patriots this morning, a quote from Stephon, a quote from Bill Belichick saying that we mutually agreed to part ways and then now it not being official until 4 p.m. is what everybody said, which still doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know how this works. I don't know how this is anywhere near fair to Stephon Gilmore. I don't know if he had to okay this or not okay this, but it being announced that he's getting cut as a leverage play to get final offers for Stephon Gilmore. I don't know. Listen, he's probably happy. Okay, they'll look back on this as a good thing. But the Carolina Panthers just got an absolute dog. And there are fan bases around the NFL that are mightily pissed, I'd assume, that it only took a six-round pick to get Stephon Gilmore today, A.J. Hawk. The timing is weird, and the fact that he put the statement out and all of that, it had to be, right, where they were trying to get, like, a final offer. Hey, if you really want him, like, and you don't want to have to be bidding with other teams – reach out and let's see what you can offer us is that what happened i don't i don't and then allegedly his agent was talking to mike berard mike great berard no mike something mike 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 Mike, no there was mike girardi greg bedard greg Greg bedard Bedard. yeah he was in green bay he was a writer in green bay now he's in new england right Uh, according to greg bedard uh stefan's agent was telling him that he, he knows how to work his leverage and that uh, there's no trade, sign with the Packers. That's the latest league thinking after Greg A. Bedard says that this thing isn't over until 4 p.m., which, once again, I don't get. Like, I thought as soon as you cut somebody, you just send a paperwork to the NFL, boom, they're cut. Like, I thought that's how this whole thing worked. This happened with the Raiders, I think. They announced that they were uh, cutting or moving on from Rodney Hudson, I think. And he went to Arizona, maybe? Yep. Mm-hmm. And they said he's they're released. This whole thing's happened. And then a couple hours later, he was traded to Arizona. So I don't know if this is a new move. We need an agent. We need an agent on quick to tell us, like, just a quick answer. How does that work? Why does it happen? Yeah, because that fucks the player, you know? Yeah, maybe he thought, like, all right, I'm going to have multiple teams. I kind of get to pick and choose maybe where I could go and also get a little bit more money probably. Yeah, not that Steph, by the way, didn't want to go to Carolina. I have no idea if the, there was an could agreement. Could be a lot worse places. That's a good. That's not a bad spot right now. And I think he's from Carolina as yep. well, so I think it's a homecoming type situation. And I know uh, that's why they were allegedly so high on Deshaun. They wanted to be in the game because they have uh, the richest owner in the NFL at $15.6 billion or something. I think I saw him on a list the other day. And also he's trying to build up that fan base and build up the brand and be great obviously with everything going on off the field for Deshaun they backed off of that whole thing I think I'm not 100% sure but bringing Steph back to Carolina I think is a big move Uh, I just hope that this is where the player wanted to go to that just seems like an interesting way to do business and and it's starting to happen here in those last couple times and I don't know. I honestly. Steph must have thought. Steph had to think he was released, right? To put that out. There's no other. Okay, this is what we're going to try to do. His we're agent. Try to field offers for you. Yeah, his agent's allegedly saying, nah, he's going to go to the Packers or whatever. And that's if the agent is, if that guy's saying latest league thinking, that guy's saying, and he's also talking to the agent, right? Greg A. Bedard. Now this is just assuming that Greg A. Bedard has a relationship with Jason. Chat. Yep. Uh, that's his agent continues to be in complete control of the situation the guy knows how to work his le- leverage so let's assume that he's talking to the agent right the agent's yeah. giving him that is quite a put over of that agent by a media yes. source and then latest league thinking no trade sign with packers clock ticking so let's assume maybe the latest league thinking is that but jason Chayet probably had the similar thoughts that he was going to sign with the packers now he's with the panthers you know it's like who knows who what did this cause the panthers to jump out there and say hey we don't want to like the packers wanted them and the panthers said no we want them if can we give what can we give up a six round pick cool yeah let's do it and try to get them by the way fuck a six round pick yeah. wow i'm with you i agree bill with those six round picks <laughs> yeah i mean it's I mean, you're right though. i mean like, I, you could yeah, hit. but you can get it so, back you yeah, can exactly. get a six-round pick. You can get three back next next year. You can get a six-round pick back easy for anything. Now I don't. Once again, we are not GMs, probably for a reason. And I don't have enough reasons, patience yeah. to do fantasy football. That's a lot of time. I don't know how everybody does it, but I'm a big hey. Let's get 
this Lombardi now. What is a future draft pick going to do for me? I don't know. Somebody run the we, – we use so many numbers, right? Stats have taken field goals out of the game basically now because – and some people are trying to take the run out of the game because, guess, pass yards are more than rush yards per mm. play. So stats are saying you need to stop running the ball, and then there's an entire thing around that. But I just – man, the thought – the player not being able to go, I just, I, I'm very much hung up on this. Like, yeah. very much hung up on the fact. What do you mean? Like, players know, like, you don't, once you sign a contract, like, you don't really have a lot of say in where you go or what happens from there. But then the agent come. they're a part of the announcement of the leverage to get me to go somewhere else. Like, does he know that? Like, could they, it be, it could be an innocent thing, right? Where the, the Patriots, just the paperwork wasn't final. Maybe it's a 4 p.m. day, like, when it becomes official. And all of a sudden, like, all right, Steph, Steph, good luck, have fun. We'll see you. Thank you for your time. And then all of a sudden, they, they're getting some calls that they want to trade for. All right. Well, well something happened like this, um, and not at the deadline like this, but with, I'm sorry, you were going to say something? Go ahead. Well, uh, is it possible that Ch- Chayut or whatever the agent's name is, like basically was contacted by Carolina, like, hey, we're going to pay Steve and we'll, or Stefan. We're going to give him his money. But then Bill would have to agree to this, right? So Bill is the one that would have to agree to this as the GM of the team. So then you would assume that Stefan and Bill are, are working together. And if that's the case, good on Bill then, right? I mean, if the Bill is taking into consideration only the teams that Steph will go to or whatever, good on Bill for doing that, I think. And, and stud player, by the way, getting only a six-round pick. Now, I know people will say... Uh, look what happened in the past with certain players. Let's assume that Steph is still a, a baller. If that was in conjunction with, I think that's a good move. And that's good business. That's awesome. But if not, if it is just a last final call for, hey, can we get a final offer here? That's insane. And you would assume that somebody would offer more than a six-round pick, though, I guess. Right, yeah, for this guy? And we're definitely going to find out very soon because he'll agree to an extension or whatever it is that he actually wants with Carolina within you know the next week, I'd assume. The thought, though... Uh, that they were making space in New England. That's why they had to get rid of Stephon Gilmore. He's a very real one. In another situation where the Patriots traded away a player who allegedly behind the scenes there was conversation about a contract in the middle of the season. Oh, yeah, you're going to Cleveland. And yeah. I'm not talking about this Cleveland. It is not this Cleveland Brown team. It is the Cleveland Brown team that was. Mm-hmm. Okay, the Browns is not the Browns, okay? The Browns was the Browns for a long time, though. And a man got traded out of New England to Cleveland because a contract conversation happened with Bill Belichick. And this is when the Browns are bad and the Patriots are very good. That man then goes back to New England, then goes to Detroit, is now back with New England officially. Jamie Collins has signed with the New England Patriots. The absolute freak show of an athlete linebacker returns to the New England Patriots for the third time after leaving to go to Cleveland and leaving to go to Detroit. Now he is back with the New England Patriots, an absolute stud. Had to make cap space to get this signing. That's why the Stephon Gilmore news was happening today. That makes a lot more sense. Congrats to Jamie Collins going back to a system that he is very, very, very comfortable in. I think it's awesome. It's great. Like when Bill is meeting with these guys, whether they're traded or released, like, hey, you know, stay ready. Stay ready. You never know. Like coaches like to say, hey, you never know. Like the Patriots, you absolutely don't know. You could be back two, three, four times. It feels like Jamie Collins, um, Bill, you can go get paid somewhere else and you're going to come back here. Yep. Right? That kind of happened a couple mm-hmm. different times. Absolutely, yeah. Hey, you can. Uh, you want to talk about money? All right, we'll send you somewhere they'll pay you. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, go get, go, some, go, go get some guaranteed money for two years, and then they'll release it, and you can come right back. Come on back. Yeah. And I think Jamie, the reason why I hold him in such high regard is because at one point in my actual life, I was down on a knee, <laughs> one knee, okay, and I had my left hand down like this and my right hand like this. And I stared at him, and it looked like he was actually jumping through the window of Lucas Oil Stadium. Yeah. He was so fucking high up in the sky. I've never seen a human jump that high. He cleared her long snapper by, I don't know, four or five feet, it seemed like. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that was one of the cleanest blocks of all time. Oh, my God. Uh, so I think anything that guy wants to do, he's capable of doing. And uh, Bill Belichick gets a weapon back on the defensive side of the yeah, ball. Yeah, it'll be great, too, because it frees up Van Noy to kind of just zero in on just being a pass rusher now, which will be unbelievable for the defense. Yeah, Kyle Van Noy mm-hmm. rushing a pass rusher, just like old Ninkovich used to back in the day. Oh, that's right. Oh, Rob Ninko flying around <laughs> uh-huh. out there. Stephon Gilmore news is huge. Kind of covers up the Jalen Smith news. Did you hear us talk about that earlier? He was. Released, I didn't hear you talk about it, but where's he going to go? Uh, we don't know, but there's been no conversation or chatter about it, and I think the reason why is because in NFL circles, they potentially got the same videos that the internet got of Jalen Smith over the last couple of years. I think he has... Uh, he needs he needs to put out some highlights. Mm-hmm. I, I, and I don't, I don't know if that's... Uh, you know, I tried to tell old... Uh, 
old. What's his name? Joe. What was the politician who was just getting buried? Piero. Joe Donnelly. D- yeah. Joe Donnelly. Yeah. Sleepy Joe. Yeah. Sleepy Joe Donnelly. Acapulco Joe. Acapulco yeah. Joe. Yeah. The senator or congressman from Indiana, he was getting buried PR-wise in this congressional race or whatever the hell it was. And uh, I was just, you know, I was trying to tell him, like, hey, you need to put out some some positive. You need to do something. You're getting buried. And I'm not in the political world. I just live in Indiana. I was forced to see this. There is only low lights of Jalen Smith hitting the internet right now. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know what that's all about. And I think it's because the Dallas Cowboys fans maybe are such big fans that they want to defend the Dallas Cowboys for cutting Jalen Smith, even though they're going to owe him, like, I think $16 million over the next two years. Uh, it's $16 million in dead cap space. 2021, $9.8 million. $7.2 million of that is cash. I don't know what the fuck that means. And then in 2022, six. <laughs> Point eight million or whatever. Don't know what any of that means. I assume that's the money that they owe Jalen Smith that they won't be able to pay other players on their cap. But who knows? They cut him in the middle of a contract. Uh, and I think Cowboys fans are trying to support the decision publicly. And we saw a lot of bad videos, a lot of bad plays of Jalen Smith. Maybe he hasn't got all the way up to his, uh, his ceiling yet, but he, he's going to get picked up by somebody, I assume. Right, AJ? I mean, there's no oh, conversation absolutely. right now. Yeah, he'll get picked up. Uh, I don't know who who is... Uh who it may be or if they're going to give him like what kind of deal maybe a prove it prove it deal uh we know he's crazy athletic he's super fast but i mean he had a, one of the nastiest what leg slash knee yeah, injuries yeah. coming out of college in his bowl game i respected the fact that the cowboys drafted him and said hey we're not going to have you for a year it was a high draft pick too right it was a huge, second second round, round. It was a huge story like a big story yeah but jerry also never really gets any credit for his drafting or anything like that normally very good drafter like the names that they have now who knows if the names mean everything, but him making that draft pick was a big deal because he said, we're not going to have this guy for a year. We'll let him rehab, become his best, and then we'll get him in the future. We think he was betting on this dude that he did not know a lot about, by the way. Like, I'm just betting on this guy, working his ass off, being able to adapt to the NFL game, being able to do everything. And I think physically he was able to do it. Some of the videos, though, it appears as if maybe the game is moving a little bit too quick right now. And I, I don't know if that was the system he was in or if that's just a couple of plays that are hitting the Internet. And I haven't watched enough film. But what a freak show athletically. There has to be somewhere to put him on a football field. Oh, yeah, I'm sure there is. And, and he'll find his place. And maybe he's OK with the change of scenery because he, I think he only played about half the snaps so far this season, too, where I saw. So I'm sure he wants to be in there full time and get a chance. I'm an idiot. Right? Okay. We know that. Couldn't – why didn't they just do what Micah did? Yeah. Put him down just, and just have him rush the passer. He's I mean, big, he's strong, he's energetic. Do you think it's that, just that easy? All of a sudden you can just rush the passer and everyone can do it? No, I, I'm not saying that, but has it ever been attempted, I guess? Maybe that is the question because it feels like he has, yeah. what, all of the – he has high motor, right? He's always – he seems – he's uh, – well, I guess you got to be kind of violent. It seems mm. like – but I seem to be a big guy, a couple big hits. I don't know. But it, why haven't – there has to be somewhere. Maybe they have. Field. I'm sure they have. Like I'm sure they've they've worked him down there. But it, it's to be like his full time gig. What what Micah Parsons is doing playing out. He's not a giant outside backer, but that dude can rush. He's powerful. He's very athletic. He's he's obviously very energetic. I feel like people feed off of his energy for sure. I wonder if uh, he'll stop by the old Gridiron Gang with Robert Mathis. You know, yeah. Robert Mathis is teaching game out here yeah. too. <laughs> All, like, pass rushers. Every day he's out there, by the way. I feel like it's... He has a facility there? Uh, there's a facility yeah, where the Colts have training camp. He has a... They, he uses the same facility. It's an indoor thing. And they have an outdoor field as well. He has this entire setup. It's really sweet. But watching him, like, go to work with all these pass rushers and these high schoolers and there's college guys and there's NFL guys that come through there, he's, like, doing this on an everyday type thing. If I don't want to say Micah doesn't have great people around him i assume he already does but like robert mathis almost mastered that you know i don't want to say undersized but a little bit smaller incredibly fast explosive violent with his hands like that's the type of steps right that you can take and if micah evolves and what if he becomes like one of the best pass rushers in the history of the game i mean yeah it's definitely possible isn't it you can move him around too i I, the defense is gonna have a hard time identifying okay he's playing dn with his hand down this play now he's standing up in what you call the old amoeba, amoeba defense that people feel cool saying. I and then this next play, he's playing inside backer. That was a shot at me for yesterday when I said it to Aaron? No, I hadn't heard it in a while, but I just remember that there's a time on TV yeah. where people love to say it. The Giants. Well, I said it yesterday. I love saying it yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> it's a cool I, word. I actually said it yesterday. I, felt I, so like, I don't know if I've ever used that. I've only heard it used. So, yeah. Thank you for, for refreshing me. Well, that's like whenever people are talking about how he addressed the entire team. Like, yeah. uh, a fucking team okay. meeting? No. All right, all right. He had a team Haven't, meeting. 
Every single day, all season long. <laughs> yeah, he was going to have to do this. This was going to. This was something that does happen and has to happen. I wonder how that whole thing went. Hey, uh, your 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 version of Urban's team meeting was. I mean, yeah, I, I watched the clip. It was beautiful when you would. You're at the board going over to the first slide, and you're just popping in and out through the uh, trying to talk through the event. It was really good. Yeah, because you kind of cover it while also moving along. You know, we address this, and then you address it, then you still address it, then you move on, then you address it, then you move on, then you put a bow on it, then you're done. And I think that's what he probably did this morning. I, I'm not 100% sure. Maybe he watched that as game film, by the way. Ooh, maybe, oh, yeah. Maybe, Get better. I don't think anyone can execute it like you did. I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. It is some of these, uh, I think vitamins potentially put me in the place where I need to be. And that's what I'm talking about whenever I read Ram Dass. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Right. You know what I mean? I can put myself anywhere because you know where I am? I'm right here, dude. Mm -hmm. Hey, what was the be. book this week? Uh, it was a fucking good one, dude. The, the Four, four Agreements. Four yeah. That's right. No, it was actually four marijuana leaves. Four yeah. Marijuana was, that dope? Right. was that dope on there, Aaron? <laughs> I thought it was. That's the first, that's first three questions you had. Well, I got it zoomed in. I mean, all I it saw was like a it. marijuana leaf. That's literally all I saw. And I was like, this yeah. is the greatest book club of all time. <laughs> what are we doing? Is he growing? Is, am I going to get a recipe? Some seeds? Maybe a greenhouse treatment? What? What? Is, this what a, what? is that what this book is? And then he zoomed out. He's like, no, actually, it's how you become a much better human. Oh. Okay, okay, same thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. Same thing. Uh, yeah. Let's get to a break. Uh, we got the mayor on the other side. You're a big fan of this guy, right? Oh, Sean Casey's one of my favorite baseball players of all time. Hell yeah. Me too, by the way. Actual. Hey, we're going to ask him, him why he Jason didn't juice. Kendall. What's that? We're going to ask him why he didn't juice or if he felt like he felt pressured to juice. All right. I'm going to ask him if he knows Jason Kendall. Yeah, do that. Okay. He did a great hype video to come on the show. Do you see it? No. He posted like a 35 second video on Twitter just talking about coming on the show. Oh, the mayor? No. Yeah. Check it out. It was good. All right, we'll run it during this break. We'll run it during this break. I can't wait to be back on the other side with the mayor, the host of the mayor's office, Sean Casey, Cincinnati Red Hall of Famer, all-star, and absolute MLB analyst superstar joins us on the other side. We'll see you in four minutes. This is Coach Sup Chuck Wednesday with the mayor on the other side. Off MLB Central, MLB Network, boy, had a great time. Row Flow, D Row, Lawrence Shahai, it was great. I'll tell you what, about to go on my man Pat McAfee show. Another Yunzer, Pittsburgher, I love him. I don't know what it is, McAfee. When I come on your show, bro, it makes you want to pick up the belt. I know you're doing a lot of WWE stuff now. This is my John Cena version, a little older. John Cena version with the thing ripping right now. But I feel a little like Ric Flair, four horse with back 1980s style when he used to get it with the uh, Tully Blanchard, Ole Anderson, Arn Anderson on his size, four horsemen style. Looking forward to it. One thirty, Pat McAfee show. See you soon, brother. Just got off. I was told by Del Curry, Scotty Pippen struggles on the golf course. Right. Right. I was told at that thing that I'm going against Scotty Pippen the next day. Match play, heads up, one on one, Scotty Pippen. So we decide, like, okay, we'd probably have a couple drinks at the casino a little bit longer than we should. <laughs> Representing the NFL out of the shoeless golf club of America, Pat McAfee. His opponent representing the NBA, Scotty Pippen. You know what I mean? This guy's got six rings. Yeah. He's a fucking Hall of Famer. <laughs> but today, he's going to play against me. And then I start seeing Scotty hit some shots that are just, like, starting to come together. And I'm like, wait a fucking minute. I think I was lied to. You. We were lied to yesterday. We were told Scotty Pippen was a terrible golfer. Probably Scotty fucking Pippen. Going in the back nine, I think I was down one. Like, we were really, like, we were battling. But I started making putts. And Scotty Pippen went ahead and got real hot. I mean, <laughs> real fucking hot. I was down three with seven left. And I looked right in the camera, and I go, so we're down three, with like seven holes left. Scotty Pippen's about to get this work. Scotty Pippen from 190 yards out just fucking dunks it. <laughs> 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 fucking boom, bang, and then walks up to the green, gets the ball, camera's on him, and he goes, Pippen ain't easy. Down four with six left after Scotty Pippen just chips him from fucking 400 yards out. I, I was fucking demoralized. Uh, Pippen yeah. ain't easy. Is it? By the way, best he's ever performed at golf. 
because I'm around, better teammate than Jordan. Yep. People forget. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I told Dell. Oh, I was yeah. like, Dell, what the fuck are you lying to me? He was like, well, I saw it yesterday. He was not great. And Greg Anthony told me. And I was like, Dell, he buried me, Dell Curry. He buried me. He was like, hey, Pippen ain't easy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, baby. It's time to celebrate. Talking about a shotgun of beer after he had beat me, obviously. I, I like, teach him how to do it. Yeah, put a hole in there. It might spray a little bit, so. Yeah, yeah. So you're going to go here, and then you're going to open and flip up. Does that make sense? Congrats on winning the NBA a couple of times. Blah, 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 blah. And being an incredible golfer. <laughs> Cheers. Man. Man. Hey. 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 Damn. Okay, That's Scotty. the best blood light I ever had. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, there's no in the Are you right? <laughs>
Oh my God, bro. It's 162 games in 180 days. Like you, you start going stir crazy. Like you start figuring that stuff out early though. Like, Hey, when you Homer, let's jump in the laundry cart and just fire you down the dugout because that'll be a fun thing to do for the next 95 games. You know, and let's, let's put on, let's put on, if we're the Phillies, let's put on three sombreros. That's, that's a fun thing too. Let's bring out stuffed animals. Let's just do, have a million handshakes for 25 guys because it literally, you go insane when you're in that, you know, for you, you were with those guys all the time, but you start going insane and you start just creating fun things to do, uh, you know, for that 162. Hey, what's what's the relationship like with your manager? Like, I know being around baseball, and I've been in a few dugouts. Like, it's so relaxed and laid back compared to football. What Pat and I are, are used to in the relationship with coaches, there's a lot of like, there's a lot of fear involved with players and coaches. Like, co- players are usually worried, "Hey, this guy's going to cut me. I got to do what's right." Like, do you have that with managers in baseball? Oh well, if you play for Jim Leland, you do. You know what I mean? <laughs> 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 you know, I, I remember, you know, when you, when I was in Detroit with Leland, you're like, you know, a couple guys, you don't think it's a big deal. You get you get with Leland, you're like, oh, my God, this is like I'm 34 years old. I feel like my dad's in the dugout. I'm scared to death right now. You know, I, I had a moment one time with Leland, AJ, like it was late night. It was Sunday night baseball, 1130. Game's about to be banged. Leland comes here. He's like, all right, boys, the rain's cleared out. We got a, the old window. Game starts in 15 minutes. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. So we go out there. We're playing the game. It's like 3 o'clock in the morning. Never forget it. It's like the, it goes to extra innings. It's 11th inning. Oh. There's seven fans in the crowd. I go down. I uh, Cristino Polanco walks. I look down at third base. Gene Lamont's going through the signs. Boom, boom, boom. He puts on the hit and run. I'm like, you can't be putting on the hit and run now. I got a guy on first. I just need a pitch. I'll shoot the hole first and third. We're going to win this game. So next pitch comes, bro. I take it. There goes Placido Blanco. I'm like, oh, boy, it was a hit and run. Oh, this isn't good. Boom, he gets hung up. He gets tagged out. Leland comes out of the dugout, almost to the field. He's like, what are you doing? You're an idiot. Yeah. It's a hit and run, you idiot. I'm like, oh, my God, is this guy serious? I'm like, we're trying to – I'm like, I, I, you know, and he's yelling at me. So I'm, I'm scared to death for my job at this point. But listen, got an 0-2 pitch. Nah, Carlos Guillen – Two run homer, we win it on the walk off. Leland grabs me at the dish and goes, Hey, what were you doing out there? It was a hit and run. I go, I missed it, Skip. I missed it. He goes, All right, all right screw it. We won the game. It's no big deal. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that a boy, Sean. Hey, wait a bounce back. Hey, by the way, that's Pittsburgh in you. Couple there cried. Got to get a little bit of movement there. But also, you know, if you didn't hit that, I mean, you're probably getting cut the next day. And that is something you got to know about. And let's talk about these signals because they're insane. Last night, it seemed like there was a lot of elbow in there. And I think I've been explained a couple times, but I didn't grow up in the baseball community or whatever. Is it a sign? And this is what I think I've been told. Is it like how many times you hit your elbow or your different, like if you hit your wrist or your hand, how are those things deciphered? And are they all basically the same with different reasoning behind it all? It's like a different language. It's literally like a different language. I mean, you know, usually there's a hot sign. So the coach will go through, he's like, okay, if I go to my ear, it's hot. And then you got to stay with it. So he'll go through some signs. If he goes to his hat, it's a hit and run. He might go to his shirt. It's a steel belt. It's a bump. But then he can go through it and take it off. You know what I mean? So, like, you really got to stay with it. Like, it's a science. You're like, okay, did I just see him? Is it hot? And uh, did he put it on? And was I paying attention? Is this third grade math class where I was sleeping in the back? I, you know, I'm like, you know, it gets nerve wracking. So you, the hot, there's always a hot sign. There's always a takeoff sign. The stuff in between, you really got to focus out there. Like, did is that why they waved Aaron Judge in, you think? He got the wrong <laughs> sign? Like, what do you think happened? Do people get out coached in this game? Is that is that a real thing? Is that what you think happened last night? You know what? I think that, listen, at the end of the day, playing with that green monster, it messes with guys. When when Stanton hit that ball Hell off the fence, yeah. it kicks off. Hey, BGM, BGM, BGM. What a night for the big green monster last night. Hey, two <laughs> yeah. overs, dude. Congrats to that monster up there. Big it, night for the monster. Big night. I mean, that ball kicks off, and Kiki Hernandez makes a great throw. Bogarts makes a great pick. I think Nevin, when you're looking at it from there, Nevin, the third base coach, is like, listen, we got a throw. It's a short hop to Bogarts. I'm going to send him, and it just gets you sometimes. I remember I remember when I played for Boston at Fenway, I, I hit one off the monster. I run to second. I think it's a double. It's not a double. I'm out by 25 feet. Now, I was one of the slowest guys in big league history, but that's no big deal. That's a side note. I got thrown out by 25 feet. 
boom. I hit one to right center one time. The next night, it gets bounces off the fence. Nick Marcakis comes in. Bam, hoses me at second. I'm like, this is terrible. The fans of Boston are like, stay at first. You're slow. You don't know what the monster. You don't know what the hell you're doing. I'm like, I'm right. So I come in, put my put my helmet up. Fellow Pittsburgher, Tito Francona, Terry Francona. He comes up to me. He's like, Case. He's like, can I talk to you real quick? I'm like, yeah, what's up, Skip? He's like, you've gotten thrown out two nights in a row. One from the monster, one right center. Is there any chance you might have polio? <laughs> <laughs> Like, I don't know. I haven't been to a doctor lately, but there's a chance with what's going on. What I'm what I'm throwing out there right now, there's a chance. Fellow Pittsburgher. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Insert name of Italian and then yeah. tell incredibly harsh joke. That is awesome. Go ahead, AJ. Sorry. Middle of the game, too, right in the middle of the game. Speaking of, of speedy guys, did you play with Dion? And if not, like, how impressive is it what he was able to do? Dude, my I played with Dion in 2001, one of my favorite teammates of all time. I mean, you guys know him for football, one of the greatest ever. Prime was unbelievable because, you know, one of the quietest guys in our clubhouse was, which was, you know, which was, which was funny. But I tell you what, it was like, it was one of those things where, you know, when you watch Dion run, I remember he hit a ball in spring training, left center gap. He, it looked like he was, he looked like he was on a cloud just running and he, he was on third base where any other person, or maybe me, I'd be diving into second. Dion was standing on third. Just one of the best, you know, best I've ever seen. And for him to play 10 years in the show and 18 years in the NFL as shutdown corner changed the game. You know, for me, like, it was one of those things too, AJ, where I'm in the same clubhouse with him. I'm looking over him getting dressed going, first off, he's got the ugliest feet I've ever seen in my life. Like, those are bad dogs right there. <laughs> but secondly, I was thinking to myself, this guy's one of the greatest ever. I'm so excited for, especially football. I'm like, I'm just fired up to be in the same clubhouse as him. Yeah, he's great. I mean, obviously, greatest athlete of all time conversation. I mean, that conversation yeah. will go on forever, but he's in the convo. Yeah. So anything Dion does, Dion's allowed to do. And there's a couple Dude. people. Go ahead. Pat, how about this really quick? Uh, in Chicago one time, 2001, with Dion's there, he's on the DL. I come up right before the game to get my batting gloves on. Get my batting gloves. I forgot him in the locker. I'm going back out. No one's in the clubhouse. I turn to my right. Dion Sanders, Bo Jackson, sitting at Dion's locker talking. I'm like, and I no, no phones back then, so I'm like, where's the? I'm like, I should not freaking, be here. I should yeah, not I'm be like, here. I yeah, should. what am I doing here? And where's the <laughs> where's the 7-Eleven camera you have to buy where I can just you know the portable one? Where, yeah. where are those the throwaways? You know what I mean? That little yeah. uh, the little crank thumb thing. Yeah. Hey, yeah. It, you're not talking about yourself being a great athlete, obviously. Whenever you're talking about Bo and Dion, but you just made a handoff, I think, while telling that story. That was incredible work. I saw you get startled off screen, then I saw you look left, <laughs> then I saw you follow person, I think, around, and then you did a handoff, not even missing a beat. In the middle of that story, that was fucking unbelievable, Mayor. Uh, you... I, I'm a pro. The freaking something's beeping over here. I got somebody over there telling me it's beeping. I'm like, what's beeping? What? <laughs> Back to my story. You know what I mean? Back yeah. to my story. I'm a yeah. pro. It's like option, right? You know, misdirection stuff. I did it. Yeah, it was unbelievable. You're like a magician with your words, and your hair looks fantastic. <laughs> yeah. wow. Your hair is all the way in right now for the Mega Bowl tonight. Cards, Dodgers. What should we expect out of this game tonight? Well, I'll tell you what, it's good. what I love about Cards Dodgers is it's two heavyweights. It, it's two veterans going at it. You know, it's Wainwright, tons of success, you know, 17-year vet. Scherzer, a lot of success in the big leagues. Two vets going at it, know how to calm the emotions, get in it. It's going to be inter interesting to see how they go head-to-head -head because the bullpens nowadays will get involved fast. But I just love I love the fact that uh, the, the Cardinals defense, how hot they are with the bats, the, the Dodgers are going to miss Max Muncy. I mean, I think that's one thing right, that miss when you Max, take that kind of part, you take that bat out of the lineup, Need you take, uh, you know, he's one swing at one swing away from changing the game. He gets on base. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with Muncy being out of the lineup. But it's going to be a great game, man. And, you know, this is why you love this time of year in baseball and and Dodgers Cardinals, you know, let's get it on. Mega Max has got lightning in his wood, dude. That's right. Everybody <laughs> say it. Go ahead, Todd. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, the Yankees have never brought back a manager if he hasn't made it to the World Series within his first five years. Um, I don't know if you played with him or Brett Boone, his brother, or anything. Aaron Boone stinks. Uh, are the Yankees <laughs> going to shit can him and potentially Brian Cashman as well? Uh, what's going on here? How do you think that's going to play out? You know what? No, they're not. I mean, I think I, I don't know. I damn think, it! I, Whoa, I, mean, I mean, Booney. Oh. You know, I, I listen. You, there's so many times during the year you watch the bullpen, like. Aaron, Aaron Boone's not blowing up a, 
you know, a, a big lead in the seventh, eighth, and ninth inning. I just, I know Booney well. He's a great friend of mine. I just feel like his demeanor is right for, for New York. I feel like the New York Yankees need to get more athletic. You watch the Rays. You watch the Red Sox. You watch these guys. They're athletic. They're strong up the middle. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, Glaber Torres didn't play that well this year. You got Brett Gardner, man, in center field. You know, they have the big boppers. But listen, they can put runs on the board quickly. But at the end of the day, I yeah. think the Yankees big need to get boppers. more athletic. Yeah. Aaron Boone's going to be back. Hey, is big, yeah, is big bopper a uh, – is that a, a common phrase in the baseball lexicon? I don't know. I, I think, yeah, Big Bopper. I don't know. Is that maybe that's a Pittsburgh thing? I don't know where Big Bopper. Oh, it is. I, oh, yeah. I, mean, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, there's Big Bopping down there, seven, yeah. but, big time. But I, I don't think I've ever. I love Big Bopper because <laughs> I mean, those Big Boppers last night weren't big enough for that big old Bopper, uh-uh. the Big Green Monster. Hell you know yeah! What I, mean? I can't wait for tonight. Hopefully, there's a lot of action. I bet on the over last night. It did not hit. It was an eight and a half. It's close. Say. Yeah, it was close. Eight, uh, thanks to you guys, not yeah, to the no. Yankees. Yeah. Which, by the way, did you hear the anger in him whenever you said they're not going to fire Aaron Boone? He was actually pissed. Time to go. <laughs> That's how Yankee fans obviously feel is that, like, if you don't win the World Series, everyone needs to go every year, right? Like, So I get it. I, in New York, that's the way it goes. But I don't think Booney's the problem. I think Booney's actually the right guy. Oh, I agree. Honor. He's on a hot seat there. Go ahead, Tom. <laughs> Mary, you talked about Wainwright and Scherzer being vets. Uh, both of them have recently have had tough starts. Does that matter at all tonight, or is it just reset their vets? They're going to be fine going into this game tonight. That's a great question because Scherzer's given up 10 runs, I think, oh, in his last 10 innings, something like that. So, you know what? I think I think once you're in the dance, it, the, 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 the adrenaline, is such, so different here. The atmosphere is so different. And so I, I just feel like these guys, their game, I don't think it matters how they finish. I think tonight you're going to see a, a pretty good pitching uh, matchup. I think these guys will deliver. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, Mayor, have you ever been involved in a bre- benches clearing brawl or rush the mound for any reason? Oh, my God, man. Well, one of the, one of the um, you got the Boston shirt on, so Hell obviously yeah. probably one of the one of the biggest one of the biggest brawls, and I'm sure you remember this in 2008 when uh, Coco Crisp and James Shields went toe to toe. I was I was right in the middle of that one. It was like, um, you know, it was it was one of those things. You know, first pitch was behind Coco Chris. And I remember getting to the top step. I go, all right, fellas, here we go. It's, <laughs> it's freaking William Wallace time. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone top step because it's happening. You know what I mean? So here we go. Next pitch, boom, he drills Coco. Coco comes out. Now Shields meets him, right? And I remember running out. It was one of the fast I ever run. I ran like this. For some reason, my arms went like this when I ran, but I was flying this time. Like I was like figure skating. You know what I mean? So I come out there, speed skating, speed skate out there, boom. James Shields throws one of the greatest haymakers ever, right? Coco Crisp, Matrix, boom, back. He comes back, bam, bam, bam. Coco hits him with a three shot. I come flying in, go after James Shields. And if you look at the replay, Johnny Gomes is unloading on on Coco. I I totally missed that happening. That's why I was really trying to protect him. Like, (laughs) hey, let Johnny Gomes unload on you real quick. I got to go get James Shields. So I go to get James Shields, and I pull back like this. Well, DeMarlo Hale, our third base coach, had him in a had him in a um, suplex city. He freaking grabbed. He grabbed the German uh, suplex. He grabbed shield with hook, pulled him back, boom, and dropped him. So I I was like this, and next thing I know, I had no one to hit. So I just turned it into a Macho Man Randy Savage elbow. <laughs> 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 I end up landing on the mound. I'm like, ah, my God, I think I hurt myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're like, so there's pandemonium, right? Everything happens. Next thing you know, I'm ejected from the game. Then I get a three-game suspension. I'm like, what's what's my – so I go to Bob Watson with Peely's suspension. I go, Bob, what's the suspension about? He goes, hey, bro, you go like this. It's three games. I go, even if you drop a Mandy, Randy Macho Man <laughs> Savage elbow on nobody on the mound, it's a three-game suspension. He goes, yeah, so – that was my one big brawl, and it was, it was scary, but it was fun, too. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you were really going for it, which I think <laughs> that's all we can appreciate and respect out of that thing. AJ has one final question for you. He mentioned it earlier. Well, I'm, I'm curious. Were you ever, like, intrigued or you felt like, hey, man, I may need to juice myself up if I want to keep up? Like, you were in a time, maybe towards the end of that era, but, like, did you see it happening? And did you ever, like, I would imagine if you're trying to make it in the league, and obviously you're a great player, but – some people yeah. would probably be like, hey, I need to do this to stay in this league. Well, I remember one year, 99, I hit 25 bombs, and they're like, and like there was like 12 guys that hit 50. And I'm like, 25 was like top 10 about 10 years ago. I'm like, I don't know what's going on here, but like, we got 12 dudes hitting 50, right? And so 
I didn't to tell you the truth, AJ. Like, it's funny. I didn't do it. And I think the guys that were doing it were kind of all in the know. And I think, you know, so, so I never thought about doing it. I know at the end of my career, uh, one of my coaches, you know, said to me, he's like, Hey, you ever think of doing some HGH, maybe come back next year, hit us about 25, 30 bombs. I'm like, bro, I'm like, I'm 12 years in. Like, I, I'm running, I, it's running its course. I got to get in the cold tub to just get going. HGH going to help me like put five more years in my career. But I think there's a lot of guys I played with in that steroid era that look back and say, you know what? At the end of the day, it wasn't a fair playing field and guys would have had longer careers maybe had they done it. I really never planned on doing it, but you know, it, it, it worked out all right for me. Yeah, I'd say. And uh, it seems like it's working out still to this day because the long-term effects are obviously the thing. And I feel like I, and I'm not obviously in the baseball world at all, and that is 100% on me. I should be more invested. But I feel like when A-Rod told his story after it came out that he was on it, and he was like, he felt he was like 22 years old or 20 years old, and everybody around him was doing this. He had all these pressures. He felt almost obligated to do it. You're saying like, no, it wasn't like that. Like the people that were doing it were kind of in their own world. It wasn't something that was openly talked about it. Cause it feels like, and my impression of it is that was just something that was very normal. Like, hey, this is what baseball is. No. This is how it's going. It was not like that. It was not, I swear, I swear it wasn't. And you can ask a lot of Holy guys, it shit. wasn't. I remember one day coming into spring training, you know, you're in the off season, you get the personal trainer. I'm lifting, I'm doing everything I can seven days a week. I'm hitting the freaking cardio. I'm bench pressing, you know, I'm military proud. I'm, oh, yeah. I'm a monster. I come in, I put on three pounds of muscle. I come in and one of my, one of my teammates, like 30 pounds of muscle. I'm like, oh my God, dude. Well, I was like, what were you doing this off season? And I wasn't doing, he's like, I got a personal trainer. I was doing this, doing that. So I was like, so did I. I did everything. <laughs> I go, you're, you're telling me in four months you got 30 pounds of muscle? You're on the gas, bro. You're on the gas. There's no way that's 30 pounds of muscle. So, you know, and I, the one time I saw it was probably in the middle of my career. One of my teammates had a vial of HGH and he was like, guys, if you want to start throwing 94, 95 with a nasty slider, this is the way to do it. Right? And I was like, what is that? He's like, HGH. HGH. I'm like, I didn't even know what it was. So, like I said, that was the first time I ever saw it. And, and a lot of guys, if you weren't doing it, you didn't know who was doing it. That's fascinating. But he did announce that it was <laughs> I mean, I kind of conflicted there. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> uh, the mayor's uh, the mayor's office, the podcast. Who are you talking to? How are you talking to? Is it you telling stories? Because if that's enough for me to go check it out for sure. Dude, it's it's awesome. I started the podcast because I love storytelling like you do, bro. Love listening to your stories. Same way. You know, I had Leland on for like an, uh, uh, two shows ago, and I was sitting there doing the doing the podcast, thinking to myself, "This is unbelievable to hear Jim Leland's wisdom for an hour and forty minutes of what he brings to the table." A few weeks ago, we had Johnny Bench on, which I know AJ, you probably appreciate that. A lot of guys, you know, just a lot of great guys. Ryan Dempsey was just on. We got Dimitri Young this week. Um, it's just been awesome, man. The podcast has been a ton of fun, and and uh, you know, I appreciate you 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 plugging that because it's just like I said, it gives me a chance for good storytelling and to hear some of the guys that I love playing with or some of the best in the game to do some storytelling. It's just a fun time. Man. No, Sean, I, I can't wait to listen to it. You were always electrifying for us. We appreciate you. Enjoy the Mega Bowl tonight in the playoffs, ladies and gentlemen. Listen to the mayor's <laughs> office, his new podcast, Sean Casey. Yeah! 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 It's fucking awesome. Lightning rod. A lot, yeah. of, a lot of people tweet that he could, uh, is he my dad? A lot of people ask. A lot of people ask. You see my dad because he's a Pittsburgher, obviously. You you two in the same room together, that's a nuclear bomb. We should have been on the same team a couple times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Him with the William Wallace chant at the top of the (laughs) steps whenever Coco Chris got a ball thrown behind him, just say, all right, we're going in. And then him being so unathletic. (laughs) Elbow. I guess that's athleticism now that I think about it. What a legend, man. So the NFC baseball mega bowls tonight. Yep. Yep. Without Big Max, though, I mean, that's a game changer. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, yeah. I was going to hammer the Dodgers, but without Big Max, I, I think I got to go with the cards. What'd really? you say about Max again? Uh, Mega Max, he's got lightning in his wood, dude. He's Maybe. one swing away from changing the game. That's what old the mayor, Sean Casey, said, you know? So as soon as I thought about it, I was like, this guy's got lightning in his bat, dude. Yeah, they're going to miss him. They are going to miss Mega Max, dude. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You can't win a Mega Bowl without Mega Max. No, exactly. you can't. Nah, so he, cards he has tonight. to be confused by this. Doesn't he? Ha- and Sean has to be so confused by you continuing to call it the Mega Bowl. He knows. What do you mean? Sean follows along. That's why whenever he said, AJ, you might be a baseball fan. He knows. <laughs> <laughs> he, knows uh, he knows that I have no idea what I'm doing. And, and by the way, he, I think he also understands that growing up in Pittsburgh, 
you know, there's a strong contingency of football fans mm -hmm. and a strong contingency of hockey fans. And the baseball team just so happened to be, you know, a little bit lower. So he probably has a lot of friends that are big football hockey fans as opposed to baseball fans, which leads me to my next point. The city of Pittsburgh would do itself a massive favor if they made that son of a bitch that owns Pirate Cellar team. Yes. Kids would get, people would get into baseball. That park is beautiful. It's something to do. Hey, what's hey. going on, Tom? Sell the team, Bob. Pal. Hour three is on the other how side. How can you make him sell it, though? He can't. He actually can. Yeah, he can do whatever the fuck he wants. And then he'll go right up to Seven Springs, a little ski resort. He ends up in the mountains and he'll ride the inner tube down, which is actually kind of fun. They got a pretty good resort. They should stick to that. They <laughs> should make that the better. Is awesome. Get the hell out of the pirates. You know what I mean, AJ? Hour three on the other side of this six minute break. Coach Chuck Pagano will join us on National Coaches Day. Yes. Are you pumped up, AJ? Any breaking news, maybe? I do not have any breaking news, but I think maybe Chuck has a few things for us. Who knows? Who knows? Perfect. That was, you did great. We'll see you then. They want to play for the Yankees one day, the people I'm playing against. They want to play for the fucking Yankees. Check out, like, in there, we, we put a little surprise in there for you. Let's get iced, it feels like. <laughs> yeah. I mean, let's start the day, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you getting? <laughs> it's great to be a member of the Washington Wild Things baseball team. We're number one in the league, right? Yeah, yeah let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck everybody. Yeah. Fuck everybody else. When I take BP, will there be anybody telling me how to fuck the hit? No. It feels like the wind's blowing this way. Yeah. Might have to attack that fence tonight, huh? Hey, you got it! Does the DJ play heaters like this all night? I started hitting the tonight. Oh, you'll be fine. I think I'll You'll probably only face 90 miles an hour tonight. You should be good. Is that me in the game, then? This is a good at bat. This is a good at bat. Oh, oh shit! Oh, shit! Give me it! 1-1 one, one pitch. Let's go! Line drive oh, right son of a bitch. That came down a lot faster than I thought, though. Let's be honest. Send it's it's deep, so and it is off the wall. So cut. Field it up. Excuse me! If you could all get off of my dick, we would be better off. Tell you what, would have been nice to take a nap earlier. Another throw get back. first. You have to tell me when that's happening. You're making me look bad. Hey, Steven, fuck you. Hey, fuck you, Steven. Hey, nice pitch. One, four, nine. Does that feel good, Steven? Or, oh, wow. Oh, wow. wow. He tosses up the ball. Wow. Just... Back to being a player now. Making plays. Touchdown. What inning is it? Second. Down to the second. Jesus. But it was finally my time to get in that box. Number one, the right fielder, the former punter from West Virginia, a former Indianapolis yeah. Colt, and a current Barstool Sports personality, Pat McAfee. The anticipation is real. Oh, fuck. Oh, right out. I'm in the hole? Son of a bitch, this is about to happen. And that will bring up Pat McAfee once again. First pitch from Reynaldo Lopez, swing and a miss by McAfee. Hey, 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 what was that? And the catcher goes, I had to give you one. Looked off speed. What was that? Then I look at the pitcher. And he's smiling. He's like laughing, like he's toying with me, like I'm a child. It all comes down to this. My last at bat. Hey, I'm gonna get on, you bring me home. This is your life on the line, fucker. Let me tell you something, if we, you're going to take an L, okay, you better take one. So I think that the close your eyes and swing method is perfect. <laughs> oh, this is hardball. Oh, Hell yeah. yeah. Oh my God, oh my God, Jesus. You have no prayer. Oh boy. Oh, this is the duck and duck thing. Let's go! Let's, should we just make it real? Should we just say, hey, we're done, we're riding off into the sunset? I mean, is that, is, do you want it to be live on your show that Vinny's officially done? Is that what you want? I don't want that, but if it's gonna happen, happy it's <laughs> happening, yeah. I would like that to be known. So uh, don't feel obligated, don't feel, feel forced.
put it this way. Hey, let me see. Today is what? Wednesday. By Friday, if paperwork goes in, you hear it, you heard it here first. First of all, congratulations on a legendary <laughs> fucking career, dude. Yeah! Yeah! In a game that revolves around the score. Okay, that's how they pick winners and losers is in a game in which they keep score. To be the all time leading scorer in scoring sport, I think many would say, hell of a fucking job. Yeah. Unbelievable, South Dakota kid, you didn't have an easy way either. You went over to Virginia to train, you're a high school teacher, I think, or a substitute teacher. Then you go to the World League over in Amsterdam. Somehow survived the off the field activities that you could have fallen into. Stayed focused on kicking, go into New England, uh, beat out Matt Barr at some point, even though he had an incredible career, win Super Bowls, memorable moments, biggest moments in the sports history revolve around your foot in a lot of cases. Congratulations, man. You're the fucking best. I was honored to be your team. Yeah. McAfee show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope, nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. Good afternoon, beautiful people. Uh, Coach us up, Chuck Pagano. Wednesday, October 6, 2021, hour three. We'll begin immediately following this beat drop from the talented artist Antoine. There it is. Here we go. I am sitting next to AJ Hawk on the screen. If you're watching at youtube.com forward slash the Pat McAfee show, and you might hear the incredible voices of the toxic table at Boston Connor and Ty Schmidt and Tone Diggs, the COVID cowboy, also the host of Hammer and Dime, which is a gambling podcast that goes live 15 minutes after this show ends every single day. I believe they've been on a little bit of a heater. Uh, the first five last, of that, last night they won. Woo. NFC Mega Bowl tonight. I assume you guys will have uh, picks on that. We'll be joined by Chuck Pagano here in a few minutes, but we'd like to put uh, you know, a pin in some conversations and update some people who are maybe haven't been listening. Stephon Gilmore was released this morning by the New England Patriots publicly, internally kept on the team until about 4 p.m. allegedly, then traded to the Carolina Panthers for a sixth round pick. All came out of nowhere. We never expected this. Nobody could have expected this. There's been long-term discussions happening that was admitted by Bill Belichick and also Stephon Gilmore's people over the last couple years. Was he going to get traded at trade deadline? Was he going to get traded at the draft in the offseason? Now we find out he did get traded, but it was announced that they were parting ways, which made it sound like he was being released. A six-round pick from the Panthers now makes Stephon Gilmore a Carolina Panther from this uh, point forward. Field Yates is reporting that an extension Extension will be around the corner in this entire thing. Who the fuck knows? There's going to be a lot of people pissed, though, that their team didn't offer up more than a six-round pick, A.J. Hawk. I just saw the headline. I didn't get to click on it during the break where it said, Parting Gift. Uh, Gilmore's traded to the Panthers. So are they saying like he this is where he wanted to go and the Patriots did good by him? Well, allegedly now, and this is where this conversation leads back to a, a, probably an incredibly hyped owner of the team we're about to refer to. Allegedly, multiple people were reporting that Steph wanted to go 
to the Green Bay Packers. And I don't think the Packers are in a position where a lot of free agents are potentially going to be trying to come there because there's a lot of other destination places that are in, uh, I don't know, Tampa, L.A., Phoenix, and other cities that are different than Green Bay. Although the team in Green Bay has been to the NFC Championship back-to-back years, has the current reigning MVP. I understand Green Bay is a beautiful place, but having somebody like Steph potentially want to come to Green Bay and then inevitably get traded somewhere else, allegedly, has to be a shot right in the Baby maker, Ty Schmidt. Yeah, I mean, I'm a moron. I don't know why I worked myself <laughs> up and acted like, you know, Rick Bedard or whoever tweeted out that it was basically a done deal that he was going to Green Bay. Albert Breer also reported. Yeah, exactly. I heard that as well. So, I mean, I guess it makes sense if the Carolina is going to give him an extension right away because the Packers probably weren't ever going to do that. So if he could get something like that done, then I guess it makes sense. But, yeah, I mean, I'm a fucking moron. He doesn't know if Aaron's going to be there too, though. Think about it. True. If there's a big-time free agent, he's probably like, all right, well, do I want to sign an extention if I'm not well, no, but, confident Aaron? But allegedly, allegedly he wanted to go there, so the Packers could have made the same trade that the Panthers could have, right? Yeah, of course. Well, and I assume it would have just been a loan anyway. It would have been for the rest of this year. and then, No extension talk. Yeah. Because they got a lot to figure out. Out. Exactly. But a lot of teams probably think that way. Uh, their fans probably think that way. Not always the most sound arguments are made, but there was a couple teams I thought maybe we're going to get into that action. The Panthers are one of them, by the way. The Panthers mm, yeah. have the money. That's where he's from, Carolina. So a little bit of a homecoming. Also in the news today, uh, Justin Fields has officially been announced, announced as the starter in Chicago. Congrats to Justin Fields. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He had been the starter because Andy Dalton was injured, and Matt Nagy, as of yesterday, I think, or maybe two days ago, said that if Andy Dalton is healthy, he is our starter, which is a message he has maintained for the last few weeks, even though it seems as if with Laser calling the plays this last weekend and Justin Fields executing them, the team looked better than they've ever looked. Andy Dalton now goes into the veteran backup role. Probably a good move for the entire franchise as a future if you're going to stick with Justin Fields, don't you think, AJ? Yeah, it seems like that, and I'm sure Andy understands the situation he is in. But, man, ever since Nagy did that post-game presser, like, I feel like his players, people just have to look. I don't know. what It was our first glimpse of him acting like that or just turning it back to him. and just oh. be, It was a weird thing. So I, I just wonder how the players and coaches are responding to that. Too. Okay, and let's turn to a guy, and this is a terrible way to start this conversation, <laughs> but, I mean, he was in the conversation. He's a guy that I got a lot of respect for. I appreciate. Uh, happy National Coaches Day to yeah. this man. Ladies and gentlemen, a man who I'm honored to say was one of the time my head coach, uh, Coach Chuck Pagano. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, look oh, at wow. that backdrop. Oh, my God. Are we in the hills out there? McCall, Idaho. That's the Payette, uh, Payette Lake out uh, behind me. Uh, we can't Beautiful see, out here. Yeah, we can't see the lake. We can only see the pine trees, but I want to let you know it is gorgeous. Look at you, old man retired in the woods. <laughs> this is uh, Tina and I's happy place here. It's unbelievable. Well, our happy place is when you stop by and educate us on stuff going on in the coaching ranks. And I want to ask you how you think the team and the coaches are responding to Nagy potentially after the game this past weekend, giving himself a nod for laser success with Justin Field. However, you can do what you got to do. But now that it's been announced as Justin Fields is the starter, what do you think took so long? Why do you think the holdup was? And what ultimately do you think pushed him over the hump to make that decision? Do you think it was pressure from other people or do you think Nagy just got to that point naturally? Yeah, um, you know, going back to the presser, Pat, I mean, all he had to do is get up there and say, hey, look, Bill did a great job. Fields did a great job. Defense was outstanding. Turnovers, end of discussion. You know, Tina always taught me, less is more. Shut up. You talk too damn much, Chuck. So less is more. Just leave it at that. And then, you know, I think the court of public opinion, I think the fans, um, I'm sure there's people in that organization are saying, hey, this kid's our future. Why are we going to delay this any longer? You know, we know what Andy is. He's great in that road. He can become, you know, the next clipboard Jesus, if you will, and, and be the backup. And, you know, let this kid, you know, get these, these snaps under his belt instead of waiting, going back and forth, back and forth, you know. So I don't, one way or another, I know the locker room uh, and everybody in that, in that city and that organization is probably fired up that Fields is going to be out there still. Chuck, when you're a head coach of a team, like how aware uh, of you, like of your team and your the guys that are playing for you, like, are you aware of? Okay, how is this going to come across? Whatever I say to the media after the game, during the week, the messaging I'm I'm trying to get across. 
are you paying close attention throughout the season of like where they're at and hey are these guys I'm losing some of them or I'm not or hey I feel like I have them like do you are you always something you have to adjust with that you have to you know you'd be totally ignorant uh not to be in tune to all that stuff and and you got to watch, uh, you know, what you're saying, when you're saying, how you're saying it, because those guys are all watching that. You know, as much as you think that they're not and you say, hey, earmuffs and blinders, all that stuff, they're watching the leader. The head coach is the guy that's out in front of this organization. Um, he's the guy that uh, everybody's leaning on uh, for direction. And, and whether you're winning, whether you're losing, uh, good times, bad times, you're the guy that's out front. So you better be in tune to the locker room. You better have a great feel for what's going on. Uh, in that locker room. So having some great vets, some great leaders like we had in Indy, I had a, uh, a ton of uh, players, a group of guys like Pat, that they could come down to my office. He knew this. It was an open-door policy and say, hey, you know, we got this, this, and this going on, and, and you know, whatever. I mean, we need to, you know, maybe back off of some stuff. I mean, some guys came to me and, and said, hey, you know, your talk – to the team, you know, we got blistered out in Arizona and a couple of guys came and said, your talk to the team was terrible. I go, I appreciate that. I wish you would have stopped me during it. We might have made this game, <laughs> we might have made this game competitive, you know? So, no, you got to be in tune to that, AJ. Uh, Coach Urban Meyer, and I know the coaching fraternity is probably a buzz right now with everything going on down in Jacksonville because there's only 32 NFL head coaches. You know, there's only this job is obviously you said last week it's a lonely one, but it's also a tough one, obviously. That's why it is the highest level in the men's league. Everything that's going on with Urban Meyer and off the field, the viral video stuff, I don't. Oh, I don't think to myself, you know, I want to hear what Chuck Pagano thinks about what's going on at Urban's Chop House. But I, what I do think about is, what does Chuck Pagano think about a head coach not flying back with his team, right? In, in AJ is in Green Bay. We had Lombardi on, Paisan. He's been in uh, Raiders, uh, Cleveland. He's been in New England. He's been around, he said, 25, 30 years. You've been in the game a long time. He, none of us have ever heard of this. And this is something that is very, I think that is call for a concern, let alone all the distractions that happened after that your thoughts on that and did that ever cross your mind yeah i was uh blown away i mean first of all i thought when those pictures of video came out i said okay someone had to photoshop this guy into this deal you know and then when you come out and you say okay this is for real and that this is ex right after the game and you didn't fly back with i've never heard of that in my entire life 37 years of coaching um i never saw the head coach miss i i I never once um, ever thought about not doing that. Win or, win or lose, whatever the circumstances. Again, I don't know the circumstances surrounding Urban and the family and staying back and, you know, hey, I want to get out of Dodge. I need to clear the head. You know, everybody needs to. You don't get to do that. <laughs> you signed the contract as the head freaking football coach for the Jacksonville Jaguars. <laughs> and this guy's, this guy's a great coach. We all know what his record is, but you don't get to check out. And it's only the fourth week of the season. Yeah. Hell, where's he going after eight? After uh, you know, eight games, nine games. You know, you don't. You just don't get to do that, Pat and AJ. Uh, you know, that's what you signed up for, and and you're the face of the franchise. All you got to remember how we always said: protect the name on the back of your jersey and that decal on the side of your helmet. So, uh, like everybody else, you're totally blown away with this. Again, I I'm not judging anybody. I've never heard of nobody you know, getting on the plane and flying home. Because, again, your locker room, we talked about locker room earlier. You know, getting those guys back, this will be, like you said, what if he turns this whole thing around and they start winning games, you know, and he comes out, and, and this will go away just like everything else goes away. I mean, there's been history of this, that, and the other go on, and time heals all wounds, but this could be hard to get the guys back. You know, because you're telling, yeah. what are the five things, Pat, we always talked about when you guys were getting ready to go on a bye week or after a Thursday game and we had these middle, you remember the five things we always mentioned? Give me, give me the first one. Alcohol. Oh, yeah, yeah. Drugs. Drugs, yeah. Right. Firearms. Bingo guns, yeah, bingo guns was in there. I believe. Are all things you guys are doing on bye weeks? No, uh, just stay away from. <laughs> stay away from these things. Say, we said these are the five things that could get you sideways. You know, women, Ran strangers, women, random. Nothing women. good. 
Nothing good Five happens after midnight, <laughs> right? How many times have you guys heard that? Nothing good happens after midnight. So a lot of those things were broken there. <laughs> 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 That's right. Yeah, and it's coming from the, the head coach. What, okay, so what could you do, though? If you, Let's say someone's in that situation. What could you do? The owner comes out and puts out a statement saying not only does he have to regain – he has to regain our trust and respect, which I thought was, was interesting in the statement. Like what could you – what can he do? I feel like you got to put everything on the table and just be completely honest, I guess, and, and I don't know, just let everybody know, like, this is, this is exactly what happened. Yeah, the less is more deal. He should have walked right in there. And forget, okay, you know, I wanted to eat dinner here, you know, my family, right across the street, guys, pictures, yacht, oh, no. You just go in and you own that shit and just tell the guys, hey, I effed up big time. This was, a, I mean, a decision that, um, you know, total distraction to the team. I mean, I screwed up. I owned it, you know, and you own it and you say, hey, look, I – I don't know how I'm going to get your guys' trust back. I don't know, you know, because I'm telling you guys all these things. Don't do this. Don't do that. Especially with COVID going on and all the other things, because nobody's talking about that. And then you're putting yourself in this situation where this possibly could happen. You just got to go in and own it and, and hope that, you know, hey, look, time will heal all wounds. We can win some games and earn these guys' trust back. But, man, I, I, I don't even know how I can walk you through that building. That's a great point, by the way, because a player, I don't even think they're allowed to go eat at a restaurant or something like that at away games. They can't even leave the hotel or something like that. And then this video comes out and everybody's like, what a distraction. It's like, well, also, what about, I think there's some protocols or something. Yeah. So they had to have been broken. They were within the distance that was not allowed. All right. I, yeah. I, I, Can you imagine? Oh, yeah. Could you, you imagine if he lands on the COVID-19 list tomorrow? Oh, <laughs> my God. Might oh, be a blessing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe. I'm not sure. Go ahead, Ty. Coach Pagano, I don't know if you saw the situation between Vic Fangio and uh, Harbaugh at the end of the Ravens and Broncos game. Was there ever any points like uh, in your career when like something like that happened where you, you didn't agree with – the way the other coach handled the end of the game and like were there any guys who like you know Fangio said like we expect that kind of bullshit from them yeah yeah I I, I saw it and uh you gotta love you know the rhetoric going back and forth between these these two guys and you know it's your responsibility when you're on the losing end to you know do all that you can to to uh put your team in the best possible uh position to win and not you know worry about hey you know, the stadium, you know, I can't believe a stadium. We had to delay for this and the <laughs> locker room, you know, it was like a maze, you know, about, about, you got your butt kicked, you know, and I had my butt kicked a bunch, you know, and it's, it's, you know, John Harbaugh, first and foremost, I mean, he's got to look out after his players. That's, that's the first thing. And I always had a little cheat sheet and I'd get with the PR people and I'd say, okay, what records are on the line? What streaks are on the line? Who do we have to protect? What do we have? You, winning the game is the most important. You know, but your players, um, the players are the most important thing. And you have to have their backs. And you know everybody on that Baltimore team, and especially that offensive line and, and uh, the streak that they had going, hey, so what? You know, again, you don't want to lose somebody. You risk injury, things like that. You don't, you don't want to do that because that all, that's all fine and dandy until someone goes down. So you can see both sides of it. We were playing Jacksonville in Indy, Jacksonville in Indy, excuse me, um, I forget the year, but we were beating them pretty damn good. And Reggie had this this streak going. Yeah, you probably remember. You know, he he caught three. You know, had three receptions for X amount of games, and it was going and going and going. And we come down to the end of the Jacksonville game, and they come up to me and tell me Reggie's only got one catch. And so I'm like screaming at the offensive coordinator, "You guys! I talked to you guys about this stuff. We got it. We why do we, there's a minute left, and we're supposed to be getting on a knee." And now I got to find a way. We got to find a way to get this kid two more catches. So we throw him two bubble screen, two little bubbles, and he gets cut in half on the first one. I thought we were going to lose him. He was not <laughs> happy. <laughs> oh my God! He comes storming off the field, spiked the ball at me. I said, "That's taunting. That's 15 fucking yards." <laughs> 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 And, and I apologize, and so after game, you go across the field, and I, I shake Gus's hand. Gus Bradley was a coach at the time, and a hell of a coach, and a great dude. Good. And I'm like, Coach, I'm sorry, you know, this, and I explained the situation, and he goes, yeah, I was wondering what the fuck you were doing, <laughs> you know. So 
Remember, then we go to Jacksonville and they beat the brakes yes, off yeah. the next year down there. Remember? Yes, I do. We had the game. We had the game in control when some freak game wrecker came off the edge and stripped Matt Hassel back of the ball, ran it back for a touchdown. Remember? We should have been up thirteen three at half. Yeah, and game we go change. up. We go in. Yeah, and they beat and they go for us. They're up forty points. Hey, they took a punt the back. They took a punt back that day too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're supposed to get that guy on the ground, Pat. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that literally. <laughs> hey, do what you got to hey, do. Get but, the guy on the ground. That's always what. You, that's what you would say. Just get the guy on the ground, dude. No, you guys watch your highlights. Those, that may just get the guy on the ground. You murdered kids. Well, you was, were vicious. I'm big though, Chuck. You know, I'm big. I think one of my uh, one of my favorite moments was we were. It was another game where we didn't have any points or whatever. And Vinatieri had a scoring streak going on or something like that. And I was standing on the sideline, like up on the paint or whatever, just watching the game. And it was it was close to over or whatever. And you walk over and you literally go like, is this going to fuck up Vinny's? I think you said, is this going to fuck up Vinny's scoring thing? And I was like, ah, oh, that's a great fucking question. I don't know. So I, you know, because we, we could have never expected that Vinny wasn't even going to go off for an extra point or something like that for a game. I forget what it was. And I go, I forget who I asked, maybe Conti or something real quick, I like because I was able to go run and ask a question. And it was he never stepped foot on the field, so it didn't. He didn't even play in that game basically, so it didn't stop the scoring streak. And I think I told you that, and you were like, "Yeah, thank God." All right, yeah, because oh you, yeah, you thought you thought old Vinatieri was going to be. That is something you cared about a lot, and I think your players appreciated that. But there's obviously a way, I guess, where another coaching staff could get pissed off about it. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, Chuck. This weekend we get the first installment of the illustrious London in game uh how do you kind of keep your guys prepared for that and how do you get ready for a game that you got to travel for in all the uh different time changes yeah great question that's a that was really tough because uh, you know as pat can attest to and aj you know we're we're all about routine and we're about structure and monday is monday tuesday's tuesday wednesday's wednesday and and now you get you know, thrown a look at the schedule and say we're playing such and such in London, and and that is a ball buster, man, on an organization, on a team. I mean, we, it's hard. It is really, really hard. And we went over there in '16, uh, close one, lost to Jacksonville by by three. Um, I went over there uh, in '19 with the Bears, lost a close one by four to the Raiders. Um, it's really, really difficult. So. What we tried to do is you got to get all your work done, get a lot of work done, you know, up until Thursday. And then what we did was, um, you know, get the lion's share of the game plan in and then fly over Thursday night and try to convince the players, okay, you have these little goodie bags with the melatonin, with all this stuff to help you sleep. And this is mandatory. You have to sleep all the way over. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You have to sleep all the way over. So then when we get to London, all right, it's like 6.30, 7.30 in the morning. We leave Thursday night sometime, right? And then we get there, and then we got to keep you up. And so nobody slept. I was walking through the plane, and not a damn person was asleep. They're playing cards. They're playing <laughs> peanut, doing playing talk, all this stuff. And I'm like, get to bed, God damn it. Our body clocks. We're going to get our asses kicked. So you try to do that. Keep them up Friday. Give a, you know, We stayed at this nice little place, uh, you know, out I forget where that was, Pat. That was uh, that was a nice that was a nice luxury, a nice perk. But um, you know, remember it was raining. We had our walkthrough in a ballroom, uh, or, or you know, remember when we had that? We used to do that mock game. Oh yeah, the walkthrough. And, and we had ins- to go. We had to walk through inside. We had that nice little field. But um, it's a it's a test uh, to an organization and to a team. And in Jacksonville, that was like a home game for them forever. You know, so they had it down pat. And you just knew if you were a betting man. Okay, who's Jacksonville playing in London this year? Okay, that one I'm loading up on. Yeah, Jacksonville's probably going to cover no matter what. AJ, did you ever play over there? We, are, I guess, just hearing from Chuck there. Me and Chuck are completely defeated in England. Uh, did you play over there? I uh, no, I never played there. I, I was I was always curious at what it was like. I've heard different stories, and usually pretty similar to what you guys have told. Me. On the way home, you got to go through the actual airport. That's what I learned. <laughs> you know, that, that like, was that was a grinder. I, it was a lot easier coming back than going for me from body clock and all that stuff. I don't know how it was for the players, but you remember in 16 to, to make sure, because if you play, if you play the later game over there, the league told us that you can't fly out. You have to stay an extra night. Like when I was in Chicago, we had to stay, we got beat by the Raiders and then we had to have a party, which nobody wanted to go to. Cause I mean, 
a reception at the hotel and then get up the next morning, fly out because they won't let you fly out of there. And so this great idea we had in Indy was like, okay, Pete Ward and I were on the phone with the league and he said, okay, they'll guarantee us the early game if you won't take the bye the next week. Uh... So I'm like, okay, okay, play the game. We win. We get to fly home. All right. We play Chicago the following week if you remember this, and, and don't take the buy. And that was rolling the dice. I don't know how smart that was, but <laughs> they, they got, hey, just to make sure that we got home, you know, a day earlier, AJ and guys. And uh, we appreciate we beat Chicago. No, I think how we beat Chicago that next weekend because – I was done, man. And we uh, escorted. Hey, we appreciated the decision, though. I think everybody was excited to get home after that thing. But we weren't allowed to leave because Jacksonville flew first because they won or something like that. I forget. We were held up in that that dining area or whatever. And then, obviously, the airport situation for me was one that was wild. Go ahead, Diggs. Did yeah. you know I was on, like, you had to have. You know, I had a bunch of edibles. A bunch of them. A bunch. A bunch of them. And I thought, you know. <laughs> with dope in them. With uh, all right, easy, the way you described the things that I was eating. <laughs> but I didn't know we were going through the actual airport, so I had to make those disappear. You know, if you do recall, we're on those buses to the actual airport. What is that, Heath? Heath Rowe. Heath Rowe. We were mm-hmm. going to the actual Heath airport Rowe. there. So I had to eat all those edibles. I was on, I was above that plane on the way home, Chuck. <laughs> that was a well, wild... I yeah. yeah, I knew there was something responsible for some of the decisions that you've made. But matter of fact, I'm I'm all over those edibles now. On those edibles. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go! Yeah. Hey, Chuck. No, it's so good for my body and, yeah. uh, you know. Agreed. All that kind of stuff that make, helps me sleep. Yeah, it's awesome. My joint pain. Yeah. You can golf every single day on those things. I love it. Yeah, me too. I love them a little bit too much, you know. And I do. If you do recall when those, and you never did a part of it because you're a head coach, you know. Obviously, mm-hmm. you're a head coach. You never were part of it. But those days where those annual tests were announced to the team, man, what a fucking celebration when McAfee was said. I, and I those were some of the happiest days of my life, coach. Those were some of the best days of my life. How about when Dave would come up, you know, after practice? Okay, coach, I got a um, you know, list of names. Okay, okay, hammer way, go ahead, hammer. And so as you start going through the out, you know, A to Z, right? And guys are just like Not good. Just got their head down like, God, please, please, please don't call my name. Please don't call my name. <laughs> and they're like, Oh, thank God. And then there's some people, you know, like wait and Mathis, okay, what's mm-hmm. next? Mac, if you fucking right. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm free, or I got three more months to wait. What a wild time it is in the NFL. We're talking to Coach Chuck Pagano. Happy National Coaches Day, yeah, Chuck. Yeah. Thank you, Coach. Thank you for your leadership and Thank guidance. You. Go ahead, Paisan, Tone. Yeah, Comp. Um, we watched a couple weeks ago the... What was that? Comp. comp. Is that uh, comp Italian? Body and power Italian. Oh. Wow. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Hey. 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 Coach Diggs loves that, so I had to to fit that in on National Coach Day. Shout out, Coach Um, Diggs. Last two weeks ago, uh, Niners left Aaron Rodgers with 37 seconds or whatever like that. And some people in the media were like, oh, they scored scored too quickly, blah, blah, blah. They had to score. How do you deal with it as a coach uh, when you're going up against a great quarterback on scoring, leaving too much time on the clock, stuff like that at the end of the half or uh, game? Yeah, sitting there watching it. Uh, you know, live, I said just the same thing everybody else said. You can't leave that much time on the clock because he's a bad man. <laughs> <laughs> and as a defensive coach, we're all sitting there, yeah, why'd you score so goddamn fast? Yeah. Jesus Christ. And you're on the sideline getting ready to throw up, you know, God, another two minute drill against this dude, 37 seconds, no timeout. I mean, you try to uh, manage the game and manage the clock. In those situations, you know, all the offensive guys and every half the half the group's going to say, "Yeah, just score." You know, doesn't matter. We got to score. You know, get the lead on this team. And and everybody else is like, "Burn the time off the clock. Let's use our timeouts." You remember all the situational stuff that we did, Pat? Oh, yeah. You know, we we'd have those those deals, especially with timeouts, where we'd go QB middle. We'd decide, okay, Vinny, where do you want this ball based on weather, indoors, outdoors, field grass turf you know how close it was because he always wanted it the only place he ever wanted in the middle of the field was like extra really close points. right yeah extra points like we just got from when the it middle. used to be 
right? But then everything else, you say, okay, where do you want this ball? And so we would grandfather it. We'd go quarterback, middle, left, quarterback, middle, right, protect it. It's like taking a knee and take all that time off, get it under five seconds, and then trust Vinny because, you know, obviously he's the, the GOAT, the best that ever done it, uh, you know, kicking, you know, field goals and PATs, Hall of Famer, first ballot, and, uh, you know, kick that thing and don't leave any time on the clock, and you got to walk off home run rather than give that ball to Aaron Rodgers and that offense and – because what you saw happen is, is going to happen. And you said one half of the people say score now, you need a touchdown. The other half say no, kick the field goal. Ultimately, hindsight's going to be the, the judge, right? I mean, that is how everything is in the NFL. If it works, you're the smartest of all time. If not, you're an idiot. That's kind of all of those decisions, especially when it comes to the situational stuff. Um, I can't thank you enough for joining us, Coach. You're the best, dude. Thanks for having me. I love being on with you guys. Now, did we cover everything we wanted to cover? I think so. I think we covered it. Oh, hey, who decides who gets introed at most places? Do you know? Is that the coach? Is that front office? Is that marketing? Who decides that? Yeah, so I think it's a collaborative effort. You know, uh, all the above that you just mentioned. Coach, PR department, you know, Avis and Conti, you know, special circumstances, situations surrounding the game. Try to even the thing out. You know, defense one week, offense the next week, and then even special teams one week. My God! And do you and do you remember? Oh yeah, that situation and what went down. Uh, you 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 asked me if I had ever been introduced before, and uh, I said no. And you said, uh, well, you're getting introduced today. And I immediately said, oh, my God, I got to think of something to do that's awesome or whatever. And I think you regretted the decision immediately. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, did anything else happen? <laughs> no, that was exactly it. But, you know, we write the deals up on the deal. And I said, hey, you know, exactly what you said. And you're like, holy shit, are you serious? Yeah. Are you fucking serious? You're really going to do special teams? And then he starts running back to his locker. And I said, what are you doing? He goes, I got to think of something to do. I got to spruce up my elf, my, make sure my pants are on right, my jersey's right, my chin strap's okay, yeah. all this stuff, and then come up with, uh, you know, having a plan. So, I did a, uh, yeah. no, we that's awesome. a collaborative effort, and, and we just tried to spread it around and take care of everybody because, you know, those four or five seconds, whatever it is, getting to run out of that damn tunnel, whether it's smoke, this, that, or the other, right? used to love seeing luck come charging oh. out of there full speed you know running a four six forty out of there <laughs> but that's a special moment for you right i mean that's, that's regardless good. four or five seconds it's huge yeah. in a player's life for me yeah and aaron actually talked about it two weeks ago aaron said that moment of running out like the rush that it gives him at, even in year 17 year 18 it's a cool thing because it's the ultimate team sport but you're getting a chance to hear a little bit of love from the crowd for the individual. It was I was very thankful for it, as I am for your time every single Wednesday. Happy National Coaches Day. Uh, you absolutely crushed. You're getting better and better, Chuck. Oh, yeah. Hey, yeah. we look forward to this a lot. We feel like we learn things every single time. We appreciate you. Appreciate you guys. Take care. Ladies and gentlemen, Coach us up, Chuck host, Chuck Pagano. Yeah, Chuck! He was awesome as a coach, by the way. I, I could see that, yes. I'm sure – I bet he was highly entertained having you on the team. I, you know – I mean, annoyed annoyed a lot, but also like, hey, this guy is this good. He keeps me, keeps me on my toes. Well, also, you know, I am like the punter. So I'm not sure, you know, people that have been around football like 30-plus years, you know, how necessarily comfortable they are with somebody who, you know, just comes onto the field when the offense fails and does calculate mm -hmm. a turnover, potentially having a little bit of a say or every once in a while. But yeah. I feel like I've always been me, and I feel like I'm – you know, it, it, I know when to pick and choose. Like, oh, I should not be talking right now. You know, like, I, I feel like I'm pretty good at that whole thing. But I feel like I got a, a pretty good comfort level with the locker room at one point in my career. And, you know, I think that has been pretty evident. And then, Chuck, I didn't know if he knew that I was at that comfort level to say whatever. But he was going to learn it. You know, like, <laughs> I, and it was one of those things where I think he hated it early. You know, like, hey, shut the fuck up. But then as I was consistent with it, you know, every single day, this is the, I, I feel like I am relatively consistent as a human. So I think people appreciate it, even if they're took, uh, took back by me a little bit or standoffish early. At least they're like, okay, this fucking guy is like this every day. This is not something that is just doing to annoy me. But me telling Chuck after his first team meeting, hey, pretty good, pretty good. Mm. <laughs> eight, eight and a half out of ten. Don't know if it could have gone better. I think he did well. And his first look at me was like, 
Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> and then obviously there were some things that were happening behind the scenes on the team that kind of were lingering their way into the locker room. And I felt like somebody should tell Chuck, you know, somebody should tell Chuck that there is a lot of potential. Uh, there's a bunch of fucking bullshit going on in the uh, in the locker room. So I wasn't scared to have those types of conversations. But there's people that were much better at football that were having actual football conversations with Chuck, you know, and they felt very comfortable going in and chatting with him, which I think is a big deal. That's empowerment, you know, like that's empowerment. And that doesn't happen everywhere. The fact that he, like his door is always open, a lot of people say that, but a lot of head coaches, that's not exactly the case because, like Chuck even mentioned, though, you're every second of the day is scheduled for these guys, especially the head coach. You feel like if you say sometimes, hey, if you say hi to him, like you're wasting his time because he has so many things he's got to do. So the fact that he was he said that and it was and he actually sit there and listen to you like in season, that's cool. I think not a lot of coaches can do that. We had a conversation after the uh, Jerry World fake. He and I. Yeah. So the Jerry World fake, it was an audible. I threw it because the guy was left uncovered, just like I think Ty Long did the other night for the Chargers, although he was in the pooch area. We were backed up, you know, so it's a little bit more of an aggressive decision by me, obviously, especially if it doesn't work out. But we had practiced it like 75 times or 80 times, actually, on film, documented, because Tom McMahon went back and said, can you please tell me how many times it worked, uh, just so I know, because Tom was catching some – shit i assume for us doing this or whatever so i throw it it's obviously not complete whatever reason that's a great football player he doesn't deserve to be brought up in the light that he gets brought up so i'm not going to say his name he's a great fucking football player i appreciate him he dropped the ball so then in practice on uh wednesday or maybe monday i don't remember if it was a short week like thursday uh same situation popped up in practice in the drill while we're doing our punt period and i took that thing and i threw it okay he caught it we celebrated, hey, here we go. Uh, Chuck made an announcement, though. We're not doing that anymore, unless we're in the, uh, in the plus area or whatever. Mm. And I was like, okay. So they ran that thing again. All right, so they were trying to time up the blocking thing. I threw that thing again. Dewey caught it again. They had a point, Dewey! You know, like powering him. Chuck said, we're not doing that anymore. Like, there was a little bit of a moment happening. Okay, there was a little bit of a moment happening between me and Chuck, and it was fascinating because this is the punt period, it's the first period of the day or whatever, and Chuck goes, uh, he turns around to me, he goes, we can talk about this in my office if you'd like to. And I was like, ah, I don't think we should change the game plan because of one drop. I mean, did we stop throwing the ball to whoever on the offense drops the ball all of a sudden out of nowhere? One time out of 80, we can't do it. He said, we can talk about this in my office. Okay, you got it. But I think Tom McMahon appreciated what was going on. But it wasn't the right time, right? It wasn't the right time for me to be doing that to Chuck. And so I went into the office. I apologized to him for doing it in front of everybody. And I pleaded my case. And he said, sounds good. If they leave somebody uncovered, you can throw it wherever. Knowing damn well nobody was going to do that again. Because we, <laughs> we already threw the ball. So that's where we kind of ended at, you know? Uh, but it was, it was a real thing. It was a cool, like, hey, this is... I don't want to say man to man, but it really was like a uh, cool moment that I think he had with a lot of players too, which is why you'll never hear a player say that they didn't appreciate the hell out of Chuck Pagano, you know? I mean, it sounds like it's almost like it's not that big a deal, but that's a pretty big deal, man, to be able to do that, have that little interaction on the field. You go in, you can talk about it later. Chuck obviously sounds like he handled it well too. He's like, I don't want to get in a screaming match with you in the first period of practice. Like that doesn't really set the tone of what I want for the rest of our Thursday probably. So <laughs> by yeah, the way, think about it. Not him. everybody this, can do that. This fucking asshole punter. All right. You fucking started us that incompletion began a 50 point route okay yeah. <laughs> and that he could have said that to me you know like so i appreciate that he even had the little bit of like we will talk about this in the office if you'd like like now is not the time and i was like i guess you're right all right this is bullshit though i would like, like uh -huh. this is bullshit you know because like it reminds me of peyton though our idiot kicker got liquored up and ran his mouth when he said that at the pro bowl back in the day yeah exactly that was not about me by the way even though no. i do have a public intoxication and i you were like four years old when that happened that, that's not the case, but I can be construed as an idiot, you know, so and potentially has a alcohol arrest. So I can see how people could potentially link me to that. And that happens sometimes in public and on Twitter. And I'm just like, I'm not that particular idiot that he was referring to there. I think he actually liked me. I, I didn't hear him say much <laughs> after I got in trouble, but I don't know about the other thing. You, you let me know. Let's get to a break and then let's answer these phone calls, AJ, on the other side. Five hour energy uh, phone lines. Yeah, we also have to read. A lot of stuff. Whether you've been in a relationship for years or are just getting started or are excited to get back out there and meet new people, when the moment comes, you want to be ready. Ain't that right, AJ? Yeah, that's ready. What is this? What company are you talking about? Urban Ready. Uh, Roman oh, Ready. Yeah. <laughs> Roman Ready. I mean, come on. I mean, when the moment. How could yeah. you not? I mean, you gotta do it. 
Anyways, with Roman, you can get a free online evaluation and ongoing care for erectile dysfunction, all from the comfort and privacy of your home. Roman ready. I sorry, I am very sorry for the slip of the tongue, the Freudian slip mm -hmm. earlier there. It is confidence. The confidence that you know that you can rise to the occasion in the moment. Hell yeah. yeah. It doesn't matter if you've been, you know, looking forward to this all week. What? what? All night. What? Doesn't matter if it's in your house. What? In somebody else's house. What? In a pint bar. What? In a whiskey bar. What? In a chop house. What? When the moment comes, you need to be ready. Roman ready. Oh, yeah. yeah. A U.S. licensed healthcare professional will work with you to find the best treatment plan. If medication is appropriate, it ships you free with two-day shipping. Wow. wow! The whole process is straightforward, convenient, and discreet. And if you're experiencing erectile dysfunction, you are not alone. A lot more people than you think experience it, and it might be a sign of something else that's going on in your body. That's why they have a U.S. licensed healthcare professional there to walk you through it in a quick, convenient, discreet, fashion oh yeah go to getroman.com slash macfee today and if you're prescribed you'll get 50 percent off your first month of ed treatment wow with free two-day shipping go to getroman.com slash m-c-a-f-e-e -E. and if you're prescribed get 50 percent off your first month of ed treatment make sure you're ready to have confidence and control this summer be ready roman ready thank you licensed yeah. healthcare official thank you for going thank you thank you, thank you. Isn't that tough for people though? Like you said, it could be signs of something else. So not only you have someone has a floppy dong, but they're like, I probably have cancer too. And this Jesus. Is I don't think that's the case. <laughs> Normally it has something to do with blood flow and potential yeah. dieting uh, and everything like that. Much better than that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, floppy dong is something that you should not have to live with. And that's why Roman came through and said, hey, you are not alone. Let's go ahead and get this floppy dong fixed. We're back in four minutes on a five hour energy phone line. This is the Pat McAfee Show. I just saw a picture of you getting out of, I think, a 757 that is from Jim Ursay. What was that? And have you ever been in that plane before? I, I thought it was like a, the team plane to fly all of the Indianapolis Colts. <laughs> I, uh, literally, I mean, it's got the logo on it, uh, Pat, and uh, it was awesome. But hey, look, that's just Jim. Pat, I had a wonderful 14 years there. It, I, it's obviously the team that I wanted to play for always. I, I understood the, the, the decision he had to make. and no hard feelings and uh, for him to send his plane to fly me and my son down here uh, it, it was a great great gesture a lot of room for me and Marshall we were throwing the football <laughs> <laughs> so, pretty uh, pretty uh, pretty cool experience pretty cool father-son weekend by the way as he's moving from event to event right now <laughs> you are the best dude where are you headed right now I'm going to the game. I'm going to the game. I got Lynch. I got Fanica. I got these guys in the background. So, boys, uh, how you? Congratulations! Yeah. Congratulations, boys! All right, Peyton. Oh, hey, there he is, Marshall. I hope you enjoyed that plane, pal. Hey, Peyton. <laughs> last thing here. Um, you talking to Tom Brady? You becoming friends with him? Uh, it was interesting to watch. Oh yeah, take the photo. Take the photo. <laughs> 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 All right, we will wrap this up. Well, I tell you, Pat, um, I don't think anybody can do what, what Tom has done. Look, I know how hard it was for me to get on the same page with my receivers, learn a new system, learn new coaches. But I had a full off season. I was injured. I was rehabbing. The fact that Tom has done this in a COVID pandemic off season, no time to meet with his receivers. He met with his coaches illegally by breaking into Byron Leffert's house. <laughs> uh, so besides that, uh, it's been incredible what he's been able to accomplish, and uh, he deserves all the credit. His leadership is, is what put the Bucks in this game today, and uh, I have great respect for him because I know how hard it is, but uh, he deserves all the credit. Hey, how did you know Red 18 was coming? Pat, I mean, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you telling that story and, and just growing the legend. That was about the 18th time I tried it. I was 17 going into that. And, you know, when it doesn't hit, you just keep walking. And nobody ever really tells you about it. So when it hit, I was as surprised as you were. And uh, the reaction from, from some of the some of the good old folks there in the casino that night was uh, pretty special. Well, I appreciate you doing that. You made me and those folks in the casino a bunch of money. Congrats on the Hall of Fame nod. Thank you for spending time. Enjoy yourself at the game, Peyton. Pat, thanks, pal. I appreciate you. The, sh you. the Sheriff Hall of Famer, Peyton. Oh, yeah! Rome.
Roman, a men's health brand that can dance very well and make you the best you possible. Are you suffering from male pattern baldness? John, we got something for that. Herpes. See ya. Premature ejaculation. Gone. No more coming too quick. Allergies as well. And that's not all. We have clinically tested supplements for everything, including erectile <laughs> dysfunction. Come on! Bye-bye! GetRoman.com forward slash Pat. Be the best you possible. is the Pat McAfee Show on Sirius XM Mad Dog Sports Radio. We thank you for taking the time to seek out this small regional show that streams internationally. Here's Pat and the boys. You know the story by now. Oh, it's yeah. football season, yeah. and that means it's time to get comfortable with Bird Dogs Joggers. Woo! Yeah. That's right. The most comfortable shorts ever made are now available in joggers. The Bird Dogs Joggers come in khaki, what? Navy what? and black, and these things are moving quick. So get on it now. Yeah, go to birddogs.com, enter promo code Pat's Ball, and they'll throw in a free Bird Dogs whistle tip football with your order. What? That's birddogs.com, promo code Pat's Ball, and boom, a free whistle tip football along with your pair of Bird Dogs. You will not take these things off. I promise you. You might have another one coming to you. <laughs> Why isn't it whistling? Baseball season. It did whistle. Let's <laughs> go. That was a bad throw. Welcome back to the show. Shout out to Bird Dogs. Uh, and by the way, the best untouched touchdown presented by Fluid Master, as decided by the voters. You just Plum. wait till the last five minutes to do these? Uh, Bruce what? Brown, we got 15 <laughs> minutes, sir. Have a little fucking respect for the show. As decided by the voters, goes to incredible athlete. Cordero Patterson! Yeah! Health ball player. Tweet Cordero Patterson with hashtag PMS Untouched to congratulate him on winning a soft spa 9,500 bidet. It's going to change his life because he had the best untouched touchdown of the week. But also, to enter to see if you could win your own Ooh. Fluid Master soft spa 9,500 bidet. Wow. That's right. All you got to do is tweet Cordero Patterson's name with hashtag PMS Untouched to congratulate him and enter in to win maybe your own bidet. Take your butthole to high society with our friends at Fluid Master in their 9,500 soft spa bidet. Hell yeah. yeah. Congrats, Cordero Patterson. Only a few people have won that thing. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So congrats to him. Now, we did the poll before Monday Night Football, so... An untouched touchdown could have happened on Monday Night Football, I guess. Probably save that for mm -hmm. Tuesday next time. Yeah, true. Going forward. But mm -hmm. congrats to Cordero. Uh, uh, congrats to Aaron Jones. Congrats to Tyreek Hill. Mm -hmm. and, Deshaun uh, Jackson. Deshaun Jackson. And congrats to the people at home that won themselves a nice, clean booty hole. You can do that by using hashtag PMS Untouched and Cordero Patterson's name. Uh, Let's get to the 5 Hour Energy phone line, shall we, AJ? Yeah, we should. I think it's fun to, to watch the, the role that uh, Patterson kind of has down there in Atlanta scoring touchdowns. It's cool. He's such a – like a, he can do a little bit of everything. He's Taysom-ish. Is he? Yeah. I mean, I guess you're right. They got him playing everywhere. And he's been like this, though, for some time. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Minnesota, he was uh, all-pro returner, obviously, yep. out mm -hmm. of Tennessee. He was scary. Then he went to Chicago, I think, yeah. after that. And then he used him as a couple – Running back, wide receiver, everything. Then New England, right? He oh. went there. And mm -hmm. then he's now in Atlanta. They're using him as everything as well. He is a utility player that I think if in the right spot would be able to get showcased in a much better fashion maybe. And – Maybe Atlanta's place to do that. I don't know. Seems like the NFC South's going to be tough for a while, but I'm happy for that guy. He had a great untouched touchdown. Yeah, oh, he yeah. Did. Let's go to Joseph over there in California. What's going on, Joe? What's going on, Pat? How are you and the boys doing? Hey, not too shabby. Joseph, quick question. Were you named after Jesus' dad? Yeah, I believe so. Wow. We're, we're a Catholic family, yeah. How did he – so he was told that his wife was a virgin, was pregnant, and he was like, yep. Yeah, I just went with it, I guess. Shout out, Joseph, dude. Shout out, Joseph. Thank you, imagine, Joseph. Imagine if he had a negative reaction to that. We have a whole different yeah. situation yeah. on our hands. Yeah. This guy's name isn't even fucking Joseph if he reacts any other way in Why California not? there. What part of California are you in, Joe? Joseph? 
I'm like Central California. I'm uh, two hours south of San Francisco. You're near San Jose. Oh, pretty close. Uh, yeah, San Jose is about an hour away. All right, I'll be in San Jose on Friday. I can't wait for it. What do you want to talk about, Joseph? Give me your address. Uh, I was, you know, I'm a big, big the Rams arena. fan over here. I was just wondering, uh, huh. do you think the Cardinals went ahead and uh, woke up the sleeping giant <laughs> last week? I think so. Maybe they woke up the Rams. You know, maybe the Cardinals did wake up a sleeping giant, but maybe the Cardinals are the giant, Joseph. We have some breaking news out of Green Bay that just got displayed on the screen here. Uh, great question, Joseph. We appreciate you. Ari Mirov, My Sports Update, Pro Football Focus, says, in need of cornerback help, the Packers have signed veteran cornerback Razul Douglas off Arizona's practice squad. Yeah! yeah! Let's go! The John Gilman was go! available just a couple moments ago. He cost a sixth round pick, obviously, in a future draft and maybe a new contract. He allegedly wanted to go to the Packers. The Packers have acknowledged that they got problems at cornerback. They are taking advantage of that with Mr. Douglas out of Arizona. Send Gilmore down to Carolina. We don't want him in Green Bay. Is that what they're saying, Ty Schmidt? Yeah, I think they looked at him and they're like, hey, we could get Gilmore for a sixth round pick, but we could also get Rasul Douglas, who is, you know, one of the top tier cornerbacks available off Arizona's practice squad. What a move. I am just ecstatic through the roof right now. This Do you know awesome. anything about this player, AJ Hawk? Do you know anything about Mr. Douglas? I know they said he's a veteran. Congrats to him getting another job. Obviously we're happy about that, but this is a fascinating move by old Mark Murphy and Gint Kent's every day in Green Bay. I don't know a whole lot about him. I know of him. But, Ty, what, are you going to change your tune if he comes in and gets two picks the game? Woo! How about that? Yeah, probably. Woo! I probably will. Okay. Rightfully so. Hey, you ever heard, ever heard of old homie uh, Hindsight? Huh. Uh, hindsight might be be yep. dropping a Macho Man Randy Savage elbow on you after Sunday's game. I hope so. Right. I really do. Because I know they're probably going to trot Kevin King's ass out there again, and we all know what happens when he's on the football field. Yeah, he seems to be getting lost every once in a while out there. He might find it, especially with bringing in another veteran corner like Mr. Douglas off the Arizona practice squad. Remember, Stephon Gilmer was available earlier today for a six-round draft pick with, I assume, the acknowledgement that a long-term deal worth a lot of money would be on the table. Obviously, Green Bay didn't want to do that, but they did want to get help in the cornerback room. Yeah. Or Sewell Douglas or whatever the fuck This is like when is. Chicago thought they were getting Russell Wilson. Mm -hmm. And then Andy Dalton was their starter the day later. They thought Russell Wilson was going to be their starting quarterback. And then Andy Dalton got to become the starter the next day. So much so that they even had a, a Wheel of Fortune uh, like thing with L and uh, O-N, you know, and four letters in the first name yes. there. And Chicago Bears fans, as soon as that flipped over and it was Andy Dalton, they were like, <laughs> okay, I thought this was Russ Wilson. What are we doing here? And that was not fair to Russell Wilson, or not fair to Andy Dalton, I don't think, because the expectations were a quarterback that was never there was going to get there. But you can't help but see how Steph Gilmore does this weekend and think to yourself, we were in the market, we could have got a guy, uh, no matter what Razul does. Absolutely, and especially when, like, with the timing of this, it makes it seem like, oh, we missed out on Gilmore. We probably should have got go Gilmore. Let's go get Rasul Butler from wherever Douglas. the hell this Douglas. guy is. Yeah, Douglas. whatever. Whatever his name is. Come on. Jeez, this guy's a Green Bay Packers, dude. Good player. He went to WVU? Guy's a fucking baller, bro. Yeah. He ain't Stephon Gilmore. Bro, you don't know. He hasn't had the opportunity yet. This West Virginia Mountaineer is going to dominate, yeah. dude. Well, I hope so. His career. I hope so. Healthy. I fucking knew that, dude. I'll He's buy a, a fucking Rasul Butler jersey on Monday if this guy has a big game on Sunday. Okay, there it is. All right, there it is. We might have West Virginia Mountaineer, obviously, Rasul Douglas, Douglas jersey in the studio. If he has a good game, authentic one pick. Authentic one. You put it right there. Yeah, over I'll the put it right one? here. One over the hills thing. He was a starter for the Panthers last year. Yeah, guy's a player. He's heady. You know, he's got good instincts for the ball. And what I'm saying is, you're comparing him to Steph Gilmore, right? Not comparing him to the problem that you have. And that happened to Andy Dalton and Russell Wilson. Let's get to the phones. Uh, five energy phone line here. Another one. Let's go to Hench in New York. What's going on, Hench? What's up, fellas? Good to see y'all living life. I want to say uh, I agree with Ty here. They need to get rid of that whole goddamn staff over there in New York. I'm sick and tired of it. Oh, you don't like Benny over there? You think Benny's making some bad decisions on the uh, New York Yankees who lost the AFC Baseball Mega Bowl last night, <laughs> Hench? I just think he's missing his spinal cord. The guy's got no back. Can't oh, Hench, Barry, and Ben. 
What? All right, let's go to Charles over there in Kansas on the 5 Hour Energy phone line. Remember, go to 5hourenergy.com, use promo code McAfee, and get 10% off your order. This is good through December. Oh, okay. Let's go. And, and they have incredible flavors like watermelon, what? tropical burst, what? cherry, what? And peach mango, what? and more. And remember, you might have had the original 5 Hour Energy, and you thought to yourself, wow, the amount of energy and burst that I feel for five hours is absolutely spectacular, mm-hmm. but the aftertaste is not good. They've changed that. Yeah, get a 5 hour energy.com. Use promo code Mac. If you get 10% off, happily get all those in in a span of five minutes. Uh, joining right. us now, Charles in Kansas. What's up, Charles? Hey, Pat and boys. Can you hear me? Absolutely. You sound amazing, dude. Hey, heck yeah. I'm in my uh, Jeep here, so. Nice. Jeep it! Well, oh. huh? Jeep it! That's Jeep what we do. Baby. That's, oh, what yeah. we do. That's what we do oh, out here yeah. in the Midwest. Absolutely. What do you want to talk about, Charles? Anyway, boys, I want to talk about the Chiefs' defense. We've been abysmal all season. We finally had a good game last week. Um, I was wondering what what you know what do you think we need to do? Do we need to get rid of the D coordinator? Do we need to bring in some more pieces? I'm pretty pissed we didn't bring in Gilmore right now, especially for a sixth rounder. But yeah, Charles. I mean, after that big win against the Eagles, I think we got to see what they're going to do this weekend against the Bills, who have been a powerful offense. Then you can panic maybe after that. Maybe they turn some things around, though. You have no idea. The landlord's all the way back. Maybe that Chiefs defense isn't as bad as they looked the first couple weeks. Yeah, I didn't really hear his question at all. I just heard your response. I mean, <laughs> something cut out. I'm sorry, Charles. Charles. This yeah. show is awesome. Uh, a show that's coming on afterwards on Sirius XM is much better than ours. A trailblazer in sports radio, here. Chris Mad Dog Russo hey. with Mad Dog Unleashed hey. on the other side of this break with a much better show than ours. We'll see you tomorrow for Thursday Night Football, free play, risk-free for Thursday. <laughs> Hell yeah. Nailed it. Got it in. I forgot we changed the name. It's risk-free same game parlay Thursday Night Football Thursday. There it is. God damn it. <laughs> so funny, AJ. Yeah. You didn't even man. hear the guy. The name keeps changing. Now oh. we found a name. Now, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I've been scarring. Risk-free same game parlay Thursday Night Football Thursday comes to you tomorrow on this particular show, noon to 3.30-ish Eastern Daylight Time at YouTube.com forward slash The Pat McAfee Show. That follows Coach Us Up Chuck Wednesday, Mm. Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, and Overreaction Monday. It's risk-free same game parlay Thursday Night Football Thursday tomorrow right here live and in person. I've been scouring. FanDuel Sportsbook. I've been picking the brains of the hammered down boys, the hottest gamblers on the internet. I've been getting requests and ideas from all across the internet. And tomorrow, I will have a risk-free same-game parlay that is going to be plus 1,500, plus 1,700, plus 1,800. And it's going to hit. This risk-free same-game parlay that has been a real pain in my fucking ass the last few weeks. The first time Christian McCaffrey gets hurt in the first quarter, we're fucked. Come on. Last week, what was that? Bullshit. $8 million would have been lost by Fandle. Tomorrow, risk-free, same game parlay. Thursday night football, Thursday, the same game parlay that's going to be risk-free only on Fandle is going to be my best one yet. We're going to get off the schneid. We're going to make enough money to make up for the money that we didn't make in the first few weeks of the risk-free, same game parlay. Thursday night football, Thursday, AJ. Hell yeah. I mean, that, that, you just said a bunch right there. That's, I don't know if I'm going to ever be able to understand. Like, it used to just be Thursday Night Football Thursdays, right? We'll get it to so it used to be Thursday Night Football Thursday when we didn't have any concept or idea. But then what was dropped into our world out of nowhere was this risk-free same-game parlay for Thursday Night Football on Thursdays during the NFL season. Boom. Then whenever two become one, mm-hmm. you should realize, oh, we have the name for Thursdays now. It's risk-free same-game parlay Thursday Night Football Thursday. Okay, now it, it all uh, makes sense now, I think. So, yeah, thank you for, for clarifying all that. I felt really good there. I was going to see how many times I could say it and how many different ways I could say it. And it I felt well. like it was pretty well flowing. Oh, yeah. You know, the brain really got going. You know, it was like a, uh, yeah. a wizard out there in the brain. Mm. I don't know why it happened. Sometimes it doesn't. Earlier today, I caught myself mid-story, had no idea where I was going or what happened. And every <laughs> once in a while, it does work. So, you know, it's good news over here, AJ. It's good news. It's good news, man. Like you said, steel trap up there. You remember everything. Did anybody get the page right? 104. I don't know if anybody no, I don't did. Think so. Oh, did you post it? You said it was 104? Yeah, it's 104. Isn't that what I said? It's still trapped, dude. No, nah, you said like 72. Yeah. 84. Climbs I way off. Well, you're... I think you said 84. Steel trap. Look it up. I said 74. We weren't even close, though. You might have said 84. Somebody else might have said 84. I said 74 because I remembered, as I said, I'm like, oh, it's Mangold's number. So they're, yeah. Well, so I remembered. 
Let's see what page 74 that you said was. Just remember what mine was. While you're looking, I don't want people to get confused by the caller. Um, the Chiefs almost gave up 500 yards of offense to the Eagles, so didn't play that great. No. How many points? 30. 30. Yeah. I didn't know they gave up that many points. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Jalen Hurts threw for 380. It was 42-23, and then the Eagles scored a garbage at the end of the game. Sirianni's a genius. Oh, so the Bills are going to fucking... It's going to be, yeah. Maybe. Rams, Maybe uh, Chiefs, a la Monday night a few years ago. 74. Somebody did have it. What? 104. 104, yeah. 22 hours ago. Congrats to... I'm seeing if there's anyone else. Uh, is uh, Jose? No, 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 no. You should check out and see if there's anybody else. You should also just put in hashtag PMSAR Book Club 104. Yep. And then scroll all the way down to the bottom. The only reason he knew because you showed the page and he has read the book before. That's yeah, somebody also looked up the first sentence of the page. Yeah. That's smart. Smart. Page 74, which is what AJ wanted it to be. And that's what the Bible is. An astral story, a very groovy astral story at one level. I can feel the horror in somebody. He's saying, he's saying, it's a good astral story, but illusions are illusions. It's here. In the sound of the tambora, in sound, in the beginning was the word, dude. Holy mm -hmm. shit. Rammed ass. Hates the Man, Bible. you're a guru. I'm not a guru, actually. I think that's a large part of this whole thing, is not being a guru, not having a guru. You're your own guru. Yeah, it is crazy. If you read that all the, from start to finish, it's it's nuts. You did that? The what shit in there. The shit what is, in there. What, what is, is nuts saying about? nuts, dude? What are you it's, saying? Just, it's just very interesting. What is interesting? All of it. The whole entire perspective of the whole thing. I mean, there's a lot of shit that goes on in this thing. Oh, yeah. How, how do you, how, is there, are there any, like, actionable <laughs> steps where you could take, like, I know there's a lot of great stuff in there that you could Bro, use four in your real life and that. remember it. There's four agreements for that, dude. There you go. Boom. True. That's all you need, I guess. I heard there's maybe a fifth agreement to it. It's like the uh, there the, is a fifth the invisible um, menu at uh, that yeah, burger place. Burger. Yeah. yeah. What? There's a fifth agreement that the author wrote Spoiler. after oh. the four agreements. Oh, okay, I thought it was the end it's of the book. It's not in the book. No, it's not uh, in the four agreements. I thought it was maybe the last chapter. No, it's in his next installment, the fifth agreement. All right. Return to the roots. You live out your karma. The best I can tell you about karma is if you are pure spirit, you are not matter. You are that eternal spirit. Well... If each of us is that very old being and not this young body or this body that is going through this life, why don't we remember? Why don't we remember it all? Why can't we read the entire Akashika record? Because of our attachments to the physical plane of reality? Because of the power of our identification with our own body senses and thoughts? Is that mm. what? What the fuck is this? <laughs> wild. Am I in the middle of stories there? Am I in the middle of stories? Probably. Are stories more than one page? I view this thing like a calendar, like each one is its own individual run. No, they carry on. Uh, so oh, I'm, really? I'm taking things out of context. Yeah, you, you actually open to, uh, it's like the chicken method or something. That's, the chicken method? pretty wild. I'm a necton, pal. Mm. I ain't no chicken. Well, you got to. Always gotta, hunt. Once you finish that chapter. Always hungry. You'll see. Never settling. Necton mentality. I'm going to San Jose Sharks. Uh, uh, tank or whatever the fuck. Let's go. Oh, shark, 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 A lot of Necton mentality jokes coming out of the San Jose oh, Shark Tank. I can have to. Wait. Yeah, a lot of shark talk on Friday night. Speaking yeah. of the sharks, hockey season just around the corner. Starts next week. Tonight, youtube.com forward slash That's Hockey Talk. We will be going live. Wow. Let's go. With a major, a major announcement for this season. What the hell? Remember, That's Hockey Talk is the hockey podcast. That it is a show. It is a show that happens. It exists. They have hockey talk. They talk about hockey and things happening in hockey. It is Nick Gumpy and A.Q. Shipley used to be a host. Super Bowl winning coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Also a massive hockey fan. He's from hockey Time. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He was. He's at, and now there's a big announcement as a hockey talk listener. I can't wait to hear what this big oh, announcement yeah, is. Oh, yeah. oh my God, surprise announcement tonight? What time? I'm excited, 8 p.m. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Is it going to be like uh, that baseball game last night where it was supposed to start at one time and then it actually didn't start for like another hour and a half later? Like it There is like a slight chance of that because this is the first time we were going live, so, you know, we uh, don't so know what to by expect. 8 yeah, yep. buckle up. Okay. How about that, AJ? You going to watch? Yeah, you have a, uh, you're going to announce your co-host, is that right? We're going to announce something. 
You'll see. Tune in and find out. It's a surprise, out. dude. All right? It is a surprise. I have a feeling that I know the surprise, and you know what? I'm going to be the bigger man, and I'm not going to blow it. Wow. Way to go. It's about time. Good job, AJ. Way to go. You tried. You tried there at the beginning. Oh, you're going to announce your co-host? Show's so. not over, but I, yeah. Hey, right, listen. Just come back. When is this? What's that do for you? I'll let Clap on rate your fucking teeth if you ruin that surprise. <laughs> All right? I'm going to let you know that. Right in your teeth, dude. How? Right in your suck hole. I can't wait to see more Patty Dangles this season, too. Oh, whoop, 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 Whoa. Whoop, 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 pow. That's Hockey Talk, dude. Tonight, 8 o'clock, YouTube.com forward slash That's Hockey Talk. Yeah, you got, go. You got a big surprise, huh, pal? Big surprise. What is it? I can hey. hardly contain myself. Don't, Nick, how are they? How are they working out the Canada thing? Is Canada still shut down? Are they playing in Canada? Gotta be, gotta be vaxxed. Well, you gotta listen to that talky talk too. Yeah, yeah that's right. Jesus. There is one scumbag on the Red Wings though who refuses to get vaccinated. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not gonna name names. It's just... Steve Eiserman. It's not fucking Eiserman. No, 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 no. Stevie no. I, dude. No way, it's Eiserman. Not Eiserman. No. Hey, did you see Kyrie Irving said, "Fuck it, I won't play the home games if they're gonna make me do it. Take 300k a game. I don't care." I mean, jeez. How is that going to end up? How is the NBA like the NBA season seems like they got all kind of little landmines to, to sidestep. Oh, but, yeah. And I don't think Kyrie is one that you know gets an opinion and then you know changes it. No, I, no. I don't no. think. Well, I, he did, didn't he back off the flat Earth? So, I don't. Like know. He that. said he wanted to open a discussion, so maybe this is a discussion that he is starting or whatever. But he's obviously a rather important piece to the nba puzzle always a talking piece i mean this is kind of taken away from the ben simmons combo which mm -hmm. is obviously heating up in philadelphia but what if Kyrie just only plays away games that would be hilarious there has to be other places that aren't going to allow him golden state mm -hmm. um California. Because Andrew Wiggins wasn't going to get it, but he did get it. They are 96% vaccinated among the NBA right now. No, but Kyrie's saying it because the Brooklyn Nets Correct. arena. New York City can't go. Golden so State, will there be, Golden State the said Knicks. the same thing. I heard Ben Simmons is coming to the Pacers. That'd be cool. He ain't blue collar. I heard on radio today. So. Just put a fucking shot up, pal. All right, you stink at shooting. Maybe you start putting up more, you'll get better. <laughs> Welcome to Indiana, too, by the way. You're going to love it. Nobody's going to bury you out here for stinking, but they do appreciate basketball out here. As long as you give great effort on the defensive side of the ball and make the right passes, this place loves basketball out here. So maybe this is a perfect fit for Ben Simmons. Yeah. But I would like him to stop by the office and learn how to fucking shoot from me, from Foxy, from Connor. Sure. Maybe we give him a couple shooting lessons to really open that thing up for that guy. Yeah, he's That'd been be in the lab. He's been shooting. There's been some clips of him, but he's definitely yeah, not going that. back to Philly. Are we? Gonna What's he doing? Is he still holding out, basically? Oh yeah, they just uh, refused to give or not refused. They decided not to give him like eight point five million dollars. They're holding it and taking his fines out of that. Yeah. And they say he's not tradable either, right? And he said they won't trade him. Basically, but now they're he's kind of forcing their hand. Wait, the Does he have any leverage though? No, nah. no, I don't think so. Not at all. But if the because the team, if they don't want to trade you, they won't trade you. Right? I mean, that's just something that's going to happen. Yeah. We've been seeing that in the NFL. I mean, that's just the way it goes. But the Pacers spending money is something we should talk about here. Yeah. If they're getting active and spending some money, this is a big deal because allegedly Paul George left because he was told by ownership or something like, no, we're not going to be paying for anybody to come here. We're, we're going to try to build this team from inside out. And Paul George thought that that's how you're going to win or whatever. Allegedly. Who knows what's real? Bringing in a guy who can't shoot and paying him, that's good news. Yeah, he said he'll pull a Lev Bell and set out the whole season if that's what it takes. Did he? Yeah. Maybe hey, who owns the Pacers? Shoot. Huh? Who owns the Pacers? Yeah, you know. So it's a Simon. Herb Simon. Yeah, it's a Simon family, which is all the malls. You know, Simon Malls? Uh, Paul Simon? So they own, Paul Simon's a musician, I think, from Letterman? No, no. Do, that's do, 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 <laughs> Bodyguard. Be my bodyguard. Do, 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 do. I can be my bodyguard. I can be a long friend. You can call me Paul Schaefer. Is, uh, uh, thank you, Paul. Is yeah. Paul. Shay, uh, Shay, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been sitting on that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I watched yeah, a lot yeah. of Letterman growing yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, me too. By the way, yeah. I enjoyed uh, I enjoyed oh, yeah. Letterman. Um, the Simon family owns it though, and the the old man Simon, I don't know, Herb, I don't know what his name is, something. So he owns all the land that all these malls are on. So all these people pay them rent basically. So the Simon malls that you see, they have like a showcase mall here 
in Indianapolis up on the north side because they're from here. They obviously have houses everywhere, but the old man, Simon, that started this whole business, he is a legendary figure, allegedly. Max Simon, right? Um, I don't know. Herbert's the guy who owns it now. Max is his dad. Okay, so Max, the dad. The original Simon, uh, I guess he enjoyed you know, a cocktail or two every once in a while. He enjoyed having an Urban Meyer every once in a while. Sure. You know what I mean? And allegedly he was golfing at Crooked Stick up here in Indiana, which is where the PGA comes through, Crooked Stick Golf Course. It's a, it's a nice course. It's I played on it one time. Almost at a hole in one, actually. Whoa. Really? Yeah, I think that. Thank you. Beautiful I, it, course. It, it is very gorgeous. Um, I played on it once. I think I scored 100 or something, but I almost had a hole in one. I probably three put Probably more than that, but yeah. No. No, I don't think so. I, I mean, you know, you know, you, oh, hey, pick it up. Uh, it's good. Oh, you know, what, what are you going to hear? Ah, I think I got a bogey. That's your round. That is my round, exactly. <laughs> uh, but around 100 ish or so. He was allegedly playing there, got a little boozed up one night. Who knows what happened? Uh, there's so many wild stories about this. He either crashed a golf cart into something and he ended up getting banned from the re resort. Like, you're not allowed to be here, a part of this club anymore or whatever. And he bought the land across the street from Crooked Stick and built, built his, his own? own golf course. Yeah, and I've golfed on that golf course. Mm. And it is very nice. Even more beautiful has, course. It has a par three course on it. It has oh. its own, he, and then he has a house on it that's huge. And it's right across the street from Crooked Stick. So, I mean, this guy, I think, you know, would have been a guy who probably enjoyed our show. I do believe he is dead now, but no. the Simon family. Right, also, it was his older brother, uh, Melvin. Mel, was the guy. Mel oh, Simon. Mel, Mel Simon. Mel. Yeah, crazy. Huh. It's awesome. We played with an armed security guard. Let's just say it's tough to not, you know, take a divot out of the fairway. It was a guy with a nine. Who put it Were you playing with anymore. one of the Simons? Uh, somehow we had a connect in there. I don't know if it was. Yeah, it might have been a family member. I forget. I know the person. I have no idea how he's connected, though. I have no clue. But it was uh, me. And he has a security guard with him? No, no, no. The person that was taking us on the course is friends with somebody of the family, I think, very close. And they had security following us around as a group, like right behind us, basically. Like right Wait, was this a pro-am or just a normal day on the course? It was just us on the entire golf course. <laughs> okay, jeez. It was only us on the course. We were the only people on the course. The, this entire golf course, they have par three course over here. They have an incredible like mansion as the, uh, like the, the house, the clubhouse, clubhouse or whatever. It was gorgeous, and there was, yeah, there was security following us the entire time. We got pretty intoxicated out there, though. Ooh. I mean, we got after it. We played some real golf out there, too. But that Simon family owns the Pacers, and allegedly they don't spend any money to win the fucking game, but they'll build a golf course. What are we doing? Come well, on. I mean, if you own malls right now, that, I mean, the land is valuable, but are malls a thing anymore? Yeah, they're still doing it. You know, I don't know, because... Go through a mall, there's like 50% right of the, the stores, are there's nothing in them. Yeah, because they got to pay rent, so maybe... The fees are probably going to have to go lowered, so I would assume the overall capability of cash flow in the mall business is probably going to be lower for a bit because people weren't allowed in public in large gatherings. So that is a mall, basically. But after seeing all these stadiums filled up, I feel like the world's going to... You know, I think everything's. Oh, I'm not worried about that. Not even COVID. Can't I'm saying just Christmas. online shopping. Why do yeah. Why do you go to a mall anymore unless you're 200 years old? No, I agree so. completely because Amazon has made everything very easy. But I think people go to the mall to do something. Like I, I think people yeah, will right. go do stuff still. Like, I didn't know to be honest. I thought people were going to get very comfortable in their houses, and I think a lot of people have, and I think a lot of people enjoy life being home. Like I'm a homebody for sure, but I thought more people would potentially experience a homebody lifestyle and be like, hey. This is actually pretty fucking awesome, like I did. Uh, but I think people are still going to – I think everything's going to come back in full. There's, there's always a good restaurant like on like those properties as well, right? Like, oh, yeah. Malls, yeah. 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 Fud Ruckers. Something to do. Oh. Also, uh, Fud Ruckers. Saki of Japan. Japan. Saki of Japan. Japan. Yeah, Sparrow. A right. lot of places in the mall just made their hours much shorter, like 12 yeah. to 6. To See, that's not cool, for, though, because at night, the mall – Yeah, that, that stinks. That's what we're doing here. Yeah. But that's how they've been saving on the rent costs. And, Smart. Yeah. Still the same. The rent's still going to be the same whether they're open 12 to 6 or 8 to 6. But yeah, but they don't have to pay, pay the, people. Yeah, yeah I know. They're going to pay the hourly workers. Yeah, I mean, I just it's just such a gigantic building. You think of the overhead to have, with a mall. I'm like, all right, this is how do you how do you make this work? I know Amazon has bought some of those old malls that have gone under and used them for their distribution places. Well, they're not just doing that. They are just buying entire plots of land out here in Indiana and building million square foot warehouses in two weeks yeah that's insane these things are like popping Wuhan, up. really legit yeah. they're going up in like two weeks 
cement sides, yeah. I think, and then they just got like barn roof, warehouse roofs, and they're taking up, in, they're, these things are popping up out of nowhere. We're talking 18 wheelers coming in and out of towns and places in Indiana that have never could have been prepared for 18 wheelers coming in now. Traffic nightmares. <laughs> yeah. There's standard ass country four ways, you know, like with stop signs, corn normally on both sides. And there's 18 wheelers coming through. They're trying to make the turn. They're trying to widen roads. It's a massive investment out here in Indiana. Foxy lives right in the middle oh. of it. His house is going to get bought up by somebody who's going to want to build a warehouse right where he's oh, at. It's an absolute nightmare out there. All roads are closed. Damn. Well, didn't you just move into that house, Foxy? <laughs> yeah, my house, I think, is safe, but everything around it. I mean, there are semis everywhere, and the four-way stops he's talking about. If I get home during rush hour, it legitimately, just to go through a four-way stop could take me 30 minutes or more. It's insane. That's one stop sign. One yeah. stop sign. Make, make that sucker a roundabout. Well, that's what they're going to try to do, but... Yeah. I mean, this came up out of nowhere. It was like there was no planning or preparation. Like, hey, we should probably build the roads to be able to handle the amount of traffic. Because I don't think it's just Amazon. I think it's like every Walmart. Uh, Google. Walmart has one, I think, here. They like, build big servers. There's like giant, I think it's a server. Google gigant. I don't know how many hundreds of thousands, million square feet. I don't know. Huge buildings that are just like Google backup servers, I guess, or Amazon servers, right. or Facebook, one of those. And it, it keeps expanding, too. It's right next door. My daughter plays soccer. It's it's a massive structure and it has the sweet high fence with the, the barbs that come out so you can't climb the fence. Yeah. Like it's really, I want to get their fence that they have. Well, <laughs> I actually saw it and thought to myself. I'm a big me. fence guy. I, like I really fence. enjoy nice fences like that. And me too. I'm a big fence guy as well. I enjoy it. I, I didn't want to build walls as a child, but you know, I would like to have conversations, but also stay the fuck out. I don't need to be getting sued because your dumbass kid hurt himself on my property. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a shame, isn't it? It's bullshit. What? That's why I became a fence fan. I was never really a fence fan, but then I got the fear God put in me by people that are like, hey, if that kid that is currently running around on that road over there on your property gets hurt, like, you're going to get tagged for something. And I was like, yeah. what? No. Kids run around free will. I don't even know it's there. Mm -hmm. That's your property, dude. Remember when you were a kid? It's like, yeah, I remember trying to get hurt on Mr. Fisher's grass. <laughs> you know, because that guy had a lot of money, allegedly. I remember that. Yeah. I remember those little angles. So then I became a big fence guy. Love fences. How you doing? Keep it moving. I will say I was driving by the Coliseum, saw somebody uh, flying a drone in the, inside the gate area. Well, how about somebody flew a drone in my house? Really? Yeah. Probably the same guy. Probably. Shoot it. You can shoot it. Get that I didn't have my bar. gun just sitting on me. I mean, what uh, do you want from me? I, I, we, me yeah, and like, Sam sent both double. Double both birds. Them, yeah, how right. hot? Like, was he pretty close? Could you throw a baseball and hit it? Mm. Golf ball? Maybe golf ball. You could definitely hit a hit a lob wedge up and blast that thing. You're so good. By the way, thank you. I was in the uh, I was in the front of the house, and as we heard, she Sam heard the bzzz real quick because there's a lot of there's I'm near an airport, so there's a lot of like smaller planes that fly by, which I don't know how people get if in. If you those. could hear it, that's pretty close. Yeah, we could hear the buzzing yeah. coming through the trees or whatever, and Sam could hear it, and she goes, "Is that a drone or whatever?" And then we looked up, and there was this little fucking green light flying through the sky. Like, you son of a bitch. And before I could get around the back to grab the eight iron, yeah. you know what I mean? To get that thing, it was already gone or whatever. Next time you call me, I'll fly my drone up and just ah, take dog it out. Dog fight yeah. it into yeah. it. Yeah. Dog <laughs> fight, yep. Man, we will dog fight that thing. I got faith in you too, by the way. Thank you. Is that legal? Uh, no, no, you can call the cops because every time you're in a location, you have to put your phone number down. So, like, you can see who that is right away. Like, Wait, anytime what? I fly up, my number's connected to it at all times. So, like... Well, you registered so no your drone. You're you're supposed to. You have to register them, but yeah, if you no don't register that. You can't happen. you can't fly it unless it's. Hey, if it ain't registered, well, no, they gotta catch you. It ain't flying. That's right. Zito almost got it shot down two years ago in New Orleans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too yeah late. outside the stadium. You put that thing up, we're gonna have to shoot it down. Yep. Zito almost gave a. Really? All right. <laughs> yeah. I would have bought you. Yeah. Shoot, I would have bought you a new one just to see that happen. I know. Pat's the same thing right after. Yeah, I should have kept it up. I didn't know this was during a tailgate while I was preparing to call a uh, Tulane game. Yep. No. Yeah. 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 Tulane, Tulane game. Tulane. Houston. Tulane Houston. He had his hand on the gun and everything. I was like, "You fly that thing." <laughs> oh, it was awesome. Last second touchdown for Victor. He was licking awesome. his lips. You should have seen the guy. First play of the game touchdown. Last play of the game touchdown. Yeah. yeah Transfer. Like Seven Belichick. million degrees. Out. Oh my no god. No fans. Smallest booth in the world. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, you had to run all the way down to the field and the microphone oh, didn't work. And you yeah. had to run all the way back up to the press box. Yeah, I keep thinking of creative ideas though. Oh, okay. Yeah. So hot. You calling out that something's gonna like bad happen before, like during the call? <laughs> How do I not address it? You know, like that's. <laughs> I, 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 think it's, I think you should. 
That's like on Raw, something happens, I'm going to address it. Like, I have to address it. Or on SmackDown, I'm sorry. I did not get traded to Raw. Thank God. Thank God. Wait, so they does wrestling have a draft like every three days now or what? No, it's one Jesus. draft spanned over three, four days, dude. Problem. There was even picks over the weekend, bro. So is the draft over? It's done? Yeah, draft's mm-hmm. over. It doesn't take The roster doesn't take place until one day after Crown Jewel live in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Oh, you're going there? Nope. I was not when is that? Uh, I don't know, a couple weeks, two weeks probably. Why won't you? Man, I can't, they're going over there right now. I mean, hey, good. I'm glad they're, they're able to travel international now. Yeah, they're heading over there. I wasn't invited. It's a real shame. Good luck. I show mean, sorry, uh, probably for the better. Show starts at noon. Isn't Saudi Arabia like no booze, no drugs, nothing? Like you wouldn't fare well. I don't drink. What are we even talking about? I got it for October 21st. Bingo. There it is. Right there. Starting at noon, I think so. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. Our competition. Can the girl wrestlers go? Can the females wrestle now? So I believe the last couple times, yes. So Do they have to wear like bathrobes? No, I think they had a t shirt. I think they had t shirts on. But I think that's like a good step, right? People are. Yeah. I'm yeah. talking about this. I think, like, how do you make progress if you don't have any interaction? And now, granted, I'm not going to be a part of that. Hey, listen, I'm not supposed to be a part of that. I'm happy I'm not going or whatever. But I don't know how that whole thing plays out 10 years, 20 years from now, looking back on it. But the shows, everybody said it is insane over there. It's awesome, yeah. everybody. Until they got stuck there, and then I got to call Buffalo. Uh, yeah. Smackdown. Smackdown. Kind of a tryout for me to call Smackdown, by the way. Shout out. Shout out. Yeah. And you were ready. You capitalized on your moment. You had an opportunity. Yeah, you have to, you know, whenever you get an opportunity to go on Fox and you're allowed to wear sleeveless and jorts, you know, and commentate on wrestling. I mean, you got to do that. You have mm-hmm. to. You just ask, you know, a billionaire friend <laughs> yeah. to use his plane. And he says, yeah, no problem, bro. And just flies you up there. He's the a, best. In a G5 or whatever the fuck awesome. it is. With DirecTV. Yeah, DirecTV, steak. Oh, oh, steak sliders. Oh, my God. The best Wi-Fi of all time. I was playing yeah. Fortnite on there on my phone. Yep. Tomorrow, I got to fly out to uh, San Jose, you know. Yeah. And I'm trying to time it out so I make it. I'll probably miss the first quarter of that Thursday night football game. But I'm just like the anticipation of what the plane is that I'm going to be on. Like if there's no Wi-Fi on that thing, I mean, it's a long one. It's a long one. So that anticipation has been. You don't know going in? I mean, they'll say they have Wi-Fi, but some planes have Wi-Fi. And some planes have the, yeah, we got Wi-Fi. You know what I mean? Like, there's two different levels up in the sky because we're on an airplane as one (laughs) flight attendant. Make sure you take the uh, four marijuana things. You can read that. There's no Wi-Fi. Yeah, Yeah, four agreements. I'm think i thinking about downloading it. Audiobook. Audiobook, listening to it on the way over there. Is there always someone with you, like a um, a flight attendant? No, no, no. There was. When I rode back with you from Orlando, we had one, remember? Or no, was she the co-pilot? She came back and was just chatting it, your ear off. She was co-pilot. Yeah, a lot of conversations with the pilots. pilots very nice. Very nice. Pilots are very comfortable, you know, chit-chatting oh, with yeah, us, yeah. which is good news. I appreciate yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, sometimes a little bit too much. Sometimes, sure. Sometimes, sometimes there's some too much said, you some know. Jokes. When you're, when you're, what do you mean? They come back during the flight? Yeah, I let them fly. Oh, yeah. You know, so, like... Oh, with yeah. storms and stuff, sometimes uh-huh. they're giving us too much information. Like, hey, pal, I'm gonna I'm gonna shut these blinds here. Let's just get there. You know what I mean? And if you can find a smooth route, that'd be great. Yeah. Instead of describing the type of storm we are about to fly through, you know, and that is <laughs> lightning's gonna be pretty close, guys. Yeah, so. it, it might look closer than it actually is, but there is gonna be lightning out the left side there if you want to look at it, and also some swirling winds or whatever. It's like, <laughs> all right, all right, enough. <laughs> Thank you for the lightning show. All right. If I want that, I'll just watch Mega Max with a baseball bat. Oh, Boom! Hell yeah! Ooh. Let's bring the whole show back together. <laughs> Can't wait. Let's bring the whole show back together. Hell yeah. Uh, electric in his wood, right? Lightning in his wood. Oh, man. Just like I think you said 84. I'm not so sure. Let's go to Adam in North Carolina. Wood is not a con- good conductor. It wouldn't work. Well, that's what it puts in the hands of Mega Man, Max. Wood is a good conductor. What? 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 Why are phone poles? Why are phone poles wood? We're not supposed to stand next to a tree when there's a lightning storm or else you'll get electrocuted because wood is a good conductor. I don't think that's accurate. That's not why. Why is it then? If the tree gets hit, it'll fall on you and kill you. No, no, people get electrocuted when they stand next to the tree. I think metal is mostly the conduit of electricity. Metal's yeah. good. Water's also but that's why good. cars Water's are good. Water's very to be good in. at the conduit. Of cars aren't because of rubber on the ground. That's yeah, good. that's why yeah. it's good to be in it. Well, actually, anything with a roof is dangerous to be under during a lightning storm. Yeah, because you're in that roof. Monday Night Football taught me that. <laughs> well, so where does canopy. lightning come from? I see the big arguments. It's coming from the cloud. That's canopy. No, they Ooh. say it's from Earth, I guess. Yeah, wood and plastic, not good conductors because of the molecules. Yeah, it's what they were plastic, scared of you no is way. getting uh, wood on your head. Mm-hmm. I don't it's know. made of wool. 
I don't believe it. Let's go to Adam. Wool like is George very Washington. good conduit. Oh, my uh-huh. God. Wool will get you. Wool will fuck you. You know what else, Will? A driver and a golf ball. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I think we'll fucking spark up real quick. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it's okay if you have a metal <laughs> metal uh, grip. And by metal, I mean rubber. What was, yeah, because you're grounded then. What was old cuz that sucked the key up in the air? Oh, Benny, Benny Frank. 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 He's trying to die, right? And he invented something? He get a lot of dead syphilis. bodies in his basement. He had tons of he, dead bodies. He was trying to bring cadavers. those back to life. He did the What's newspaper. That? He was studying the human body. Oh, I'm sure uh, that's what he was doing. Right. He was having sex with those things. Oh, God. Oh, oh, dude. That's Benjamin Franklin. founding yeah. father. Let's get back to sports. What's going on, Adam, in North Carolina? Go on, raise up, take your shirt off, <laughs> twist around your hand, spin it like a helicopter on a five-hour energy <laughs> phone line. What's going on, dude? What's going on, Pat? What's going on, guys? Just hanging out, man. What do you want to talk about, brother? Electricity? or? Um, <laughs> It's a it's a great day to be a Panthers fan, and it's all because of the great man Scott Fitter. Yep. That man's wheeling and dealing every pick we have, and making this defense the second coming of the Legion of Boom. Okay, is this your GM? That's the GM. GM for the Carolina Panthers is this team's MVP for us this season. It's not the players; it's Scott Fitter coming in here, making this rebuild go a lot faster than most teams ever do. Is it the owner saying, hey, spend all the money you need to spend? Because you guys brought in Teddy, then you get rid of him after one year without Christian McCaffrey. He was undefeated till the Ravens beat him out there. You got a new quarterback in Sam Darnold. Are they antsy? Are they making every single move? Or you think they're building for the long haul? I, I think they're, they're in a sort of win-now situation with, I guess, how the season's looking. I, I could see the Carolina squeaking in as like a, the last seed of the playoffs, whether we beat the Bucks or not. We're probably going to squeak in there with how Seattle's playing suspect, so we don't got to worry about every team in their division getting in. So, you know, they're going in for the long run and looking to make a playoff run, whether it's one win or none. They're looking to be in the playoffs this season, and I'm excited. Shout out Adam there in North Shout Carolina. Is excited about the Panthers, as they should be. Trade a six-round pick to New England to get Stephon Gilmore out of New England when it was announced that he was released. Uh, AJ, I like the Carolina Panthers. Last year had a good team, didn't win a lot of games for whatever reason. Get rid of Teddy, bring in Sam Darnold. They start winning some games. Uh, Christian McCaffrey hurt, not great. But, I mean, I, I feel like they got everything that you would want to be in a franchise. Well, their defense, too. Like they, They're getting a lot of pressure on opposing quarterbacks. Like I think they have some young talent oh, defensively. Nice. I I like Sam Donald. I'm happy for him that he's playing well and things seem to be going pretty well. I understand they ran into a juggernaut that was the Cowboys last week, right? But, hey, let's get him right back on track this week. Without uh, Christian again, though, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How long is he out? Two weeks, right? They didn't put him on IR. IR would have been three weeks, so they're expecting him to be two weeks, I'd assume. Yep. Okay. But he's a stud. Yeah. Beast. Uh, yeah. Joe has not played pretty well against the Cowboys, too. And the Panthers have Eagles, Eagles this weekend. Eagles just got their asses beat by the Kansas City Chiefs, right? No, uh-huh. they put up 500 yards. Though. It was 42-30. Yeah, it wasn't close. But it was really, half, yeah, right? it was really 42. Browns Chargers is a good matchup. Browns Chargers is a good. Match- Rams Seahawks tomorrow. Fucking yeah. awesome. Unbelievable. That is so awesome that that's Thursday night football game. Can't wait to watch that. I'm gonna be in a hotel in San Jose watching that thing go down. Maybe a little, maybe a little. California cannabis probably blowing through Ooh. the air. Ooh. Not me. I'm talking about the people around me. Uh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yeah. me. Talking about the – because it is legalized out there in San Jose. That's true. See, that, didn't you go to San Jose for TwitchCon? Hell, yeah. Awesome. Uh, really fun time. Uh, the only thing that sucked, though, was over – like, we had, like – what was our hotel? Like, five to, like, ten miles away. Oh, no. You guys stayed in the – We had to go very far hotel. away. We, <laughs> yeah. But it's an amazing place. We absolutely loved it. Okay, good. Let's go to Weidel down there in Florida. Is that like Comic-Con? TwitchCon? Yeah, oh, you know of, what it is, basically. dude. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> I don't. Me neither, by the way. I didn't know what it was either. They won. It looks like a great time. I'm pretty time. old. I know, I know what Twitch is, but I don't <clears throat> understand how it works. You're going to Chuck Berry Con, aren't you? All right. Why well, what's going on down here? <laughs> He's in dead, fl- Connor. Rest in peace. We'll have a moment of silence. Still a legendary still musician on. and home video <laughs> creator. <clears throat> why do, what's going on man I right, was no. stolen from his garage going on, dog? big fan of the show but most importantly big promoter of the show oh my guy thank you let, thank you I mean, you know so, how it goes, yeah, you know absolutely. How it goes. Absolutely. just gotta let Ty Schmidt and boys know before I ask you a real question that hey keep it up with the pot and for any viewers out there that don't know about the best show on the YouTube it's called the pot and if you didn't know yet if you add eight to ten personal shots of Wiki, what? Wiki. Huh? It becomes the greatest show of all time. It's only once a week, though. That is a shame. Shout out to Wild. Oh, next time. For now. It's only once a week. 
It's only once a week. That's for now. Right. Used to be two times a week. At one point, it was maybe even three times a week. Now it's just one time a week. I know. Only on Wednesdays available. Shout out to the shit. pod, dude. Hey, who broke the whistle? Nobody broke the whistle, dude. Maybe the camera can't did hear it. last time I threw it to you. I can't hear it anymore. What are you talking about, dude? Well, you can't throw it as fast in here. Throw it. Fire to digs. Yep, there it was. Did you heard it? <laughs> you heard it. I apologize, dude. I, I've been off with my whistle ball throw. No, that was on me. I hit the bat. No, you, I mean, you could have made a play for me, obviously, but that was a bad throw. Oh! Holy shit! Yeah, that was a pretty good catch. That's that's the show, actually. <laughs> that feels like that's probably how the show ends today. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. AJ, I appreciate you, bud. Can't wait to see you in studio here on Friday as I'm live in San Jose. You'll be off tomorrow, right? Yes. Oh. Yes. Oh, wow. You're a bum. You haven't done a full on. week this entire yeah, football season. On. You're a joke. You couldn't consume. You son of a bitch. House. He tired. Thursdays. I've committed to these Thursdays over the last. Shut I don't know. We'll see up, dude. How many more of them are there? Because I don't know. I, not make, We're getting towards the end. Honestly, of the commitments that I've had, I'm not making any new commitments. But bro, tomorrow is risk free. Same game parlay. <laughs> Thursday night football. Thursday. Come you on. ask all these goddamn questions, and you're not even gonna be there for it. Hey, I'm sorry, man. You can have FOMO, dude, when we're celebrating risk-free, same game parlay, Thursday Night Football Thursday, and you're doing some fucking black tie event, dude. Hell yeah. I've never heard. What's FOMO? What's that mean? Tell Urban we said hi, at least, okay? Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, Holy yeah. shit. Huh? I heard you, dude. Oh. Uh, uh, the I chair did. hit it. I heard you, too. Yeah. Had a great wow. volleyball dump earlier, too, by that the way. That was sweet. That was pretty good, yeah. Should, should AJ make his pick for tomorrow right now? Yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow. What is it, AJ? Oh, for tomorrow? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Seahawks look good last week, but I will take the Rams in the points. Whoa. Oh. All right, I'll make my selection tomorrow as I work like the rest of the boys. <laughs> Hammer down is 15 minutes after this show ends, which is going to be momentarily. We'll see AJ in studio on Friday. We appreciate you, buddy. Can't wait to hear these picks on Hammer. Dad! You are the best humans on earth. We hit 1.5 million subscribers, so um, you're the best. Yeah. Man. I remember when we got to a million, we felt like we we're the most lucky humans on earth, legitimately, because there's no reason that we should have been. We just talk. That's it. On YouTube. And uh, it's become a little bit of a destination, I think, for some people. And I want to let you know, we take that honor uh, and that duty and hold it in high regards. I think we try to show up every single day and make a good show. I have no idea if we do, we give it our best effort. At some point, you're gonna get sick of us, I assume. I wanna let you know it's been a great fucking run and I appreciate it. Uh, if you'd like to be a friend and tell a friend, that'd be cool. We don't market a lot of our shows because I honestly believe if you are, if we're forced on you, and by we, I mean me, you're probably gonna hate us, but if you find us, we hope that you find yourself at home for at least a little bit trying to be a mental vacation forever once we hit two million we'll obviously give away a bunch of shit as we do all the time and we're back manana with, with a risk-free same game parlay thursday night football thursday you are the greatest humans of all time you have no idea how much i appreciate you uh, and we'll see you we'll see you tomorrow cheers dude